Jason Mercier, he went with his instincts, he made yeah. the call. Yeah. There's the professional level, and there's the Ivy League. Summer! Sebastian Pauli coming to terms with what he has just achieved. Nicky Curran has done it! Two main event titles! Sebastian Mallets has gone from poker fanboy to poker champion. This is why people love the EDT. Hello once again, welcome to Monaco and the Poker Stars EPT presented by Monte Carlo Casino. Stand by for live coverage of day three of the 5K main event. 126 players returning from a starting field of 1,098. Three days down, four to go, including today, as we play down to the last few tables, play down to the final table and bring you that final table. Cards up all the way on Saturday, May 6th. Live at 12.30 Central European Summertime, apart from on Saturday, the final day of the event, the final day of the broadcast, when we're live at 1 p.m. local. It's James Hartigan alongside Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And Maria Ho. Hi, friends. So, guys, we get to pick up where we left it last night. 126 players bagged and tagged. They come back today to play five full levels so not playing to a set number maria the only question is how many will we get to today well i think that's a question for the widget <laughs> the widget says 44. You want to take the over under on the widget joe over okay more than 44 players remaining uh, we would like to hear from you if you have your own predictions if you have your own comments about the widget, use the live chat on Twitch or YouTube. Tweet using the hashtag PokerStarsTV and check out all the great stuff from Monte Carlo that's being posted on Facebook and Instagram. Well, if you missed yesterday's world famous bubble coverage, here's a recap of what happened on day two. Three hundred and thirty-two players arrived for the start of day two. The sun shining directly into the Salle des Etoiles. Eric Seidel and vlogger Masato Yokosawa headlined our first feature table. It was clear Yokosawa was having a great time. Chess Grandmaster Magnus Carlsen came to play the main event. And Monaco local Patrick Antonius laughed himself out of the arena, cashless. The bubble approached, and it burst in the cruelest of fashion. Yasuhiro Waki had his aces cracked by Rehor Karapanov's rivered flush. Then came a mini post-bubble bust-out bonanza, which saw several well-known names depart. leaving us with the 126 players we have for the start of day three. So these are the chip leaders. Marcos Ladev, the biggest stack with 176 big blinds, 881K. Artem Artarosian in the top five, as is Mike Watson. And Ramon Kalilas continues to be a force on the EPT, potentially making another super deep run. Lines will be 2K, 5K when we get the action started. And here is our first feature table. We have got one of the chip leaders. We have got a former PCA champion in Sawat. We've got a former EPT champion in Mark Telcher. We've got a World Series of Poker runner-up in Dario Sammartino. But let's be honest, this table is headlined by the chess superstar, Magnus Carlsen. With 126 remaining, everyone's locked up just shy of 10K. The big spots awarded to the top finishers, with the top eight all locking up six-figure scores, and the winner of this year's Monte Carlo main event walking away with 890,000 euros in addition to the prestigious main event trophy. So, of course, with it being day three, the shot clock is brought into play. And instead of being given time bank cards, as we learned a couple of days ago, the players are now given time bank chips which are white and black and are bigger than the normal chips on the table. So hopefully no one, including us, will get confused. I actually put uh, a time bank chip on a red seven on the roulette, roulette wheel and I won 35 more time bank chips. That's a lot of time. Roulette wheel, roulette wheel. Sorry, I didn't do my warm ups today. 
So first hand of the day, first hand of level 16, 2K, 5K with a 5K big blind ante. Mark Telcher in early position with Ace Queen. Won EPT London all the way back in 2005. Hold it around to the big blind. Leo Lease from the UK, 10-5 off. And Lease the game. Thank you. So Mark Telcher is a player who occasionally reappears on the EPT, normally plays Monte Carlo every year. Has also, and we talked about this on the Poker in the Years podcast a year ago, has weirdly worked his way into Emma Raducanu's entourage when she won the US Open. He was one of the first people she high-fived when she won. I feel like in the times I've hung out with him socially that he, he's a good tennis player. Okay. Like... Almost professional level, if I remember correctly. Folded to Oleg Vazlachenko on the button. Queen six offsuit. Huge stack here and queen six normally would be a fold on the button, but when you have that many chips, of course, you do want to be aggressive, but bad timing. Yeah. Leo you know, Lease with kings in the small blind. Lease starting the hand with 100 big blinds. So I was going to say this could be a battle of the big stacks, but I don't think Vazolchenko is going to do anything funky with queen six. I don't know. Maybe, maybe a little leveling war. Doesn't Nicest really Carlson happen anymore. Folds the big blind. Action back on the Vasilchenko. The three bet is to forty-six thousand, and there is the queen six fold. But does also like announcing race or call. I guess announcing call stuff to shot clock, yeah. But if you announce race. Then it still runs until you've decided how much you raise or what. So let's say you say raise. Let's say so you say bets, raise. And you say raise, right? Does does the clock stop? It, it, it carries on until I you. Need to seven, so there's a few seconds. Yeah, but it would still be his turn. <laughs> so what he's saying is, if, yeah. he's, if he says call, cool, that means it's immediately the next person's turn for sure. Yeah. Right. Okay. So the clock restarts. But if he says raise, does he just have? Does the clock just keep running until he decides the size, or does he just get to say raise and then it pauses? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's no stopping it before yeah. you say raise. Your turn is just that. Yeah. Sure. Good question. Oh, Great person. question. My understanding is if you were to say the word raise and not follow it up with an actual bet or follow it up with a verbal declaration of the amount and the shot clock were to then hit zero, it would be ruled that you've raised to the minimum. Makes Copy sense. that. It's also important for the person who's next to act to know the way that works. Knowing that your, your clock doesn't start the second they say race. Correct. So Vasilchenko opening here with 6-4 of hearts. It's Mike Watson's big blind. <laughs> Do you think my actual chips are sitting in that stack? 100%. Well, it doesn't look like he lost many after no, he eliminated you, not. working his way into the top five at the start of day three. The man started yesterday with a 33K. What, what, around, what time, <laughs> around what time did he bust you yesterday? Like th 20 minutes into the start of the second level of the day. Okay, so like, what, 2 o'clock or something? Ish, yeah. Because I saw him at the pool at 3.30. Nah. I think he won so many chips off of you that he just went and chilled the rest of the day. So a great flop for Vasilchenko. Two pair. Watson with a couple of overs to the board. Yeah, usually this type of texture does favor the big blind, but considering Vasilchenko opened from late position, obviously they will have a bit more of these suited combos that are, you know, gonna have great board coverage. Uh, 
Now Zolchenko has actually moved ahead of Mike Watson in the rankings, but they're pretty much tied. Each has more than 130 big blinds. And the clock has ticked down to 125, so we have had our first elimination of the day from one of the outer tables. San Martino, ace king under the gun. And take it. He is quite lucky. <laughs> Magnus, what's the handicap against the computer these days? The I knew it! If you had a knight head start and you played white, would you win? Uh, yeah, probably, but I, I really don't want to try. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, as soon as Mark gets it going on chess questions, he, Mark's really good at talking to people at the table. Seems like Magnus shut that down pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> you never know if the person wants to talk about the thing they're famous for or not, right? You can, but De try. <laughs> Definitely feels like it's a what kind of mood Magnus is in today. Alan? All in here from Maxim Vazrazensky, who is the shortest stack at the table. 12 big blinds in the middle with ace jack offsuit. Down to Mike Watson on the button. He folds the six deuce. Mark Telchit in the small blind with 10 8 off. And Dario Sammartino in the big blind. Has Queen Jack. Sammartino folds as well. Hmm? Lubos on YouTube wants to know, is it true that Magnus hit the shot clock himself because he's used to it? Oh. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a look at some of the players as they arrived inside the Salle des Etoiles this morning. Some of the famous faces still in the field, including Ramon Kalilas. Hashtag fun fact, Maria Ho literally followed Ramon to the venue today. I did, and that song is stuck in my head. Orpen kisses the Koglu. Still has chips on day three, as does Vanessa Cade. We have a former Monte Carlo champion, Manic Lerza. Relatively short stacked, but still in contention. Nice jacket. Mm -hmm. The PSPC champion, Alexander Shilko. That means both PSPC winners are in the field. And Eric Seidel still going strong. Back to the feature table where the action's been folded to Magnus Carlsen, and he is raising with ace jack. Magnus starts the hand with 25 big blinds, opens to 11k. Definitely a tough seat to have with Watson to your direct left, but we see Watson passing up on a spot with an ace blocker, just giving Carlsen a little respect for his opening range. If you were playing against Magnus Carlsen, if you're at the same table, would you look at playing against him as okay this is someone who's new to poker and i probably have an edge or this is someone who's very good at games and i'm probably not going to mess with them i wouldn't say i would i wouldn't mess with him but i would give him more credit um for understanding the game than the average recreational player okay so vladimir Drokin has defended the big blind with jack 10 the queen eight eight flop and action has been checked to Carlson. That I lost half my stack to him yesterday. Oh my gosh, two of these people have my chips. I have to ask the question. Ugh. 
Is it on them or is it kind of on you? It, oh, no, 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 no. Don't bait me, James. Uh -huh. I, I refrain from telling the story and uh, I want to stick to it. So let's just talk about the hands. Maria got it in as a 65% no. favorite and really suffered a huge. I was an 80% favorite with one card to come. But it, it just was painful, was all. So a double paired board, ace high still playing, and Magnus Carlsen has made a delayed C bet of 6,000, which gets a fold from Droken. Mm. Still hovering around the 25 big blind mark, 10 minutes into the day. And a quick PSA for those of you hoping to play mini EPT Monte mm -hmm. Carlo events today. There is a server restart on PokerStars right now, which is why you won't be able to launch the client. Mm -hmm. Should be done and dusted by 4 o'clock this afternoon, which means the first mini EPT will be at 4.15 Central European Summer Time rather than 3.15. So an hour later today because of the server restart on Star. So we'll bring you the information of today's tournament a bit later on because you've got a few hours to go. with ace nine of clubs. Raises to 11,000. Mark Telcher folding five deuce. Dario Sammartino has given up the button. Droken in the small blind, king 10 of clubs. I want Droken to get cooler so bad this no. hand. So which one, which one are you rooting? Anti railing, Droken and Watson. Yeah, oh. that's fine. Just two, two out of. Maria's like, players. I can hold hate in my heart for multiple people at the same time. I have Don't enough you room. Worry. <laughs> so, Vas Krasinski calling as well out of the big blind, three way to the flop. Jack five three all spades. Got shot straight draw for Vaskrizensky. Ace high still the best hand right now. And looks like the action has been checked to Carlson, who was the pre-flop aggressor. He checks behind. Yeah, tough to really be able to navigate the monotone boards multi-way. Vaskrizensky now open-ended. Bob Fosse open-ender. See a little turn bet from the straight draw. Yeah, natural semi bluff spot once the flop gets checked around and nice pickup. Still the shortest stack at the table, but close to 20 big blinds than 10 big blinds now. level of day three one elimination so far and Leo Lees under the gun folds Magnus Carlsen out Mike Watson has also passed Queen Deuce for Telcher to Vladimir Droken, he folds the button, so a blind v blind, jack five of hearts in the small. Vazilchenko could see a free flop if he chooses. Vaz on Vaz. With about a sub-20 big blind stack from the small blind. I think this is a pretty easy spot where Vasilchenko can just put 
while the chip's in. Does get to fold. I get so embarrassed when that happens. Yeah, embarrassed when I, limp, <laughs> when I limp in on the short stack and they shove on me, and I'm like, ha ha, all right, well, this Ar is pretty obvious. Ahmed watching on YouTube asks, is today the last day? Oh, no, it is not. Sure. <laughs> This is day three of six. Yeah, a reminder of the Mini EPT Monte Carlo, a low buy-in online tournament series with scoop tickets added to the price pool of every single MTT. First game today will be at 4.15 CEST. When we get to Saturday, there'll be the Mini Main Event, which has an EPT Barcelona package added, going to the winner, in addition to those scoop tickets that I've already referenced. Darius Sammartino here. Yeah. Dario is going to play the Ving Rames. Opens to 11,000. 7-6 of diamonds for Vasilchenko. The suited, tight, connected hand is really nice combination to call from the small blind. I think it's sometimes a little too good to three bet. You don't want to potentially get four bet and not be able to see three with it. Dario opened off of 30 bigs. Interesting to see the fold. I think that it's just one of those situations where it's really easy to just call and navigate post. Well, Lee's having defended the big blind with queen seven of clubs, flops a flush draw, checks the action to Sammartino. Feels like two overs and a backdoor straight draws. Enough equity to continue here, especially against a wide big blind defending range. The C bet is 15,000. Going for this half pot sizing, you know, puts a lot of pressure on other hands and makes it hard for, you know, even just say like a two deuce X type hand to really want to continue to that size. But of course, the flush, happy to make the call. Nine of hearts on the turn. Gut shot for Samatino. And King High still the best hand. He's a three to one favorite. naturally turning more equity you would imagine you want to continue to put pressure on those weak one pair hands 36,000 into 59,000 Bank chip being played <laughs> by Leo Lees. He beat me to it. I was about to go, ooh, what's that one worth? <laughs> that buys him an additional 30 seconds thinking time. Meanwhile, we've ticked down to 124, another elimination from one of the outer tables. Down to 123. Oh. Lees moves all in, shoving on Darius Sammartino, who is forced to fold. Hmm. And Lee's picks up the pot. He's third in chips at this table with more than 115 big blinds. <coughs> Lazy game. Front of man says, so one chip is not a call on this tourney? Not if it's a time bank chip. Yeah, we've yet to really see whether or not 
some someone will at some point mistakenly think that that is a call and turn over their hand somehow and how well this chip works versus the little placards. I fear it's only a matter of time, but happy to be proved wrong. Yeah, those white time bank chips obviously not part of the player's stack. The yellows, blues, and greens are in play right now. The white chips, which are slightly bigger as well, are worth 30 seconds each. Players were given six time bank chips at the start of the day, and they will get more tomorrow and the day after. Pito asks, how do people get on the TV table? There is a staircase that leads up yep. from the main tournament floor to the stage. Mostly, Thank you for your question. Mostly walking, I would say, yeah. Thank you. Interesting to see Vasker Krasinski find a limping range here off of his stack with the King Jack offsuit in late position, which immediately gets raised by Lisi and it's going to be all of Mas Krasinski's stack to call and elects not to. I like having a limping range off of, you know, 20 big blind stack. I, I think King Jack in late position is just a little too strong there to just not find the min open. I feel like Maria's commentary is going to be extra on point today because she wishes she was there. <laughs> so it's going to be like, well, what I would do in this situation. <laughs> well, Telcher first to act here. Volt. That is Dario Samartino. to Oleg Vasilchenko. He folds the jack six. Leo Lees gives up the button. So Magnus Carlsen in the small blind. A7 off a hand, commonly referred to as the Spraggy. Carlsen calls. Mike Watson in the big blind. Has queen eight. Carlsen has the type of stack where, you know, I wouldn't mind him limp shoving should Watson choose to raise in this spot. But, you know, I imagine Queen 8 is, yeah, good enough to just check back. But if that was what Carlson was thinking pre-flop, then I like where he was going with that. Carlson bets this King King 10 flop. 6,000 into 15. The reason I asked you that question about Magnus Carlson is because I'm wondering, you know, would Mike Watson approach this the same way? Of, okay, he's kind of new to poker, but pretty good at games. Uh, yeah, I think Watson understands that, again, Carlson's not just going to be your typical rec player who, you know, won't have any understanding of even just how to, in real time, adjust to table dynamics. And that would make somebody a much better player on average. Ace high, still the best hand. Carlson, 86% favorite. So I'm a little confused about uh, a queen eight's hand strength here. Is this a hand well, you want to get to showdown with, or is this a hand that you need to bluff with? I mean, it's a little bit of both, right? Like, you see that Watson called because he did have some backdoor outs there with the queen, with the eight of spades, but also checking back on the turn because understanding that, of course, queen high here does have some showdown value against just a lot of potential stabs on the flop that Carlson could be betting. Checked to showdown. And with kings and sevens with an ace kicker, Magnus Carlsen is going to add 16k to his stack. Still hovering around the 25 big blind mark and still more than an hour to play on the first level of day three. He's no rook, huh? Is that what you're trying to say? Sorry. Down to 121 <laughs> players. <laughs> 
I'm sorry. I apologize in advance. I mean, just tell us how many of those you have coming. It's going to be a Blitzkrieg. <laughs> Dario Sammartino. Faults. Trokin is out. By Krasimeski. Ace Queen of Diamonds. Calls. Yeah, I like it. You know, having a somewhat balanced limping range off of his stack size. We saw him limp fold the King Jack, but clearly with this strong of a hand, he's planning to limp call it off or, you know, limp shove over and open, which is surely going to be incoming from this king queen suited. If you limp every single hand, is that having a balanced limp range? I mean, to a certain extent, it, it depends on <laughs> what you end up actually having, because uh, if you just happen to be dealt all of these hands that you all right, yeah, sure. naturally you know limp what I'm with. Saying. Yes, I do. But Don't technicality me. <laughs> So the raise from Vasilchenko is to 15,000. Mike Watson with ace four suited in the small blind. Marky T. Folds. Action is back on Vaskrazensky. So was he limping with the intention of re-raising Maria? I believe so. Ace Queen is such a strong hand. You've got, you know, sub 20 bigs to start the hand. You should be pretty happy to see the chip leader at the table raise because they're certainly going to have some lighter opens once you limp as well. Oh, and there it goes. And Vasilchenko has asked for a count. Does feel fairly strong. You know, it feels like a hand like eights, sevens, nines. Those will probably just be opening themselves. Limp shoving feels a little stronger that I don't know if King Ooh. Queen loves it, but <laughs> does end up making the call anyways. So we do have a domination situation that favors that Krasinski, the at-risk player, ace queen versus king queen. Always the prospect of some nastiness. King, clubs, cards for Vas Krasinski to avoid. Hey. Oh. oh! Has two clubs on it. That's all the draws. <laughs> Plus, <laughs> it gives Vasilchenko a straight draw. As things stand, top pair is good, but 54%. It's a post flop flip, Maria. Very sweaty. No additional <laughs> outs for Vasilchenko. But clubs and jacks are working for him. Is it too many outs? It is. Ace queen holds, and Vaskrasensky doubles up. Easy, huh? <laughs> Always easy. Is it? How's that not a flush? Nice yeah. And I think that this is just going to signal to the other players you know obviously now he's doubled up so he doesn't quite have the same stack size as before but i think they're going to be a little bit more weary of his limps later just because it does appear Gentlemen, that, that he is has a pay jump. some folds and yes. some all-ins uh mark telcher advising the table that with 120 players remaining oh 119 oh. remaining we have hit the pay jump so everyone is now guaranteed 11,350 euros. Uh, by the way, a player who did not make the pay jump, 
Manny Glurza, the 2019 Monte oh, Carlo champion, no. is out. So yes, 119 players remaining with 30, sorry, 60 minutes left on the clock until the end of the first level, until we hit the first break of the day. And a good point that Tom, one of our moderators on Twitch made is, with Magnus being at the feature table and with us advertising before the start of the play that Magnus was going to be on the main stage, we do clearly have a lot of chess fans, a lot of Magnus fans watching who maybe aren't overly familiar with all of the quirks and sure. eccentricities of poker. So we will do our best to answer any beginner's questions seriously. And also our mods will help out as well. It explains why there's so many terrible chess takes in chat today, as well as poker takes. Yeah, chat pros extend to any game. It's pretty great. Well, Carlson has opened here with ace-king. Mark Telcher with 9-4 of spades in the small blind. Doesn't seem like a hand you want to get involved with. 32. <laughs> oh my goodness okay so this is the other side of the spectrum what yeah, i was talking about it i think so but he's gonna hear from carlson real soon he's like i'll teach you to give me a short answer when i fanboy yeah this just feels a little unnecessary you know not the best hand combination two three bet with you have no blockers to high cards but bad timing Carlson just has the perfect stack here to shove over this three bet. That is true. It's one of the advantages of being famous. People just punt into you for content. For a good story. Carlson responds by moving all in. Oh, is Telcher going to posture too here? Oh, that's so you funny. Have to. Oh. Don't ask for a count. Please don't ask for a count. <laughs> Please say I think I might be priced in, though. <laughs> <It's a good poll. laughs> he knows. I <laughs> later on TV. I don't know. Well, welcome, chess fans. You just got to see your boy shove all in. Get a joker to fold. I move ahead of Mark Telcher in the rankings. 34 bigs for Carlson, 33 for Telcher. Darius Sammartino is the table short stack with 15 big blinds. I think that was the poker equivalent of castling. Do you actually know what castling is? I did it once on the computer. On the easiest difficulty setting, I could uh, I could tie the computer. So, think about that. Pocket threes for Oleg Vasilchenko. Over to Mark Telcher, who's got Ace King. Har du noe fornuftig å komme med? Har du noe fornuftig å komme med? Just one hand too late. 35. Where he raises to 35,000. Gets rid of Samartino in the small blind and Drokin in the big blind. Yeah. 
situation where I think a lot of people are just going to ditch the threes, especially given that Mark Telcher doesn't have that many chips to win. Yeah. Looks like Veselchenko has folded. So this three bet gets through. Thank you. That time was running his mouth when he said you guys in the voice. Sorry? I thought time was just running his mouth when he said you guys in the voice. Down to 117 now. Everyone guaranteed nearly 11 and a half K. Next money jump will be when we get down to 95. Jim Weeb says, Straggly isn't in if this is today's game. <laughs> James, is this today's game? This is today's game, Joe, yes. Okay, question one, good. Two, who's Straggly? You think they mean Spraggy? I mean, Straggly sounds like a knockoff Spraggy. Spraggy's already a knockoff of something. That's true. But there are different levels, right? I mean, Straggly is... All in. Sounds barely alive. There is Samatino all in from the button with ace eight. Vladimir Drokin with kings in the small blind. Reshoves. Just took that little beat just in case the big blind wakes up with something. And Darius Sammartino at risk and behind. And Mark Telcher very kindly informing Darius Sammartino that he folded a king. Not sure how helpful that is when the kings are already ahead. Oh, great. Only one <laughs> card can make a set for Drokin. Cool. No one said they folded an ace. That's something, right? But no ace on the flop. Saying you folded an ace can only hurt the kings. Martino has three outs. Make that 11 outs. <laughs> Pretty spicy. Lord. Turn. So now he's got nines and fours working for him in addition to the three mm -hmm. aces. Has the straight draw on the turn. Does not get there on the river. Kings Lovely. hold and we lose Darius San Martino in 117th place. So he cashes for 11,350 euros. If this is today's game, people have been having too many outs. This is today's game, right? 116 players remain, with still more than half of level 16 to play. First of five levels due to be played on day three. And these are the stacks the players we're watching right now at the feature table. We do have an empty seat, which I'm sure will be filled relatively <coughs> soon. Mike Watson, the table chip leader among the tournament chip leaders with nearly 130 big blinds. has been folded to Watson. Ace Jack suited. Link asking how long is one level? 90 minutes, one and a half hours. And we take a break after each level. It always feels like Droken wants to get involved somehow. 
and he has had a couple of spots that seemed reasonable here. You know, also maybe just wanting to attack a late position open with this offsuit combination where you do have a king blocker in your hand. It's not going to work against Watson, though. A hand like ace jack suited, just too good. And no offense, but the person wielding it also just too good. I mean, or too lucky in if a waiter, can my case. Here? If there's a waiter, if you see a waiter, can you send him up here, please? If you see a waiter, can you please send him up here? Thank you. Go son, coffee. He's actually talking to Manic Lurza right there. <laughs> Now, that is a format I'd like to see. A poker tournament where when you're eliminated, you then have to wait on the <laughs> players who are still in. I think we've had aspects of that, haven't we? Didn't someone bring beers to the table in one of the cash challenge games? I think it was in Shark Cage where Shark? Sam Grafton got beers for the yeah, other players. But I'm saying that, for example, right now, what Maria Ho should be doing is making sure <laughs> that, like, Vladimir Drokin and Mike Watson are fed and watered, that if they need My a massage, goodness. that that's arranged for them. I would pay any amount to buy out. To buy right out of that. <laughs> if they needed a restaurant reservation this evening, that you could sort that for them. I might not ever play a tournament again if it's that <laughs> format. <laughs> There's just too many people that I wouldn't want to <laughs> do that for. Too many people that would love to have you bring them a drink, too. You'd be coming out with bottles of Grey Goose with sparklers coming out of them. <laughs> Ace high still ahead. Went check, check on the flop. I would say I'm a little surprised that Droken did not see bet that flop. I think that it's pretty natural that you would want to follow up the pre flop aggression with a bet, but now I think just going to find showdown here or attempt to with this double paired board. Watson could be interested in finding a little bit of value here. All in. Oh, a little oh. bit. A lot bit. <laughs> Shoves on Droken, who now has to decide whether to make a king high hero call for his tournament life. And if he were to make that call, that life would be over. These are phenomenal poker players that can somehow win massive chip leader pots with ace high. That's why he's sub Watson, you're not. Even still. Well, we spoke to Mike Watson before the start of play today, knowing he was going to be coming to our feature table, knowing he was among the chip leaders. And we asked him about how play went on day two, including the hand that he played against Maria Ho. Yeah, so uh, coming into day two yesterday, I was really short, just had like starting stack basically at the beginning of the day, and I uh, just had an amazing day, just, you know, everything kind of went my way, hit some cards, uh, won some really big pots, a couple coolers, uh, went all the way from 30K up to almost 700, so really kind of like the dream day two. Nice, uh, I heard there was uh, some action between you and Maria yesterday. Um, I, I think maybe there's a big hand you got into. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I played a big pot against Maria where I semi-bluffed all in on the turn with a flush draw and a gut shot. And uh, she ended up calling me with top pair, top kicker, so I wasn't in very good shape, but I uh, managed to hit the club uh, on the river, knock her out. Um, so, you know, I like Maria, but, uh, you know, happy to get the chips wherever they come from, really. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the chips, Maria. really appreciate it, and uh, I'm going to try to put it to good use. You know, really uh, do my best win this one. So uh, good luck, you know, rooting against me in there. I think it's going to be a big disappointment for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a credit to uh, Susan for getting that out of Mike Watson. Well done. I, I mean, I was going to be like, you know, he said thanks. So I guess I am rooting for him until that last comment, Mike. Good job. The anti-sweat is on. Did he tell the story accurately? 
yeah, I mean, essentially, that's what happened. Uh... Wow, what a sigh. So we have had the open from Vaskarensky. Three bet by Vasilchenko, who, for those of you who've been asking, is Fuku Ruku online. Oh. Won a scoop back in 2020. I think it's pronounced Fuku. says Magnus has given me Peter Dinklage vibes. That was the most commonly posted comment of yesterday. <laughs> Congratulations for being 24 hours late. Dinklage, get me Dinklage. I was going to move on from that today. Yeah, with the slick back hair, it's not quite as good, right? Yeah. Although he does kind of look like he should be making a weapon for Thor. <laughs> Zachary on YouTube asking Maria, will you put Joe in the World Series of Poker main event? Maria doesn't need to. Joe is satellited. Joe is qualified for the World Series of Poker main event. Maria is going to guarantee I profit in the World Series of Poker main event. Yeah. And, you know, obviously I have rooting interests both because you're my friend, but I do have a piece. That's what I mean. You're yeah. I'm guaranteed to be profitable because you're taking a piece and I'm free rolling. I like a piece. You know what I mean? Say no more. I'm trying. I'm still trying to decide how much to sell. I don't think I'm going to sell any more than definitely fifty. <laughs> uh, selling a hundred percent has crossed my mind. Could you imagine if Stapes was just in this business for so long, wins a main event seat at a charity event, and then oversells and then is never seen again? Like yeah. this is your mic drop. That's my exit. Yeah. I have considered selling 100% and just booking a 10K win. And I mean, no. Absolutely not. I forbid you to do that. Maria's like, I retract my piece. I think what I've landed on is I'm probably only going to sell, like, a quarter, I think. Yeah, it's one of those things, right? I mean, obviously, whatever you do sell, that money is not going to change your life. But the uh, amount of money you could potentially win and wish that you yeah. hung on to could definitely change Except, your life. Except, go ahead, James. In, in the words of Alfonso the Stuntman, I am in. So here's the problem. I've overspent a little bit between winning the seat and the seat happening. I'm like, well, I'm going to get some money when I actually play the World Series. You, know, you guys know what I'm saying, right? Like, I'm kind of in the hole already based on either winnings or... But you have zero fiscal responsibility. Yes, I'm aware of that. <laughs> what a flop for Watson. Flops a full house here. Flopson. Definitely looked mildly interested. But obviously, you know, we have the cameras and we're able to see the facial expression so much better. I don't think anybody else picked up on it. It was a, a micro-expression. So Vasilchenko, the pre-flop aggressor, raised from the cutoff, flattered by Lisa on the button. Mike Watson defending the big blind. So this is a continuation bet from Vasilchenko with less than 1% equity. Yeah, and it's so good when you have a bet and a call in front of you. You're just sitting here praying somebody else has a king. I mean, it's definitely not out of the realm of possibility, but actually up against two very strong hands, even without someone else having trips in this spot. Lee's also less than 1% has flattered the 10K. Here comes the mad dog. Needs to hit running noins. Noin, noin, noin.
Yeah, and again, this check raise, just fast playing the boat, is really designed to capitalize off of, you know, the hope that potentially someone else has trips right now. You know, obviously, you don't block the flush draw either. Of course, when you flop a boat, it's hard <laughs> to do that. But, you know, you, you're hoping that your opponents are going to have something they can continue with. Fold from Vasilchenko. Lease oh, yeah. sticking around for at least one more street. Oh. <laughs> yeah, nine could have been carnage, but nine's still looking pretty good. You know, you you're definitely ahead of flush draws if Watson perhaps check raised with a 7x type holding, just trying to fold out over card equity on that flop, then you're still in pretty good shape against a portion of Watson's check raise range there. Ooh. Now he checks. I mean, he more or less called a shot in that interview today. This is a perfect follow up hand. Yeah, not, not a great river, though, because, again, flush draw is definitely being a part of Watson's check-raise range there on the flop. This might kill the action a little bit. Ooh. Yeah, hoping to get Lise to... <laughs> Go, wow. go for some value there, yeah. Checks it back. Not a great run out <laughs> nice to get more action. Try, Mikey. Mike Watson, table chip leader with a 150 big blind stack. Into the second half of the first level of day three as we head to one of the outer tables where Tonka is in action. It's oh. Parker Talbot versus Jean-Marc Cristiani. Tonka has bet 75K on the turn. There's the board, Jack 774 with two hearts. And Cristiani has already used two time bank chips. Oh. There is the call from Cristiani. So this hand is going to the river. Jack of hearts, double paired board, puts a flush out there as well, although flush is pretty worthless on a double paired board, right? Tonka shoves on Cristiani, who calls all in. Tonka with a seven, so he's got a full house. Hey. Ace, king of hearts for Cristiani. He <laughs> called it off with a flush on a double pet board. Surprising. Wow. Yeah, and I so mean, fast that Tonka asked if he had jacks full. I mean, there wasn't a lot of chips left by the river. Cristiani will be eliminated in 116th place. He's going to cash out for 11,350 euros. And Tonka is now going to be among the chip leaders. Tonka's got just shy of 900k. Is pot committed still a thing? Or are you supposed to fold there when you make your flush? I mean, when the person jams, puts you all in, I think you definitely can't be snapping it off there with the flush. Back to the feature table, where it's Mark Telcher versus Leo Lease. Lease raised from the cutoff pre. Telcher defended his big blind, and Mark is now facing a continuation bet of 10,000. What if you didn't realize the board was double paired? Is that <laughs> any better? I, I, no, it's not. We're on day three of a huge EPT main event. It's for your tournament life. Check the board. Lease wins this one with a C bet. <laughs> We are 
half hour left on this first session today. Got pretty lucky with this featured table. Mark Telcher being a little quieter than usual. I think that, as Maria's just saying, we're on day three of a big main event. He's throwing a couple of couple of lines in the water. Nobody's really bit, so we're staying quiet for now. Yeah, the problem is uh, you can be talkative, but you need somebody who's talking back. And so far, nobody seems to entertain that idea at the moment. You need people who are talking back or people that you respect so little that you don't mind talking <laughs> at them over and over again. I don't think either is the case here. Lease raising. Queen Jack suited, Droken with the same suit. Nine, eight. King, five, Trey, two clubs as the flop. Feels like a pretty easy C bet and win it spot. Just the type of board texture that really favors pre-flop aggressor. I take this one down. Caruso on YouTube says, I wanted to play if Poker Stars is down for maintenance. It will be back up and running in time for today's mini EPT. First one kicks off today at 4.15 p.m. It's a $3.30 eight max deep stack. Next mini EPT at 6.15 p.m. local time. That's a 5.50 eight max turbo progressive knockout. That's just like a regular knockout, but it's vegan. And then at 8.15 p.m. today, there is a $2.20 heads up zoom total KO. So not as progressive, total. All encompassing. All that happening once Poker Stars is up, back up and running today. A little maintenance day. I heard they're finally fixing all the bad beats. Finally figured it out. Lease is going to open with the ace of clubs. Watson flats in the cutoff with jack nine suited. Vas Krasinski has eight seven in the big blind is also going to take a flop. Let it flow dealer. King, 10, five, two clubs. I like the looks of this for Lease. Watson with a gut shot. Yeah, Lease has the stronger range, of course, opening from early position and does have the best hand so far. Watson, of course, with some equity would it be nicer to have a backdoor flush draw to go with it? Continuation bet from Lee's. Rid of a player, but not Mike Watson, who continues hitting <coughs> draws. But Lee's could have the jack of clubs in his hand. Entirely possible. Or other jacks, I right. guess. I mean, any uh, anybody would be opening ace jack off from under the gun plus one, I believe. So certainly all off suit combos and suited combos available. Lee's checks. But for now, Watson just can't believe his luck. Run so good yesterday. Seems to be continuing today. I think I'm doing it wrong. I think it's because I'm anti-railing him so hard. Mm. He's, he's running well and doing his thing. I need to switch it up and root for him now. 
that would have the desired effect, I think. Do you think it would have such a desired effect that it's going to change Lisa's card <laughs> into a jack? Because Watson has just bet a lot. And I do love the fact that this is a mini sweat with. Yeah, I mean, this says a lot, I think, about Lisa's other card, obviously, mm -hmm. right? I, I think that if you just had ace do suited or something here, you're, you're not calling the turn bet. Clearly, I think at minimum, you've got to be working with ace king. You know, of course, you know, the nut flush draw would probably continue without having a pair to go with it. But again, sh such a strong range when you open from under the gun plus one especially at a tough table. Well, the wrong flush draws come in. Yeah, it's it's not the best run out, you know, for Watson's hand either. Now, obviously, just up against a very coordinated board. If you were hoping to bet big, perhaps on the river now, I don't really know what how big you could really go and expect to get called by worse, so into a pot of 170,000. Watson bets 85. And looks like a fold from Lease. So Mike Watson moves up over 835,000, more than 165 big blinds. The blinds going up in just under 30 minutes time. 113 players remaining in the EPC Monte Carlo main event. We've talked about scoop tickets being added to the prize pool of the mini EPT tournaments. We've talked about the fact that we have a scoop champion, Oleg Vasilchenko, at the feature table right now. This year's spring championship of online poker kicks off as soon as we're done here in Monte Carlo. Sunday, May 7th, runs till the 31st of the month. More than 350 tournaments. I think the actual number is 368. Wow. <laughs> and we'll have a live coverage of selected events on Twitch and YouTube going to have the final table of the 25k high roller going to have the final table of the 10k main event plus some selected high roller events as well all kicking off this coming sunday as we track over the outer tables can see face of players like Paul Newey and Vanessa Cade. So still plenty of big names remain. And we've got the snowman's num num for Mike Watson. Raises to 11,000 with pocket eights. Mark Telcher with pocket fives. Seems like rooting for Mike Watson isn't working for you either right now, Maria. I'm not sure. Maybe you just want to mix it up entirely. I'm going to randomize my, my anti-railing with yeah. my genuine. Telcher <laughs> folds the fives. Yeah, just, you know, not quite deep enough to, to set mine and feeling maybe a little bit yeah, uncomfortable. Ooh. Playing aggressive. against Mike Watson. Yeah, this is an aggressive move out of Vas Krasinski, who has been fairly quiet, you know, and hasn't really gotten out of line. We saw him go all in with ace queen, double up. But other than that, hasn't really shown. <laughs> Doesn't even really have the stack, you know, to have a lot of light three beds. Is he the one that's been limping? Or is yes. that the other Vaz? No, he's the one who's been limping. He's got like 20 bigs behind. Is this a get it in spot for Mike Watson? Yeah, it feels like, again, if you are just playing for chips and you are going to take standard ranges up against your opponent, not thinking that they're going to be three betting so tight here um, and so narrow, yeah, you're going <laughs> to get it all in. But it's opponent dependent a little bit in that sense. And a quick fold from Vas Krasinski as Mike Watson chips up to nearly 900K. And we are stepping away from the main stage, checking on action at one of the outer tables where it's Eric Seidel versus Dinesh Alt. Nasty minder. This hand has gone to the river. So Alt bet 17K on the turn, Seidel called. 
and Alt now bets 40k on the river. Seidel has moved all in. Dinesh Alt calls. On their backs, King Jack versus Jax, and it's a full house for both players. It's threes full of Jacks for Alt, but it's Jacks full Ooh. of threes for Eric Seidel, and he is going to get a full double up. And he's now going to have around 150k, maybe close to 160. That should be a chop. There's someone that I'm genuinely rooting for. Dinesh Alt. That should be a chop. They both had a jack. I wouldn't mind seeing the Chop Hot song anyways, just because we're all in person and should sync up nicely. I know that you sing <laughs> a little bit in your personal life. Would you ever consider getting your singing group to do the Chop Hot song? My singing group? You're I have singer. a group. Aren't you, aren't you in like a choir? No, I, wa I was in my college a cappella group, but now I'm more of a solo act, Joe. I, I could get my okay. sister. My sister actually has beautiful singing voice. Carlson versus Lease, 8-7-3 on the flop. King High still good, but Lease with a draw. Carlson raised under the gun. Lease defended the big blind, and Lease is playing in flow. Checks the action to Carlson. As per terms of the settlement, I'm not allowed to mention Maria's sister. <laughs> Carlson checks it back. We get the nine of spades on the turn. And this is where at least can go pretty big here with the semi bluff. Just try to shut it down. You would imagine that Carlson's going to be c betting, you know, any over pairs, hands that are pretty strong. You know, I'm not sure what. I was expecting um, out of Carlson today. Mm -hmm. I've never played with him. I've never really seen him play. But so far, everything he's been doing seems to be what a good reg would do. I haven't seen anything unorthodox, unconventional. Um, and, and I just think overall, he does seem to have a very good handle on the game. You'll notice that we've ticked down to 109 players, and we are filling the vacant seat at the feature table. The new player coming in is Virgil Turkey. He has a 30 big blind stack. You're the captain? <laughs> well, I would like to see uh, Turkey versus Salami heads up. Zolchenko folds 9-6 on the button. Blind v. Blind, Lease in the small, Carlson in the big. Queen 7 of diamonds. Some of the players who've been eliminated recently include Santosh Sivana, the guy we saw bubble the super high roller on Monday. Former EPT Monte Carlo finalist Pierre Calamusa. Nice bowl of Calamusa. Delicious. Brian Paris is gone. Following his dad, Olivier, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and Julian Martini, the PSPC 2019 runner up, has also hit the rail. Okay, now I really like this from Carlson, actually. Just taking this type of hand and raising against a limper from the small blind. You know, actually, really nice play. I think Lise, though, just with the suited combination, just a little too good to fold preflop. But I feel like Carlson, with the follow through here, should just be able to take it down pretty easily. And that's why when you raise from the big blind, you give yourself this type of board coverage a little mm -hmm. bit more versus if you had just checked back the 10-3. It's going to be a little bit harder to rep but here, this is going to get the job done. That's pretty good. That That is good. That is definitely one for the good side. Pretty.
Pretty good. Carlson hovering around the 30 big blind mark. Average stack right now is 300k. 20 minutes until the end of this level. That's 20 minutes till the first break of the day. And then, of course, the blinds will go up on the other side of that break. I have a chess question. When you lose a piece in chess, can you get it back like in dodgeball? You know, I love how you, I mean, I don't, I don't want to speak for James, but I don't know anything about chess, but I, I knew the answer to that question. I do know <laughs> that if you've lost your queen, if you can get a pawn all the other way to the other end of the board, you yeah. can turn it into a queen. Okay. All right. That's something. So it is like dodgeball. Yes, Joe. It's exactly like dodgeball. Can you have, but only if there's no queen. You can't have like four queens. I think you can. I think you can. Anytime you get a pawn to the end, you, it gets promoted. That probably happens a lot. A set of queens. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think, and there are people on, on, on Twitch confirming this, you can promote it to any piece, but why would you not promote it to a queen? Because that's the most powerful. Hmm. That's a good question. It's like, why say, oh, I want to make it a horse, and then you can only do that kind of funny jumping thing where it goes two and one. Yeah, and I suppose your opponent also knows it moves in the L shape. It's not really an advantage there. Obviously, you can't make it a king. Thank you, Pokestar Strike, the world's biggest pedant. I mean, I knew that, but I'm glad that he told other people who might not have known that. Our mod asks a fair question. Maybe the pawn is just happy being a pawn. Got a good little life and a family. <laughs> I just want to go home. Yeah, we shouldn't assume the pawn wants more. Can the queen abdicate down to a pawn? No. I'm sure if you said to your opponent, I want my queen to act like a pawn, they'd be like, yeah, sure, fine, whatever you want, buddy. What if the queen, like, falls in love with Prince Harry and moves to Canada? Carlson versus Watson here. Ooh. King Jack versus Jack Nine, and it is domination rotation in Magnus's favor. I like this check back from Carlson. Just not the type of texture. Ooh. Okay. Domination restoration. Yeah, not the type of texture that you can go three barrels for value. And obviously, with a few of those draws out there, don't want to bloat the pot with the seabed. But obviously, getting outdrawn here on the turn. Check, check. Queen on the river. And this is going to be the type of pot that everyone likes, adores, desires. I feel properly warmed up for what is about to happen. Not a whole lot of chips in this pot as it went check, check on both the flop and turn. Now just about getting some value for Watson, but we'll quickly find out that, you know, not, I don't think there's a lot of value in Carlson raising here. Um, you certainly can if you expect that ace jack is always going to be a three bet from the small blind out, um, out of the, uh, out of position against the button. But of course, if you don't know that, Sometimes it's okay to play it safe. It does look like Carlson is going to go for the raise, though. Interesting. And there is the call from Mike Watson. So this will end in a chop. And you know what they say. Everyone, Everyone loves, loves a chop pot.
I feel like I was nervous for that one because of Magnus. <laughs> okay, so we're all learning something today. <coughs> yeah. Gerard 1971 says, in some cases, promoting the pawn to a horse yeah, can it's promote a checkmate. Yeah. Promoting to a queen could result in a stalemate, which means you lose. Isn't a stalemate like yeah, a chop pot? No one loses, no one wins. Is a stalemate different than a draw? <laughs> I don't know. Everyone loves a stalemate. <coughs> yeah, stalemate is a tie. It's a draw. So it's kind of like dodgeball and kind of like soccer. It's like all the games. Jack of King, Nine of Diamonds. I'm making the chess people mad. I'm sorry. So she is called out of the big blind. And we have a Queen, Jack, Ten, Flop. It's the straight for lease. Jack to King, Nine. There it is. Well, I'm going to appease the chess people by telling them that Magnus Carlsen will stay at the feature table for the next 90 minutes of play. We're going to stick with this feature table for one more level. I'm going to elise the chess people and tell them that Leo Lees has won the pot. JBBB Eek says, everyone loves a chop pot. Is some that never caught on that they won't let go. Accurate. I'll say it's never caught on, hearing it on other poker streams, <laughs> live poker. Oh, yeah. Did we get the lawyers to draft those season decisions? <laughs> We've already established, right, that it was invented on a PokerStars live stream. Therefore, it is the intellectual property of PokerStars. They could, if they wanted to, shut down other streams, other operators, other events from using it. If they wanted to, being a big if, considering all the anti-slap muck they'd have to get through. See a limp from under the gun, from the King Jack suited off of 20 bigs. And Vasilchenko right behind, willing to raise to 15,000 with King Queen. Kind of a similar spot in the sense of Vasilchenko having the same hand when he doubled up as Krasinski. But in this situation, Droken might look to get involved with Ace Jack of Hearts from the big blind. Still just a single raise pot, so why not get in there? And King Jack suited, again, a, a nice combo to see a flop. And it's just three big blinds. If you limp that and you get a chance to see a cheapish flop, of course, it's going to be a prime spot to come along multi-way. It's going to play quite nicely. <laughs> oh, it is crunchy. Flops them dead. Absolutely. This is all Vaskrasensky, who's got 18 bigs behind and would love to get max value, but Drokin and Vasilchenko have completely missed. It's kind of tough to slow play the flop flushes too, isn't it? Uh, 
Um, actually, I, I think it's 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 not too hard, but of course you do want to get value from somebody with naked club here. So, yeah, you, a lot of times you will see people fast play because a it's still going to be vulnerable, and b there's still quite a few hands that you can get value from. But I think when the pre-flop aggressor isn't willing to put in a bet on the flop, then of course your options to slow play gets diminished a bit. Just knowing you're not up against a very strong range anyways, probably gonna have to just start betting yourself. Bet of 21,000 gets two quick folds. And eight and a half minutes on the clock until the end of this blind level. That's when we take the first break of the day. Four players remaining. That means we've seen 22 eliminations so far today. <coughs> oh dear. Cohen wants to know, what are the with chips? RV? What are the with chips? <laughs> what are the with chips? Um, they're, they're 100Ks, right? Poker? No. <laughs> you came out white chips. They're time banks. Main Sajak asks, how many cash of Carlson left? I mean, they're not making it easy on us, are they? I think it's cool we've got a new audience here. I'm happy to have them. Sorry for my chess jokes. And we'll try to field your questions as best we can. I think it's worth explaining if you're very new to watching poker. Uh, Magnus does not have cash in front of him at all. He's paid a buy-in to enter this tournament. It's 5,000 euros. And the chips you get at the beginning, uh, that's it. That's all you get unless you win more. And they don't have a cash value. So Magnus Carlsen, having started with 30,000 in chips, two days ago, now has 168,000 in chips. But the thing is, the minimum amount you have to bet goes up every 90 minutes. So even though he's got more chips than he started with before, relative to the minimum bet, he actually doesn't have very many at the moment. He's doing okay, but doesn't have a lot. Thank you for your question. And obviously where you finish in the tournament determines how much prize money you win. Right now, with 102 players remaining, everyone is guaranteed 11,350 euros, but that prize money goes up as players are eliminated. Hold on a second. Main Sajak is back. Why Carlson always fold? Why Carlson can bet? Whew, okay, here we go. You know what? I'll do this in the next level. And obviously, I think... The question about the chip was referring to the white chips, which are the new time bank chips, which replace the old time bank cards. Shot clock brought into play at the start of day three, 30 seconds per decision. If you play a time bank chip, you get an extra 30 seconds thinking time. Save them for when you need them. And if you don't use them, bag them and tag them and bring them back for day four. Stat trick, it's hard enough without you trolling the chat. Why is it called oven when you of in the cold food of out hot eat the food? Oh boy. I should have read that first to myself. Turkey picking a good spot here with the three bet pre. Pretty nice flop to be able to find to continue and get the fold. Hot food and cold turkey. Five minutes left on the clock, and we're going to check on the action at one of the outer tables. We are going to follow Ramon, the 2019 PSPC winner, in a hand against Gerald Karlik. And looks like we're on the river, guys, and Ramon has bet 150k. The board is ace, ace, 10, 9, 8. 
And Ramon, after getting called tables nines, that is a full house. Gerald Carlick mucks. And Ramon Kalias is now going to be playing more than 750k. Ramon still a big stack on day three. Speaking of songs that have never caught on. Follow Ramon. Follow Ramon. On a Monday, on a Tuesday, following Ramon. Hey! I missed the hand. Damn it. I mean, how does he always have chips? Like, always. Worth highlighting that Ramon made the final table of this tournament last year, busted in seventh place, looking to go back to back. You're not really able to get much going this level, just not really getting the hands. <coughs> One light three bet spot against Magnus didn't work out here with a really nice hand, though, and in position against the always dangerous Mike Watson. I do think that people who have had experience playing against Telcher before would probably categorize him as a bit on the tight side pre-flop so you know this flat pre off of the stack size just something that Watson will have in mind here of course Telcher can have a lot of the mid pairs ace jack two overs backdoor flush draw seems like a pretty natural spot to find a continue even though Telcher just doesn't quite have the stack to get too speculative. This does feel like a little too strong to fold Easy still, one. but Easy he money. does. And you know, having a tight image can work two ways, right? People will put you on a bit of a more narrow and defined pre-flop hand, but they also might feel like you are susceptible to maybe overfolding in situations where People are going to be making big bets and maybe just needing to have a really strong hand in order to continue. Or maybe you three bet someone who has ace king and they fall. Oh, no, wait, no, they stick it in your eye. Clock ticking down into the break. 101 players remaining. Oh, Magnus folded the Tonka. 7 3 offsuit. Now to Telcher, who folds four deuce. Ace four suited to Vladimir Drokin, and it's a raise to 11,000. Oh, like Vasilchenko, queen seven in the small, is out. Leo Lees in the big blind, nine six. Also folds. Looks like we'll get in one last hand before the players go on break. A reminder that this will remain our feature table for the next level of play. It'll be a 20 minute break and when we come back, more action from day three. More action featuring Magnus Carlsen, Mark Telcher and Mike Watson who still has the table chip lead with a stack of more than 900K. Magnus, Mike, Mark, Maxim. Deuces under the gun for Sir Watts. I was going to say, get me out of this booth before Watson hits a million in chips, please. I can't watch this anymore. It's unbearable. Well, he's not going to hit a million this level. Drokin raising the hijack with King Eight, please. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Getting word this isn't Drokin, it's actually Dr. Aachen. Doc Ock. Doc Ock. Don't ruin everyone's break, Vasilchenko. 10-7 off of Vasilchenko. 
That's a fold. Lease gives up the small blind. Magnus Carlsen in the big blind. Queen three offsuit also folds. So the players get to go on break. Looks like we're coming back with around 100 players. So same lineup on the feature table when we return in just shy of 20 minutes time. Mike Watson, table chip leader. Maxim Vaskrazenski will be the table short stack with 21 bigs. The blind's going to 3,000, 6,000 with a 6K big blind ante. Some more action from day three of the Pokestars EPT presented by Monte Carlo Casino on the other side of the break. As I said, back inside of 20 minutes. Star-studded final table. Ooh, Akari on the rail. I think with maybe Felipe right next to him. Race. A Dennis pass, Michael pass. Luca Pagano, Luca. King five. Jack Race. of Diamonds. 75,000. Mariela pass, Antonio pass, Maxime pass. My last name is How much are you playing? Sorry, to, about 500. Well, it's 550. Five, 550 to start the hand. Including this. 550 to start the hand. Isaac is in the big blind. How much is it? 70. 75. I don't know. It's since I've known it. We've seen Isaac Barron kind of stressed out in some situations where he's got pretty good starting hands. Yeah, obviously huge here. Premium. First hand or early goings at least of the final table. And Isaac re raise. Two. We do see him re raise. I think that's the correct choice, the good choice. Stack, or he's just counting out the call. Let's see the rest of the stack, please. Well, it's one of those King Jack. Obviously, the, the old uh, classic call never overplay King Jack. It is a hand easily dominated. Pagano opening in early here. He is going to make the call. We're off to a flop. Yeah, that seems like a lot. It's two players, Isaac of your stack and Luca. put in. Isaac will be first to act on the flop. There is Pagano Senior railing his son. And here's the flop. Check of clubs, <laughs> three of space. Out flopped. Domination I rotation. And call. Yeah, I take Luca it back. Sorry, apparently you are supposed Luca to. Shows king Jack, you got top pair of jacks, kicker yeah. king. And ace king of clubs is the hand for Isaac. Ace king of clubs is ace high the moment. Luca in the lead with the top pair of jacks and kick the king. Let's see the turn. It's a queen. Now Luca also has the flush draw. He has four diamonds. Does not want to see a ten or an ace unless it's the ace of diamonds. Let's see the last card. <laughs> It's yes, a yes, of yes. And Pagano doubles up. Wow. That's just a terrible advertisement for King Jack. It is I a love the needle up. from the rail as well. Someone that great pre flop call, dude. I guarantee it's the same guy who called for the spade earlier on. It seems unlikely that there are two gigantic turns on the rail. <laughs> <laughs> Maxime pass. Glenn pass. Isaac pass. Todd in our chat says, How much better is Ace King suited pre flop than Ace King offsuit mathematically? Ace King offsuit is a small favorite since it has two flush draws. Ace pass. pass. <laughs> hey, we're in 2008. I'm not allowed to make that joke. Thank you. Luke Thank you for your question. There's a little kid on the rail. That's cool. 
Hey, buddy. To eighty thousand. Say that again. Thank you. Small blind pass. Eighty. Yeah. About four fifty more. Antonio <laughs> re-raised wow. all in. Wow. Much, much more count. So the magician shoving with ace eight. What's the big line? Twenty-four thousand. Four hundred eighty thousand. Go. Yeah, I think we're at the 12.24 level, and that is a call from Luca, and Antonio is at risk and dominated. It is still a lot of chips, race eight offsuit. So let's yeah, see that's Antonio what I was getting at. Luca, ace check. I agree with you, Stapes. Up comes first cut, king. Yes. Okie dokie. So Antonio drawing dead to a shot. Needs a check to split the pot. Let's see the turn. It's a five. Good luck, boys. And last card. Obligatory sweat for Antonio. Doesn't seem too interested in it. Not going to find in that chop. First man out from the final table, Antonio Esfandiari secures an eighth place finish in the EPT Season 4 Grand Final. And that is worth 168,000 euros. Pleasure. Michael Pass. Luca Race. And this really feels like it could be the one for Luca Pagano, huh? Like not the hand, but the tournament. Well, he's running pure so far. That King Jack versus the Ace King, obviously flopping massively. Picks up the King Queen of Diamonds here now. Keen poker tourist on the rail there with 2.1 megapixel digital camera. Small blind call, big blind pass. Three players. Up comes nine, four dues. Isaac checks. How about that flop, Stapes? Is it his time? I mean, you got to be pretty hopeful about this. Your two overs, your flush draw. And although he can't know this, two hands that probably can't take a ton of heat. Luca bets 210,000. It's tough to fold the sixes to one bet, but with no diamond, I would imagine it's tough to Nine, four, two, see flop. a lot of turns you like. It's a four. Oh, well, actually, that's not such a bad one. Sorry, I know this is a tense moment at this final table, but what on earth is going on in Casa del Spraggy? Oh, do we have, can we hear that? <laughs> yes. Have you been hearing that all day? Well, there's been the no, occasional, occasional kind of like moment, yes. Oh, my housemate's playing Call of Duty Warzone. Welcome to said lock, something about their shopping. He better not have my shopping. Hang on. Uh, it's, <laughs> no, it, it's Warzone. The shopping's safe. Do you want to exit count? Nope. Yeah, please. Oh, uh, yeah. A bit more. Yeah. A different experience every day. I like to mix it up. You're very welcome. I like Luca Pagano's dad being on the rail. It's like if my dad were there, only his shirt's still on. Well, also, you talk about the era of sponsorships. Even his dad has a patch. Family affair. There it is. Chorney oh, is sticking around. Six of diamonds. River card is a queen of hearts. Well, it's not the six of diamonds. Pagano does take the lead, however. Misses his flush draw. 
but pairs to the top. Gotta be pretty happy about that. And also, Chorney can't really expect Pagano to have like just a bunch of random queens, so maybe he can still get a value bet out here. Yeah. Value bet paid, I should say. In terms of queens that Pagano's going to have, it's going to be Queen Jack of Diamonds, Queen Ten of Diamonds, King Queen of Diamonds, three combinations. He probably won't value bet a nine like this for this sizing at this point. So occasionally Pagano pairs the queen. Occasionally he has kings, maybe aces. But if he missed his flush draw, Chorney's hand could well still be good. And call. Show Calls them. quickly. Luca shows queen, king, she has two pairs, queens and fours. Oh, Chorney disgusted. Wow. <laughs> Hell yeah, Luca. I know it's only king season queen, four, and, uh, but feels like he is due. King of diamonds, queen of diamonds, was in a flush draw, made it better two pairs. Mm -mm. No, don't like it. Mm -mm. Chorney like upset. <laughs> no. As reactions to losing hands go, that's a good one, Glenn Chorney. 20,000, 40,000 blinds, 4K ante. I six pass. Dennis <laughs> <laughs> yeah. pass. He's, uh, he's known Michael for that kind pass. of thing. Yeah, yeah. So like, guys... He, he listed, you know that? In Monaco. He raised one. Monaco. I know, I know. Look at race. To 130,000. Just to check, guys, that I'm not going completely mad. My instructions on the free roll password were pretty clear, right? Very, yeah. very clear. Yeah, okay. very clear. I mean, I forgot who came second, and I'm commentating, but uh, very clear, yes. To 400,000, and right. Luca re raised on We're Luca off to the races. Pagano involved in every hand. And I'm guessing this is Villamur a risk here with the ace king. Should he call? Yeah, he's got 1.3 behind. Luca all in for 3.2. And we are up to a 40k big blind now. So this is, what, 32 bigs, ace king. There are, of course, pay jump considerations. You're never too happy calling off your chips on a final table. I definitely think at this stage... You know, these guys seem to be playing pretty competently now. I think they will be considering ICM, if not directly in a mathematical sense, but definitely ladders and pay jumps. And call. Got to go with the ace king, though. Got Maximo in with ace king. Flip that coin. Luca shows pay off checks. Like the Spiderwick Chronicles versus Rachel getting Luka married. Queen, ace four. And we have an ace high flop. Turn card. No, Luca. Is it five? Also no clubber. Flash door, Maxime. Just down one eight for Pagano. To the jack of spades. It's a four. Maxime double. And that's going to be a double up for Maxime Villamur. <laughs> Maxime and Glenn are in the blinds. Isaac Faults. Dennis Carlo. And again... Let's emphasize, this guy has made two final tables in a single season. And a runner-up spot to Julian Thu in Baden, looking for the win here in Monte Carlo. Excuse me, 175. 175,000. Opens to 175K. Boy, Luca just can't take a hand off. In a somewhat delicate situation now, he is... Sixth of six in chips at last update. I think around 1.1 million, which equates to close to 30 bigs, maybe just underneath it. There's more than nine. Yeah, I see. I see. I'm ready. All in. Lucas says he's all in. Lucas shoves with ace jack. Falls in the small blind. Glenn passes on the big blind. It's back to Dennis. Right, cool. Carlo calls with queens. This is not a race. 
Mm -mm. Luca at a significant disadvantage, and he's at risk of elimination in sixth place. Jack of spades. And this is just <sighs> how fast the fall can happen in tournament poker sometimes. From all the chips, you lose a flip, then you get it in bad. Something else, or he will be our sixth place finisher. Flop is king, seven, seven. That doesn't change anything. Queen's holding. Turn card, please. The turn is a 10. Unfortunately, a queen will not help Luca because that would give Dennis queens full. One time, give me so this ace. ace. One so time, every time. Just one time. One time. One time. The jack is not enough, and Luca, I'm pretty sure you're out of one times, buddy. For the most successful cash player in EPT history, Mr. Luca Pagano. They can't win a tournament, though. Back at the feature table. Action's on Connor Drynan. He's got aces. Do you think Connor Drynan thinks about that aces versus aces loss in the million dollar tournament every time he's got aces? Because I do. Mustafa Kanet with ace jack suited calls. Queens for Rutsi. Maybe Rutsi will give Drynan's aces some protection. He shoves. Ike folds. As does you. You can't use. Why does Alasmar need a count? He's got queen four. Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> no, no, chill, bro. <laughs> Man, he really does not want to go broke with aces again, does he? Connor has <laughs> acted out of turn. If I do, if I don't say nothing, he's obliged to say uh, all in. Or uh, what? What's the move? Just so we are aware, because you have asked. Unless you change the action. I know, I know. This is a, okay, I know okay, the rules. Nothing, nothing, just nothing that, that special. Okay, rules. okay. I fold, yeah, I fold. Hold on. Duh. Hold on. Uh, don't act like saying it the second time is what counts. We know you're all in. Can it folds? Okay. Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was not an angle. Everybody does it occasionally. And we have another cooler on our hands. One of the coldest. Oh, that could be the biggest mistake of my life. <laughs> ah, it's gonna be fine. Probably, maybe. I don't think I've ever done anything like that. Not much hope for Rudsey. One out in the deck. And only one more chance to hit it. Oh, well. He's out. Oh, God. Pete's losing with him. What the deuce? His tournament's been ruined. Ruined. Out in 37th. Welcome back to 2023 and the PokerStars European Poker Tour presented by Monte Carlo Casino. Live coverage of day three of the main event continues here at the Monte Carlo Bay Hotel and Resort. We played one level so far, four more levels to play today. We lost 26 during the first session, 100 remain, and these are the chip leaders coming into the second level of the day. Arunas Samoviticus is the biggest stack with 940k. Arta Martirosian sits in second. Mike Watson, who's at our feature table, is third in chips with 913k. That's right, we're keeping the same feature table for the second session of play. Headlined by Sir Watts, former EPT champion Mark Telcher, and chess grandmaster Magnus Carlsen, who's playing around 26 big blinds right now. There's a few players. In fact, five of the eight players on the main stage are pretty shallow, with sub-30 big blind stacks. As we go to the 3K, 6K blind level with a 6K big blind ante. It's James Hartigan alongside Griffin Benger. Hello, everyone. And Griffin, always 
dangerous when you have a player at your table like Mike Watson, and especially when he's got a lot of chips. I like that you said Griffin, always dangerous. I was like, oh, what are you going with here? I am kind of dangerous, aren't I? No, Mike Watson, one of the most accomplished players on the tour, EPT winner, uh, and they're in for it here. Yeah, Mike Watson won the PCA in 2016, back when it was part of the European Poker Tour. Mark Telcher won EPT London in 2005, so two former champs on the main stage, plus Magnus Carlsen. Probably get a new feature table for the next level, but right now, level 17, underway, cards being dealt. Let's do this. Russian blood. Yeah. There is nothing to do at the table except for shortening. So with 100 players remaining, the payout is currently 11,350 euros. The next jump will be when we get to 95 players, when everyone will lock up at least 13K. First prize in this year's Monte Carlo main event is 890,000 euros. We will crown a champion on Saturday. We'll stream every day up to and including the final table. This being day three of a six day tournament. We think we're probably going to end today with around 40, 45 players. Tomorrow they're going to play down to 16. The day after that, play down to six. And then the final table stream will be on Saturday. Pretty fair fight here. Ace six for Lees and King 10 of Diamonds for Watson, our two chip leaders at the table. Lees with the Le Chief, which has missed the flop. Top pair for Watson. We're going to get a C bet from Leo Lees of 11,000. Yeah, you're going to want to continue here because your opponent doesn't always have a king. You want to fold out equity from hands like 9, 10, and the like. But Watson does have a 10 in his hand, but the other one's a king. Just a call from Sir Watts. Taking this hand to the turn is the four of spades. Neither player has a spades. The flush draw, not strictly relevant. Mike Watson now better than a nine to one favorite. I think this is wave the white flag time for Leo Lees. Nine on the river. Mike has a lock on it. Mike going for value on the river. 55,000 in the pot. And Mike is going to lead for 45,000. And Leo Lees will fold and pass the button to Magnus Carlsen. Uh, a reminder that there is a server restart on PokerStars today, which is probably why you're currently unable to access any games. It does also mean that we push back the start time of today's mini EPT tournaments. Just the first one. Instead of starting at 3.15 local, it starts at 4.15. That's the $3.30 deep stack. Second game is at 6.15. <coughs> Third game is at 8.15. Three low buy-in tournaments every single day that we're streaming, giving you the chance to win. Decent prizes, but also added prizes. Scoop tickets added to the prize pool of every single tournament. And when we get to the mini main event on Saturday, an EPT Barcelona package added to the prize pool, which will go to the winner. Lease opening the action again, this time from the cutoff. <coughs> Makes it 12,000. Jack nine off for Magnus Carlsen. He folds. 
Eight, seven off. Mike Watson gives up the small blind. Mark Telcher in the big blind. Five, four off suit. Let's it go. Asking after Tonka, Parker Talbot won a huge hand during the last session and is among the big stacks right now. We'll check in on Tonka later on today. Ramon Kalilis also still going strong. We saw Spraggy bust yesterday. Inside the money, though. In fact, I think Spraggy locked up a min plus cash. I saw him driving off the lot with one of those Ferraris on my way in today. Unfamiliar with Ipti Monte Carlo. They got those incredible supercars outside with the Poker Stars patch. And if you min cash, you get to drive off. <laughs> no, I'm sure Spraggy uh, worked his magic. Taking advantage of his free ride around the block. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. On the one hand, I kind of get the appeal. On the other hand, they do nothing for me. Yeah. Maybe you and I should go. I mean, I don't even drive, so maybe you and I oh should God, go. Oh, God, no. <laughs> the first car Griffin's ever driven is a supercar. I mean, they probably won't even card me, right? They'll just assume I have a license. I'm pretty sure there must be some disclaimer you have to sign <laughs> as it goes careering into the central reservation of a car park. Two diamonds on board. <laughs> Tershi with the advantage with ace high. So we do have a question here on Twitch from Lights Out Loser. Why don't players check their cards until it's on them? Well, I think it's just to be present and sort of watch other people as they're getting dealt their cards. Maybe look for little reactions and tells, but it does feel a bit outdated these days. I feel like no one really has looking at cards tells. Watson continuing here for 7,000. Turn, she's called. And we're going to the turn. Which is the seven of clubs. And now Mike Watson has the advantage. Yeah, good check back from Sir Watts on the flop. Recognizing that this combo isn't going to be doing very well here against the big blind call range, especially when you don't even have a diamond. It makes it more likely that your opponent could have a couple of them in his hand. But Turchi's going to check again. No real reason to start turning ace four into a bluff. Either your ace high is good or your opponent has better and won't fold. And it's no longer ace high because Barry Greenstein has made an appearance and Turchi now has top pair. Action goes check, check. He's going to win this pot of 47K. Yeah, and if you're wondering why didn't Turchi bet for value with the ace, well, in that situation, you know, you're so under rep with the ace, and you want your opponent to rep it, so. Let's head to one of the outer tables, Griffin. Vanessa Cade has three bet to 24K, so it's Kelvin Kerber who opened here. Vanessa three bets, Kelvin shoves, and Vanessa calls all in. She's the at-risk player here, but she's got kings against Kerber's ace nine. Triangle definitely on Vanessa. Let's see how much it means to her. Don't you do it. Jack, eight, five on the flop. King on the turn. And Vanessa Cade is going to double up through Kelvin Kerber. And that means she.
she's going to have around a quarter of a million chips now. Still below average, the average stack being 336,000 with 99 players remaining. Oh, smile for the camera. I at the feature table. Blind v blind, Tershi in the small. Droken facing the raise with 6 5 off. I hate having to do this, PSA guys, but I'm going to. You've been warned before, and I'll warn you again. Zero tolerance of anything from casual sexism to outright misogyny. Not a case of getting comedy timeouts. I will start banning people if you don't behave. 2023, for heaven's sake. Down to 98 now. Double digits. <coughs> Magnus Carlson opening this part. You know, I got to say, uh, chess might have a bit of a nerdy reputation, but the fact that you get to be a grandmaster is so cool. So we've only seen one of Carlson's cards, the King of Diamonds. He's raised to 12,000, and it's just the blinds left to act. Vladimir Drokin with ace-queen in the small. I think we'll be hearing from him. Definitely not joking around with this hand. I bet you already made that joke, didn't he? Maybe he didn't stoop to that level. 20 big blinds for Drokin. Should be simple all-in, and I imagine Carlson going to be folding... A lot of that King X range, unless it's cool. King King or Ace King. And that sounded like Call. It did sound like Call. So Droken all in with Ace Queen, called by Magnus Carlsen. And I guess we will now see a second card because they'll both be turned over. Carlsen with Kings. Told you. God, I'm good. Do you see that? Groinbud wanting to point out he is so much more than a grandmaster. He is the best player who's ever lived, not exaggerating. <coughs> oh, I believe it. It's still a cool name. It's still a cool thing to be. You wish you were a grandmaster. Ooh. Okay, a little bit of hope for Drokin, pairing his queen on the flop. Aces and queens are working for him. Let's do jack of clubs for a sweat, but then a brick and keep Carlson. In there. Oh, the six of clubs. Things just get <laughs> sweatier. It could be a case of too many outs for Drokin now. River card. Here's the six of diamonds. Kings hold. I call it, yeah? Vladimir Drokin yeah. is eliminated. That takes us down to 97 players. And Magnus Carlsen. Is now playing around 50 big blinds, Griffin. I think it'd be great. For you know, I thought Magnus game. Carlson was good with one king, but with two. The best thing the poker had was having poker. Uh, at least it wouldn't be great. Droking cashing out. 
and nearly 11 and a half K. Money jump when we get to 95 players. <laughs> Yeah, we can see that Carlson is now fourth in chips at this table. Mike Watson still the table chip leader and among the tournament chip leaders. Felix 87 asking about Darius Sammartino. He was at the feature table during the first level, but sadly he was eliminated. I love the fact that Magnus Carlsen's playing his first ever EPT, makes the money yesterday and is now in the top 100. Genius is good at games. Didn't see it coming. Gun raise from Leo Lees and Oleg Vasilchenko. Jack eight off in the big blind. You know, James, I'm often often impressed by the eclectic names we see on the EPT, but this is a strong name table. You know? I would not disagree with you. Oleg Vasilchenko, Maxim Vaskrasenki. Virgil Turchi, Magnus Carlsen. So we established earlier on that Oleg Vasilchenko plays as Fuku Ruku on Stars and won a scoop title back in 2020. So a tricky check back from Lease is actually going to get him into some trouble here now that Vasilchenko has turned that jack. A C-bet on the flop with that gut shot would have taken it down. I understand Lise wants to mix in some checks. Doesn't, don't want to get check raised on something aboard like this, but now you're sitting here with that double gutter. You're hoping to hit. Any six or ten and Lise is going to have a very disguised straight. Instead, it's a jack on the river, and Vasilchenko improves to trips. Sorry. Zolchenko will add 30k to his stack. Ten minutes into this level. Down to 97 players already. 1,098, of course, is the total number of entries we saw in this year's Monte Carlo main event, tying the record from 2016. As conspiracy theories go, this one is, well, it's like most conspiracy theories, to be honest with you. Anton saying, are the rumors true that you turned off PokerStar servers so more people would watch the stream? I saw them do it. 
Yes, because of course the company makes so much money from people watching the stream rather than paying to play on the site. It is a server restart. It needs to happen from time to time. Yes, I can confirm that the white chips you see are not gaming chips. They have no cash value. They have no tournament value. The white chips are the time bank chips. Oh, it's all kicking off in the mystery bounty. Prize is being awarded, Griffin. So some interesting stuff happening here. In the mystery bounty? Galway. No, go ahead. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I, I was, I, I, it makes you want to play. I'm listening to the prizes are on offer, and I'm like, well, why, 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 why am I not playing that right now? We're going to need you to focus, buddy. Sorry, okay. sorry. What's going on, Griffin? Tell me. So, yeah, this is an interesting hand because um, it started as a link, a, a limp. Link, sorry, Zelda's coming out in a week. Uh, <laughs> a limp from Bas Bas Krasinski on uh, on 20 big blinds on the button with the 9-5 suit and didn't feel comfortable opening and didn't want to fold it, so played this as a limp. The complete from Vasilchenko and the small blind, both pretty standard in a way, and then that ace six suited lease recognizing that you know what this is probably a limp fold from the button and the small blind shouldn't have much of a calling range i can just take this down preflop well the twist of course is vasilchenko had a pretty playable hand and is prepared to call that twenty-eight thousand. and now flop to gutter and this is going to be very interesting how this plays down the streets very interesting with that turn card lease's showdown value not very strong with the ace six based off what I assume he perceives Vasilchenko's range to be. So if this plays as a check-check, Vasilchenko is going to be able to turn that seven high into a bluff. Well, I mean, it's a bluff. And also a lot of ways to get there. That flush draw now. So yes, we did have Toby Stone in the background there talking about the prizes and the mystery bounty. And that's the 3K mystery bounty which started yesterday. I think Sam Grafton came back for day two among the chip leaders in that one. But we're focused on the 5K main event right now. With 96 players remaining, this hand has gone to the river and the board has bricked out for Oleg Vasilchenko. Yeah, and as a general rule, these really strong online players, if they find themselves with the bottom of their range in a spot where their opponent has shown some weakness, they're going to bluff almost always. So I expect a bet here. There it is. And you can see how quickly Elise fold, folds, and that's because he's really only beating one hand, which is the exact one Vasilchenko has. You know, if Vasilchenko had even 7-8 was a straight. So a nice hand there from Vasilchenko, but a very fortunate run out and a little un, un, unlucky for, for Elise. Hold on a second, Griffin. I'm going to check the app. I don't want any of our viewers to make their way to the app because they could see spoilers for the main event. So in the 3K mystery bounty, Sam Grafton is ninth in chips. Pretty sure he starts the day as the chip leader. 134 players remain in that one. I actually don't like finding out who won those things. You know why? I want to keep it a mystery. You're the best. Uh, you'll notice that we have a new player at the feature table. He's a player we saw in action yesterday. It is Lars Camphuse, who 
qualified for this event online, won his seat via a 530 euro satellite, had to take a rebuy, so he's in this for 1k. And he's going to play his first hand at the feature table, opening from the hijack with 5 4 of diamonds. Pretty loose here from from campus, but um, yeah, you want to mix in some hands like this into your middle position opening range. I think it's a bit ambitious. Off 25 big blinds, a lot of strong players to your left, including Veselchenko on the button, who will probably play a bit of a mixed strategy here. Some calls and then some three bets with the intention to call off. And it sounds like a different bet now uh, has been announced by the dealer, so it looks like it is going to be that three bet. But Lease is not flinching. So it's a re-raise to 31,000. Lease has folded the small. Carlson's folded the big. Action back on Campus. And he has folded. So a bit of good news from the outer tables. Uh, yesterday, you might remember, we had an online qualifier on the main stage called David Lee Zhang. This is the guy who was inspired to start playing poker after watching EPT Paris. He played a bit with friends back in high school, but hadn't played the game since then. Watched EPT Paris, started playing online, and was determined to qualify for a live event. Well, that determination paid off. Entered a satellite for EPT Monte Carlo, <coughs> won his package, came here, has made the money, and is still going here on day three with a stack of around 200K. His first ever live event, Griffin, having only started playing the game seriously a couple of months ago. Awesome. That's right, Tablar. David is our qualifier. <laughs> Pretty good uh, fire sound effect. You used to do like radio before and stuff, right? I did. Did you ever do any of those like uh, intro stuff where it's just like D -d -d DJ Hardigan? No. All the way from. <laughs> no. I did recently share with a few people. I discovered on a CD the intro to my radio show on 96.4 The Eagle. Hmm which talks yeah. about an hour of cool like a... classics and hot hits. <laughs> nice. I'll play it to you. I'll play it to you when we're, when we're not on air, because sadly I think it probably contains copyrighted material that I mm. can't run on the stream. But you will laugh. <laughs> Shout out to x -Spec. DJ Kalev. <laughs> that was a good bet. That was strong. I'd had like DJ Kalev. Was that just one t final table he was on? He also made a deep run in okay, another okay, event, okay. right? Yeah, it so it, mu it must then, have been more than one. And then the Bahamas, he reappeared. <laughs> I was so grateful to see him again, so that joke could keep going. Uh, <laughs> As Tershi opens under the gun, and it's going to be raise and take it unless Mark Telcher finds a hand in the big blinds. Jack six off. So Pengu is happy that I referenced the Eagle. My local radio station, PG and Breakfast Bev. So here's a hashtag fun fact. Peter Gordon gave me my first ever job in radio in 1997 when he hired me to work as a journalist on County Sound and the Eagle. At that point, Peter was already doing the breakfast show and was the head of news. <coughs> 95 players remaining. Jacks for Oleg Vasilchenko. And 
That's a call from Mike Watson on the button. We've only seen one of his cards, but it's one of the remaining jacks in the deck. It helps you with deuces in the small blind. By the way, now that we have fewer than 95 players, Griffin, we have had another pay jump. Everyone's now locked up more than 13K. Yeah, I think on sub 20 big blinds, this is going to be a fold, but you can imagine why, where the pause comes from. Two big stacks in late-ish position. Could just be having your, your standard kind of raise flat and then fold to a shove. So might seem like an easy fold, but it's still a bit of good discipline from Telsher, who's been card dead so far this level. Not to try to squeeze and, and get away with one. Turchi, though, playing 35 big blinds, is going to shove. And Vasilchenko is going to like but not love this spot. It is a lot of chips. So when you break down the range for Vasilchenko, or pardon me, for Turchi, doesn't include a ton of worse pairs. You would think, you know, any pair up to probably tens would just flat. Maybe tens shove, maybe nines go all in on this squeeze. So you're going to be up against all those ace queen, ace king combos. Um, and then a couple of worse pairs. So Vasilchenko. Probably very aware he's going to be flipping a ton here, and he indeed is. And let's see how it goes. Do you know that Sir Watts folding <coughs> one of those blackjacks? Yeah. So actually the at-risk player does not connect with the flop. 23% chance of survival, looking for an ace or a queen. All I'm wondering is if Mike Watson had jack 10 of clubs. Five of hearts on the turn, same outs for Tershi. Five cards he can hit to survive. Reva is a king. Okay. And Tershi is KO, taking us down to 91 players. And that's going to yeah, yeah, vault yeah. Oleg Valsolchenko yeah, no to the that's slight the new chip leader yeah, ahead of Mike forward. Watson at nearly 900,000 chips. 13,000 at 50 euros <laughs> for Virgil Tershi. Yeah. And yes, it's pretty much all, tied at the top at this particular table, Vasilchenko and Watson. As you referenced, Griffin, uh, Vasilchenko with the out. slight uh, advantage. Extra out. Oh, no, and Maxim Vazkrasensky oh, and Mark Telcher tied at the bottom with 18 big blinds each. <coughs> a couple questions about, you know, whether that was a good shot with Ace Queen. I, yeah. I think it's pretty standard, you know. Uh, Vasilchenko is going to be raising pretty medium wide from that middle position. I think that Watson's going to be flatting pretty wide. So, you know, you, you really have two options just to overcall with the ace queen and play post flop out of position against two extremely talented players or shove and most often get the folds and pick up those blinds. And then sometimes you get cooler. Sometimes you lose a big flip, but it's, you know, it's, it's kind of the, um, it's the safest way to make chips and most of the time you just are going to. So I don't mind the shove, it's just a bad result. The raise from Leo Lees has been flattered by Mike Watson with ace four in the cutoff. Mark Telcher, nine eight on the button. folds yeah not a lot of wiggle room with 20 big blinds unfortunate you'd love to see a flop with a hand like that Miles Camp Hughes with king queen of clubs so this is actually a great 
I love that this hand, James, is happening right after the other one because this is a bit similar to the ace-queen situation, right? If you think that these two players are playing these kind of range of hands, you can just shove for the 22 big blinds and take it down. However, Kemp Hughes is just going to call, which I think is, is fine as well. You're going to keep in worse kings and queens, and you'd, you'd hate to bust here. But it's a bit of a sim similar principle. Jack 6-3 on the flop. Ace high, still the best hand. Everyone checks the flop. Deuce on the turn. Gibbs might Watson a wheel draw. Still has the best hand with ace high. making a bet of 30,000 on the turn, which is going to win him the pot. So Mike Watson is officially an EPT champion, won the PCA main event in 2016. Let's take a look at some of the other champs still alive with 89 players remaining. Arna Matern took down EPT Prague in 2007. That was the first year Prague joined the European Poker Tour. Davidi Katai won EPT Berlin in 2012. We referenced yesterday his heads-up battle against Andrew Chen. Yes! Alex Shilko, we saw win the PSPC at the start of this year, following in the footsteps of the inaugural PSPC winner, Ramon Kalilas, the guy who won the title in 2019. Of course, Ramon representing Team Pro. As is Tonka. Still playing a big stack. And a player who we saw at the feature table yesterday, Masato Yokosawa, the Japanese vlogger, still enjoying his time at the tables. He's delightful, isn't he? He just loves the attention. And we love him for it. Result full bird says playing to the final table today. No chance. We are playing five levels. This is the second of five. Should end the day with around 40 to 40 to 45 players. Maybe if slightly fewer than that. Tomorrow we play to 16. Then on Friday we play down to six. And that's the day when we play down to the final table. And mm -hmm. then we conclude this thing on Saturday as we see Basil Chenko open with the snowman's. Nom nom. And Mark Telcher pick up ace nine on the button. Yeah, a couple of questions on Twitch about some of the things we saw. Headphones, phones, massages. Yeah, people are allowed to use their phones on the outer tables. Yes. Pretty tough to uh, <laughs> control that if we had a rule like that. But on the feature table, uh, no bueno. Don't allow the, the phones. Um, I've also been asked if I like to have headphones in. I actually, you know, if I'm if I'm on the grind and it's a bit, you know not a very talkative table, I'll throw in some headphones from here and there. But when the when a hand starts, I can't uh, I can't focus with anything going on in my ear, so I turn everything off. It's kind of a whole process, so I try not to have the headphones in. Adam plays 86, watching on Twitch. Says, do you remember when 1240 fell short except Bori? I do. Do you remember that super high rollers need 100k to play? Kachilov would go catch it all in the first at PCA. Mm -hmm. 
any opportunity to... That's another thing. I'll just prefer to keep that a mystery. <laughs> the EPT wrap? The, oh, the, it's from the EPT wrap. Okay. I should have recognized that, actually. That's what I listen to in the shower every morning. Where is Sam Grafton? I think he's crushing the mystery bounty. Yes. Not even headphones allowed on TV table? Ask Giant Dad. Of course not. Of course not. Lease has opened under the gun with Ace-9 of hearts. Basilchenko, 9-7 of spades in the big blind. Seven, five, five on the flop. Domination, rotation in Vasilchenko's favor. Wolfman says at least the final table is on Saturday. Better than all the news coverage on TV in the UK. Yeah, I've got to be honest with you. I'm quite happy that this event has coincided with me not having to be in the UK this coming weekend. What's happening this weekend in the UK? I don't want to get political, Griffin. No, come on, let's get political. Who'd you vote for? What's happening? Is it a vote? Are we voting? It's something related to an institution that I don't believe in. Could I vote? I think I could vote. I'm British. Not about an election, and that's the problem with it. It's about hereditary rule. So, Vasilchenko with the advantage going to the term, which is the king of diamonds. King on the turn. Well done, Griffin. You got there eventually. Vasilchenko just crushing this level. He's closing in on the one million mark. So a reminder that the mini EPT, the first event today, will start slightly later than normal because of the server maintenance that we have on PokerStars. So it's actually going to start at 4.15 rather than 3.15, but most days, these are the start times of the three low buy-in tournaments that you get to play with scoop tickets added to the prize pool of every single one. Mini EPT Monte Carlo has its own tab in the lobby. As soon as PokerStars is back up and running, you can fire up the client and you'll see it. James, you're never going to believe this. <laughs> what are you going to tell me? Before I jumped on today, I saw the trailer for a movie called Gran Turismo, based off the video game, right. PlayStation game. Yep. And it looked great. Okay. And it's and it's directed by Neil Bloomkamp, and David Harbour's in it. Orlando Bloom is in it. Looked good. It's very surprising to me. I was surprised they even clicked it. And then it looked good. Apparently it's based on a true story. Oh, like <laughs> a, they had a, like a competition for kids who played the game to be real racers, and they actually race against real racers. Huh. Uh, we've got a flush draw here for Campus. and not falling into the trap here. This is a bit of a loose open, of course, from Watson. But with all these chips, I think it's, you're going to mix in some King-10 opens in early position a lot. And on the short stack, I think it's a very disciplined check fold from Mike Watson. Just saying, you know what? 
I'm not, uh, whatever this is, whether it's a trap or whether it's a bluff, I'm not doing well here. New player coming in. Antonio Calabro taking a seat at the feature table. This is the guy who came 13th in the FPS High Roller event here in Monte Carlo. Cashed out for 24,100 euros in that one. He is bringing a stack of 147k <coughs> to the table. It's around 25 big blinds. Average stack right now with 88 players remaining is around 380,000. I think that uh, our viewer base is too used to podcast ads inserted in into the things because everyone thinks that was a real ad. Should I have gotten paid for that? God damn it. Uh, you always ask before. <laughs> so you got to do. That's uh, no, that was actually a heartfelt, genuine <laughs> yeah, recommendation. Yeah, I was really excited from about, about that trailer. I don't know. It just looked, uh, you know, looked good. All I was going to say, Griff. <laughs> All I was going to say yeah. is, you know, manage your expectations. Yeah, no, no, don't no worry. There are so of many course. trailers that overpromise of course. and the movie And I do kind of feel like I've seen the whole movie now. i got to warn you. Yeah. I feel like I watched everything. And like I just, wa I just you know, watched I, a three-minute movie. I know there's a few exceptions, but generally speaking, as a rule of thumb, movies adapted from video games suck. Yeah, I'm I getting better, but yeah. Anyways, if uh, you'd like to, if you're watching the stream and you wanna, just on in the, in the corner, you know, don't don't stop watching the stream. If you wanna watch the trailer, let me know what you guys think. <laughs> There's a break in 43 minutes. Save it. <laughs> Five's all in here. Yeah, and this is uh, this is close for lease. You know, ace. Jack is a snap call for 15, 15 big blinds kind of thing here a lot of the time. Ace-10 right on the line. Ace-9 is like that one that you think is kind of breaking even with the range. And then you have to worry about the big blind. So that's why we see the fold. You know, had it been 60 to 75,000, I think that, that plays as a call for lease. Okay. I'm not going to get into it, but I'm just going to say two things. Number one, I said there are some exceptions. Secondly, The Last of Us is not a movie, it's a TV show. Moving on. I don't know, you could kind of say that it's like an eight-hour movie, you know? Or you could say it's a TV series. I mean, there will be a second <coughs> season, so yes, it is a TV show. Yeah, I've heard pretty good things about the movie, Mario movie. I, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to watching it. Well, it can't be any worse than the Bob Hoskins, John Leguizamo movie. Have you seen that famous uh, quote from, from him about that? Yeah. It's so funny. I was in King Lear. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a video game movie? Yeah, listen, the first Mortal Kombat, I don't care what anyone says, that's a, it's a good movie. I caution you when to revisit it because it hasn't always <laughs> aged super well. Now that, now that movies like John Wick exist, the, the action in Mortal Kombat doesn't really, uh, you know, I mean, when he <laughs> when he's fighting, what is it, Goron or whatever his name is, <laughs> it's just really cheesy, but... Carlson completes in the small with 6-4 off. Ooh, I like this out-of-touch video game comment from Crusoe on YouTube. Last of Us is a computer game. <laughs> There's just so many things about that I could pick apart. First of all, it was a PS3 game that came out in 2013, then remastered on PS4, then they made a sequel for PS4, which was remastered on PS5, then it came out on PC. And now it's an HBO TV show, which was the most, the biggest hit of the year. You can watch it on Max, as it's now called. Yes. So heading out into the field for just a moment. Oh, 
see a few eliminations, including Francisco Caballo. How come people never look happy when they busted? Plus a hand in progress between Harry Lodge and Davidi Katai. Vanessa Cade also involved in the hand. Katai's moved all in for 128K. Harry Lodge reshoves. Vanessa Cade folds, so it's showdown. Katai at risk with sevens and racing against Harry Lodge's ace king. You think you could go all in on Harry Lodge's small blind? Ace high flop. Is it always coming? No. Davidi Katai eliminated. Cashing out for just over 13k. And Harry Lodge now playing a stack of nearly 800,000. <laughs> Loads of chips. <laughs> and there's another player we saw in action yesterday, Romain Lewis, who's also just been eliminated and getting the same payout, 13 grand, with 84 players now remaining as we head back to the main stage. Oh boy. Yep, Camp Hughes is open with tens, and Sir Watts has picked up kings in the small blind. That's a re-raise. Yeah, and this is very big trouble for Camp Hughes. We saw earlier Camp Hughes open the 5-4 suited in a kind of similar position. And the reason I'm bringing that up is if you're going to be opening hands as wide as that, which are considered, you know, GTO in certain spots, you really need to protect those opens by never folding hands as strong as this for 23 big blinds, right? So, you know, when you find yourself near the top of your range, especially against the chip leader, you kind of just have to hope that Watson is bluffing or that you're flipping. I would be very shocked to see any other result except all in. But you know what? Camp Hughes actually just going to play it as a call, recognizing the strength of Watson's three bet, not wanting to go all in, maybe keep those bluffs in there, and find a way not to bust in this hand. So this is this is this is nice work. And look, already finding a reason not to put more chips in, and to save those 19 big blinds. Okay, I just got to say, because I've seen too many comments like it, stop talking, laughing about how Magnus keeps folding. Like, he hasn't had one good, good hand this entire level. It's so annoying. There's these people dunking on Magnus. Oh, my God, Magnus is so tight. He should have stuck the chess. Not being funny, that's what he should be doing. He's playing the hand correctly by Wait, folding Wait, he should it. stick to chess? <sighs> See, now you're pissing off James. You don't want to piss off DJ Hart again. Coming to you live, the Eagle. Rocket Gangster asks, why nice work? 1010 had very good raw equity, but it's very difficult to maneuver post-flop because it's fun to be results-oriented when you have such a small sample size. And in this particular spot, for whatever reason, Camp Hughes decided to just call, and it's going to probably keep him in the tournament. Okay? Fold to the seabat. Look at that. Look at that fold. From Mike Watson. And he's hovering around the... 960k mark has 160 big blinds 83 players now remaining some other recent eliminations to tell you about Sylvain Loosely Kali Sadu uh, Rehawk Karapanov the guy who burst the bubble yesterday cracking aces and Dinesh Alt, they're all out Yeah, I have not yet taken a decision. 
slash made a ruling on whether I will allow Chat Pro Saturday to go ahead. Generally speaking, I'm not a fan of having that on a day when the final table falls on a Saturday. Mm. I kind of feel the final table of an EPT main event is too important to let the lunatics run the asylum. Raise from Vaskrisnetsky with Ace Queen. Lease calls with King Jack suited. The Telly Savalas. Dyslexic Potato says you cancelled the last one as well. Not true. We had chat pro staff stay in Dublin during the Irish Open. I distinctly remember it happening. Is a dyslexic potato a tomato? Potentially. Or is it just no, no. <laughs> The joke is, is a dyslexic okay, potato Griffin, a potato? Griffin. That's I, what I, it is. I, I, not being funny, <laughs> I, I don't want to do Joe's job for him. <laughs> but if he were here right now, he'd be telling you that you workshop <laughs> it in your head and then you say okay, it out loud. Yeah, yeah. Calabro deciding these guys are full of it. They're playing too many hands. I don't buy it. It's a loose shove. I think you can play this as a call more comfortably. It's high variance. But look, it's technically right this time. And you can't call the King Jack suited. You can see how something as strong as even Ace Queen has to be folded in this spot. Jumps with the sailboats, gets it through. Half an hour left on the level. Half an hour till the second break of the day and the next escalation of the blinds. Some people aghast to see ace queen being folded but you have to remember how strong Calabro's range should be there he shouldn't just be shoving in ace jack ace 10 with an under the gun plus one open and an early position flat yeah so ace queen is actually not doing particularly well against that range yeah Calabro happened to have a hand we didn't expect certainly one that um you know uh, that Vasilchenko expected, but it was still technically a hand that was ahead, right? So you don't need to just put in 25 big blinds because you're going to be flipping most of the time. I think it's a fine fold with the ace queen. I high card poker says Calab Calabro is shoving with king queen there. I don't agree. Under the gun plus one open, under the gun plus two called and you're just shoving 25 big blinds with king queen off of the big i don't think so listen if this was in later position if this was a cutoff open versus button flat or even a hijack cutoff we, we would be calling a lot more ace queens but <coughs> position is very important um you know the two the razor and the caller had a strong range there and calabro was a bit reckless with those fours but uh just good timing is an important thing to have in poker and he had it there James Landon watching on YouTube says, I've been studying recently. I've been studying regularly for around a month and understand next to none of this. And yet there's a weird number of experts in chat. I would put the word experts in inverted commas if I were you. I'm seeing a couple of comments of people saying that it was a 15 big blind shove with fours, but it was 141,000, right? At 6K. That's 24 big blinds. 
15 big blinds would be drastically different. Ace Queen would certainly have called most of the time. Calabro with Jack six suited. Really not believing these dudes. Now up to almost 30 big blinds, but is of course gonna fold. We do see a defend from Vas Kroneski. And we go to the flop. Nine, deuce, deuce. And this is not good news for Maxim, who's got 13 bigs behind and probably thinks that top pair is good here. Checks it to Sir Watts. bet of 7k from Mike. And the check raise, and I imagine this will be a pretty committing check raise, 24,000 from Vaskraneski. This is fully with the intention of playing for stacks here. When you're flatting off this, you know, short stack with king nine, you're just flop, trying to flop some equity and then getting the money in. And this will be oh. snap called from Vas Krasensky here. And hope he's somehow ahead with the king nine, but that's not the case. Just a real cooler spot here. And drawing to three outs needs a king or the case nine. Turn card. Here's a jack. Same outs needed for Maxim Vaskraneski. Doesn't hit. He is eliminated. And that's going to take us down to 80 players. 10 tables of eight remaining in the EPT Monte Carlo main event. And an interesting occurrence by virtue of winning that pot, Griffin, Mike Watson has just moved up over the 1 million mark. We think, not 100% sure, but we think that Watson is the first player to achieve that feat, to have a seven-figure stack. Millie Club. player soon down to 80 they'll break a table and all the tables will be even again deuces for some watts nines for Mark Telcher who's not played a hand at all level. I mean, he's short, 16 big blinds. This is an opportunity for him. Finally. Moves all in, and this should get 
decent level of respect. Interestingly, the ace jack for Antonio Calabro. Really on the line here. Probably the best hand you can consider folding and does do that. You know, you got to think about how your range does against Telcher's shove range and then also worry about Mike Watson and the players behind. A lot of variables, a lot of bullets to dodge. Corey Jones asking after Tonka and Spraggy. Spraggy was eliminated yesterday just after we made the money. Tonka is still going strong. Might well check on him. And the next level certainly will focus on him at some point today. Also going to follow Ramon. Making a deep run in Monte Carlo for the second year in a row. I do like this observation on Twitch from Panty. Yep. Carlson's probably the best suited of all the players on the table to be card dead. His entire career has been to sit still looking at a board for five hours. Doing nothing. Yes, Magnus Carlsen, no short on patience, surely. Drizzle asking if the feature table will change after the break. I think there's a very good chance that happens, and that break will be occurring in just over 20 minutes' time. Just to uh, go behind the scenes on the live stream production, Nick Walsh just walked into the room, and Griffin, you didn't look overly happy with his attire. No, I was excited. You missed it. I was, like, really pumped. Oh. Yeah, yeah. He's wearing a really nice Ryan Braun Milwaukee Brewers jersey, like, deep cut. I mean, not deep, deep cut, but, like, pretty modern day, really, really good baseball player, like, near Hall of Famer. I just, it's the last thing I expected. Nick Walsh, you know, guy living in the UK, never talked to me about baseball to wear a Ryan Braun jersey. It's just, it's just great. He may live in the UK, but he is an American person. Is he though? Yes, Does I've he heard him American? speak. He's 100% an American. Yeah. Is he from Milwaukee? I don't actually know what part of the States he's from. Oh, we've never cared to ask. I know that he grew up in Surrey <laughs> listening to 96.4 uh, The Eagle. That is a hashtag fun fact. We've never, we've never cared to ask. And he's just so, and he's just, he's been waiting all these years for us to ask. And now he starts wearing all these like jerseys and hinting at like locations. So we'll know where he's from. Yes, Bat Massiel says, Griff, you got suspended for PEDs. He's not going to the hall. I know. I said near because he probably would have if he didn't do steroids. Anyways, moving back to the poker. That's an unfortunate conversation topic. We should never said anything. <laughs> you want to know an, uh, one, one more detail about Ryan, Ryan Bryan that's great? Oh, He's one oh, of... Oh. Whoa, that's exciting. That stopped everything. Oh, I've been advised that that, that is nothing to do with this tournament. That is someone pulling the 100k For bounty. Sure. That is Aurelian Rousson pulling the 100k envelope wow, in the Mystery Bounty Tournament. That was a big one. That's nice. <coughs> uh, Tom, our supermodel on Twitch, thinks that Nick's from Wisconsin. Is Milwaukee in Wisconsin? I don't know. I always thought Milwaukee was in brewery. No. I mean, I'm guessing Wisconsin is, yeah. What state? Wisconsin. There you go. Okay, story <laughs> checks out. Yeah. Hello. Welcome to the table. 
So we have had the empty seat filled. The new player at the feature table is Jean-Vincent Lehout from France. A player with just 2.5k in live tournament earnings. So he's guaranteed to eclipse that with a min cash, or at least the current min cash, which is 13k. So someone on Twitch said, I thought that was a tool company. And when you did look up Milwaukee, or Wisconsin, or whatever you looked up, that was the first thing that came up. It was about a tool. The Milwaukee Tool Company comes up on Google before the, before the actual <laughs> place. That's funny. That's some serious SEO they've got going on there. It is. And it's good to know now that, um, that Nick is in Milwaukee Tool. Oh, question for you, James. Stars is back up. Does that mean the mini EPT times are changing? Nope. It was always meant to be back up by 4 o'clock local time, and that means the first game will still go ahead at 4.15, which is in what? Just over half an hour from now? 35 minutes from now? It was scheduled initially, and every other day it's been at 3.15, and of course we couldn't guarantee that we could get the client running by 3.15, so that's why the tournament has been moved to 4.15. So 4.15, 6.15, 8.15, the start times today. Scoop tickets in the prize pool of all three tournaments. you got a 3.30, a 5.50, a 2.20. Have fun. Enjoy. So here's a question. Does, Mar does Carlson only play pocket kings and always make sure that we first see just one? Ooh, good question. This is the second time we've seen him play, and the first card is the king of diamonds, the exact same thing. But this time it's just going to be a call. So less likely he has kings. Ace, seven, deuce with two hearts. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting word from the, from the team here that his second card is a bishop. Nice try, Graham. <laughs> Chess humor. Well, whatever it was, not good enough to call this bet from the hood. And so we move on to the next hand. Stewie's not happy. He says they took out the mini EPT header on the app. Let me check my lobby. Well, certainly on the desktop client, it's still there. And if I go into that lobby, yep. I can see we've got the first game starting in 35 minutes. $3.30. Eight max deep stack. You can register now. They've all been smashing the guarantees, which is really nice to see. But of course, it's not just about the prize money. It's about the added values, the added prizes, the tickets we add to the prize pool. Scoop tickets in every single tournament. Oh, Strag's fixed it. Stewie, if you go back to the mobile app, you should be able to see it. I can't believe we missed a num num spot. Should we do it anyway? I did see pocket eights there, which are the snowman's. Num num. <coughs> so I have been advised that in 15 minutes time when we hit the break, we will change feature table and the new feature table will be headlined by a certain Canadian team oh. pro. Oh, no. Where did you think I was going? I thought you were going to let me play. I don't know. You guys can you guys make the rules. Like No, we don't. Substitutions? How does this work? Go ahead. Sorry. Your beard isn't big enough or ginger enough. 
to take the place oh, of Tom. I know Tom. this, I know this. Oh, let me guess it. This might be my favorite. This might be my favorite comment um, from Scafatar. Um, and of course, talking about what we all see, all, all the poker people see is just, you know, a man who's a bit card debt, not getting any spots. Scafatar says, y'all mid, Carlson probably has a huge strat brewing in his head. <laughs> yeah, the strat is to fold crap hands. Well, let's check in on the action at one of the outer tables. I can tell you that we have lost one of our former champions. Arno Matern was eliminated, taking us down to 79 players. But at that table, Vanessa Cade has just moved all in. Decision on Harry Lodge. He folds. It's folded around to Kelvin Kerber, and Kerber calls. And we have a classic race, ace-king against deuces. Vanessa with the overcards. Gonna need a queen, ace or a king on the river. It is a queen, Vanessa Cade, Rivers Broadway, and doubles up again through Kelvin Kerber. That three you get out of here, that was a big pot. Yeah. <laughs> They're having fun. They're having fun. I thought to us, like, the showdown, deuces, ace king. Yeah, honestly, I, so thought, I thought it was dead right as soon as you turned him over. I thought it was like already walking through the door in my head. I mean, the combination of Vanessa Cade, Kelvin Kerber, Daniel Devores, Harry Lodge, that's a solid table. I think we might need to check in on that one later on today. Once we've had our fun with Tonka. Tonka, Tonka. Tonka truck. I want to change the cards? I wasn't really. Okay, I Tom, one between us, I you have my so. support, you have my trust. You know what to do. Anyone out of line? Ban them. Don't mute them, ban them. There we go. I, I've got this one for you. This guy. Oh, someone got beating me to it. Damn it! I wanted to ban him! I would say X Specs comment is like the line we, we can keep. A girl, oh my God, you, you, you can say that. But anything anything lower than it's, that. Honestly, guys, it's anything so Anything lower than that. You can observe they, anything lower than that will take you out. We'll take you out one at a time. You're dealing with the eagle. Ace Jack suited for La Hut. Or as it's known in America, the hut. But of course, we are in France, kind uh, of. By the way, B. Zephyr, you're 100% correct. People wonder why they have women's only events. We have to acknowledge, we have to concede that this game does still have a problem. There is so much casual misogyny and toxic masculinity in this game. And as I've said before, and I will keep saying it, we have a collective responsibility to tackle it. And it starts with stopping people making childish comments on live poker streams. Every little helps. You're not wrong, Leo. Society has a problem, but it's amplified in this particular game. And it's one of the things I like the least about poker. And Maybe I am fighting a losing battle, or maybe I'm in the minority fighting it, but I'm going to do everything I bloody can. Oh, I should have said she needs to be Vanessa Fade on the flop. She needed... Griffin, uh. Griffin, timing is everything. <laughs> if you miss the opportunity, <laughs> don't make the joke. Of course, Joe comes in. Uh, Joe, well, Joe, Joe just appeared out of nowhere, just came flying out of the wall. <laughs> Calibro takes it down with the worst hand. Just the 
break, we will be back to table seven downstairs. So we don't stop the table. We don't have anything to do, we will move the chips. So after the break, you can come back to table seven. But we were never there, how can we come back? <laughs> Initially, it was your table, your initial table, that's why. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Good point. Got him. And sufficiently boring, moving off this table. <laughs> I don't blame me either for switching tables. Oh Jesus Christ! This guy needs to go. <laughs> I knew you were gonna see that one, Delmar. That's just that's a layup, buddy. <laughs> oh, that's a layup. Imagine him being concerned with toxic. Ugh. It's funny, 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 funny. Lahat with the ace 10 under the gun. Vasilchenko under the gun one with the ace jack. Going to play it as a three bet. His way of saying, you know what? I think I probably have the best hand. I would rather play this aggressively to get some fold pre folds pre flop to dissuade re raises from coming behind. And I think it's going to work. Labro really balancing in his timing on all these hands. It's getting to that. Once you get into single digits, it gets a little obnoxious, I gotta say. You're all entitled to your 30 seconds, but you got the four deuce. I don't like it. Comment of the day from Space Velociraptor. The people getting banned right now have like a 50-50 chance of being people who pay for Twitter Blue. <laughs> I'm gonna say 90-10. Camera loves Vasilchenko. Great level. Oh, Carlson folded that. Griffin, mm. Michael Watson has raised with the snowmans. Nom nom. Turn down for Watts. I'm not sure what Camp Hughes is thinking about with nine deuce off. Queen six. Yuck. Find me a person who likes queen six off and I'll find you a liar. Or someone will pay for Twitter Blue. Five minutes left on the clock. 78 players remaining in the EPC Monte Carlo main event. Still three <coughs> levels to play today after this.
Urjay asks, if Magnus wins, does this mean poker is easier than chess? Yes, thank you for your question. I will accept those terms if Magnus wins this event. Because that would be pretty amazing if Magnus Carlson won the EVT. Monte Carlo. Got a long way to go, but, you know, I mean, what? We started this level with almost 100 people, now it's 77. So again, I know we often like to check in with the widget. Talked about the end of day prediction. Mm. What did the widget say about where we should be right now? So we're coming to the end of level 17. Oh good, a compulsory Microsoft update on my computer. <laughs> End of level 17. Oh wow, we are ahead of pace. Should wow. be around 82 players right now and actually we're at 78. So maybe we could end the day shy of 40 if they keep going. I do think it will slow down at some point. here from Mark Telcher. You know he has the king of clubs. That's Olchenko, king five in the big. And My money's fault. on Telcher. So just checking on the lineup at our next feature table, we've talked about the fact that Tonka is headlining and he's going to have around 750k. He's a big stack right now. Hadi El Asmar, who finaled this event in 2015, he's at that table, as is Kirill Azulenka. He's the guy who was wearing the shirt yesterday with all the poker advice written on it. Oh, nice. That sounds fun. I may have read that advice, but I don't think you took it on board. I don't think you check raised the turn once. Mike Watson opening with the Ving Rames. The Ving Rames? The Kojak, but there are two Kojaks. Okay. There was Telly Savalas in the 1970s, the original Kojak. Okay. That's King Jack suited. They tried rebooting it with Ving Rhames in really? recent times. That's King Jack offsuit. When, like early, early aughts? I want to say 2000s. Early 10s? Yeah, 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 I think. Okay. Give me some Ving Rhames. He's really just the surprising emotional heart of the Mission Impossible movies. You know what I mean? I don't know if this is a good idea, Ethan. But that's basically what he says in every movie. Yeah, but like he kind of like he looks like he's tearing up a bit because it's like it's big stakes. He doesn't want his friend to die, but like he wouldn't ever really cry. Just I'm excited for Mission Impossible. <laughs> Top pair here for Leo Lease. Yeah, at least with a huge advantage. Mike Watson. Big boy set. That's 24,000 into 33,000. Yeah, and the design of this bet is to really pressurize you know certainly a hand like a nine is always going to happily continue but you know when you just have a three or a five you're probably going to be calling on the flop but the pot's going to start getting big and it's going to be tough to hold on even this nine's going to be tough 
to call three streets with the charge. Um, you know, Based exactly. on the range advantage Watson has being under the gun one. And then a king can just come on the turn. Wow. It's so Sir Watt's day. We did have domination like, rotation on the flop. We have uh, domination and restoration you, uh, on the you, turn. Uh, you, they will move on. As Mark Telcher noisily moves away from the table. Yeah, and this is a brilliant card for Watson to bet because it's balanced nicely yeah. by all the times that he would be bluffing here. Let's go. You know, happens to have King Jack here, but that means he's going to have hands like Queen Jack, Queen 10, that will be betting big on the flop and continuing with a big bet on the turn. So very credible that this is a bluff and not just a king and why I think, you know, it's going to be very hard for Lee's lease to fold despite how big it is. Very impressive fold, but this, wouldn't this necessarily cool. always be the right decision, right? Because Watson's not always just going to have this king. So what do you do? Do you make a tight fold? Well do you bend the knee? And he shoves! Oh, wow. Wow. And this is, I think, is going to be too strong for Watson to fold. This looks a lot like, you know, something like... Could be like seven, eight of diamonds or something like that. He hates it. It represents 40% of his stack, but man, this is. I think our count may be wrong. Well, Mike Watson has called. Lease is all in and at risk, and Lease is going to need. Uh, a diamond uh, or a nine. I don't feel good for him when you consider how hot Mike Watson is running right now. And just getting confirmation on how much Lee's is all in for, as the diamond hits the river, so he is gonna get the double up through Sir Watts. And that is gonna take us to the end of the level, and that is gonna take us to the end of this feature table. These guys will move out to the floor, and a reminder that we have a new feature table line up for you for the next level of play with Tonka coming to the main stage. Parker Talbot from Team Pro headlining our new lineup. As we check the stacks of the players we've been watching for the last 90 minutes. So Mike Watson has dropped down to third place at this table. Oleg Vasilchenko is chip leader here. Obviously, when we come back from break, we'll see who the overall chip leaders are with 77 players remaining in the PokerStars EPT presented by Monte Carlo Casino. More action from the main event on the other side of this 16-minute break. Lucky is this. Right after the last cold deck, another cold deck. Unheard of. Bona says, funny how the crowd here is much calmer than in San Remo. I think that's probably something to do with A, the location, right? Like Monte Carlo just feels more. Uh, what's the word? Reverent. Secondly, the amount of money that they're playing for. We have a flop of six, two, seven, two spades. 
Also, no one had time to get tired in San Remo. We talked about the fact that it was a two and a half hour near enough final table, so everyone was pumped up. Here, I'm sure everyone was fired up at the start, but look outside. It's really late now. They've been playing for several hours. You get fatigue from the players, but you also get fatigue from the rail. Yeah, and you can totally. see it in the card room as well. Like it, it, It's definitely late, right? There's only one table going on in the background, largely cleared out. I mean, I remember this very clearly. We're talking like early hours, probably, of the morning now. Bad look like Scott Seaver, by the way. Four grand, Baron. <laughs> you can't do lookalikes with other poker players, Spraggy. They have to be people who are independently well-known. Even though Glenn Chorney is a dead ringer for Chris Moneymaker, that's not even a bad lookalike. That's just like a separated at birth. Does not count. Well, it's an interesting spot to see Glenn Chorney believe to decide to lead. Baron with just the ace-queen high. Maybe he's struggling to find hands that beat ace-queen pre-flop and didn't re-raise before the flop. I'd definitely be struggling to find hands that would fold to a shove here when they lead. Right. Four-handed, you'd think that eights and above are going to get it in with you pre-flop. And then if he leads, maybe he's, he's seeing where he is with something that could fold to pressure. You have two overs and the backdoor ace of spades. Torney calls the clock again on a hand that he is involved in. Cool. All in and a call. Induces the shove, snaps it off. Ace shows ace queen, and Glenn shows pair of aces. Remember, all the times Club is that six, he has called two, clock, seven. he has absolutely had it. Isaac has ace of spades, the queen of diamonds. He would need. Don't do it to him. Don't do it to him. And here's the turn. Spaderu. Nine of spades on the turn. Oh, okay. Oh, it's a sweat. It's never easy. Now, Isaac needs a spade. Or is it fourth place finisher? Let's see the river card. King of clubs. No Isaac Barron exits in fourth place. 589,000 euros, leaving us with the final three players. Glenn Chorney wins another big pot, claims another scalp, and the blinds are now 60,120,000. I think this is the biggest blind level we've reached yet. Third place prize. Cool. Near enough a million dollars. Over a million dollars for yeah. third. For third place, 1.1 million, James. Love this. 10, ace, four. Gut shot for Chorney. Not much for Villamure to be excited about. Check, check. check. Everybody a millionaire. Turn cut, check of spades. Chorney with Broadway. And crucially, I think Villamure picking up a double gut shot of his own, a nine or a king would make him a straight. Reasonable situation for him to start bluffing in. 200,000. <coughs> Glenn Cole. Oh, yeah. Story checks out about him not feeling that well. Into your sleeve, okay, pal. Right, not Jordan. into your hand. And oh, Villamure makes the dummy straight. I mean, he's a little wooden. I wouldn't call him a dummy. Three-handed, flops check through. Insanely cruel run out for Villamure, who makes the second nuts. Much. 550,000. Maxime bets 450,000. Okay, 550,000. How much do you have left? This is such a pure run out for Chorney, not only rolling his gut shot straight on the turn, but his opponent getting there on the bottom end of things. 550. <coughs> <coughs> <Ugh>. This hand, <coughs> so sick. <coughs> Literally and figuratively. I'm all in. Glenn, re-raise, all in. 
Chorney shoves on Villamur. Who calls and is out. Queen King for Glenn. Not straight for Chorney and Villamur busts in third place. 715,000 euros. And it's heads up in Monte Carlo, the season four grand final from April 2008. Glenn Chorney taking on Dennis Carlo for the title trophy and first prize of more than two million euros. Well, Glenn Chorney ran very well at this final table. I think he played a very solid game as well. But Carlo, the second time he finds himself heads up Thank this you. season on the EPT, right? Correct. Oh, yeah. Very lucky river from him. And we really haven't seen much from him in this show at all. Yeah, kind of a silent, understated move into second place. Now he's playing for it all in the trophy. So I can't say Dennis Carlo looks a little like Nick Shulman. Nope. Not allowed. Joe, you have to appreciate and understand the rules of bad lookalikes. If I find someone that looks like Nick Shulman, can I then say he looks like Dennis Carlo? As long as they are famous in the mainstream world and not in poker. <laughs> rules are rules. That was a walk for Dennis Carlo, by the way. First hand a heads up. He definitely looks like evil Nick Shulman. <laughs> I only say that because of the goatee. It's just the way it works. If you have a goatee, you're the evil version of someone else. That is King Queen for Carlo, who is at a significant chip disadvantage. Uh, that's putting it lightly. Then it's raised to 350,000. Mullen. Re-raise on in. Chorney shoves with ace five. Carlo calls it off. Not bad. Dennis on in with king, queen. King of hearts, queen of diamonds. Glenn Chorney, a six to four favorite to win the season four grand final. Put an ace out there one time, please. Let's see the flop. Or hearts. About to be runner up again. And the flop comes. Ace, queen, six. Ace, queen, six. We have a pair of queens for Dennis, but a pair of aces for Glenn. Glenn is in the lead. Dennis needs another queen or a king for a second pair. Please don't do it to me. <laughs> don't do it to him. It's a six. It's never been done to him. Well, that takes away the king out. Only a queen's good now. Let's see the river. Card. Thank you, Glenn. No queen. It's, a it's not a queen, and it's over. Glenn Shawnee takes it down. Dennis Carlo, a runner-up, two times this season. Shawnee, well done. Thank you so much. Well done. Antonius with the raise with the two sevens. Quick re-raise from Lau with the kings, all in. Pretty reasonable, whoa. Three pocket pairs in one hand. No. Mm -mm. Of course, Adrian Mateus was involved in a particularly famous oh. incident in 2015 where it was queens, kings, and aces with jacks folded. And there was also a pair of fives in that hand as well. Not now, fatty. So low, of course, is very short. And that's not really a major factor in Kaninikov's decision-making. Wow, does he fold the lines? I'm pretty impressed by that fold. I think Antonius is just going to have to call here. 12 and a half big blinds, two sevens, oh, not going to be able to fold. Now, normally, I would say this is a great spot for Lowe. As Patrick <laughs> Antonius does indeed call, putting Lowe at risk. He is a four to one favorite. He has the over pair, however, there is an old adage that it is always coming seven. And I'm not going to lie to you, I fear the Zhejiang Low right now. It has been all about the sevens. It has been always coming seven. 777 entrants in this main event. It's the year of the seven. The flop does not have a seven on it. Five, tray, deuce. Spades would be a factor 
Should we see another one on the turn? It's oh. a seven. Seven on the turn. And Patrick Antonius takes a commanding lead. Ji Zhang Lo now needs a king on the river to survive. It is always coming seven. No king. Antonius KOs low. How do you feel about that one, Andre Latau? Seven! 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 Every time the seven is coming. <laughs> Pocket sevens. For Gizonis, he has opened under the gun to 8,500. Boutros name. Six, five off. Another painful mode <laughs> for the Boutros. <laughs> Round to the big blind, Nick Petrangelo, who's got eight three of hearts, and he's defending. Hey, Nick, hey. He finds a way to win this. Ace, seven, three. Maybe not. Really is always coming seven. So Petrangelo has got bottom pair, has backdoor hearts, has a lot of chips. Do you reckon we see a call here, Maria? Yeah, I mean, if I know Petrangelo, he doesn't he doesn't like to fold when he has some equity, but I think. He actually has other plans to raise. Oh. Yes. But this could end up working out really well for him. Yeah, I think he knows that this hand plays a little bit better as a raise for a few reasons. If Jazonis C bets that flop with, you know, any two over cards to the seven, which are, you know, king, queen, queen, jack, all of those king, jack type hands, then that's usually going to fold to a check raise and you fold out equity of two overs coming on the turn against your bottom pair. And there's not a lot of turn cards that Petrangelo would love to see if it weren't for a three or for an eight. Um, <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, Nick. And uh, so I think he so decided to play that hand as a check raise for those reasons. When you improve and you lose equity. Yeah. yeah. Down to 3% <laughs> equity. The check raise, by the way, was to 24,000. And having taken that betting lead on the flop, and improving on the turn, no doubt he will follow through with another barrel. Loading up with blue 5k chips. And a bit of custard on the bottom. And normally I think his plan was if he check raised that flop and he gets called and doesn't improve on the turn, he would probably just check and give up on the hand. But unfortunately, this looks like a great <laughs> turn for Petrangelo and so now he feels really happy to get Jazonis to call because it looks like Jazonis has a lot of big aces. Um, in Jazonis' position, is this a just call or do you think now he gets a little bit frisky? I think you have to just call against someone like Petrangelo. You have to give him the option to barrel on the river. There's the call. <laughs> Trangelo eyeing his opponent's stack. The queen on the river changes nothing. At least he didn't hit a three. All in. <gasps> oh, no. And a snap call. And a full double up for Jazonis. How about that one? Proof yet again that it is always coming seven.
<laughs> oh man, what a boneheaded play that was. Am I? Welcome back. H hello, my babies, and welcome back to EPT Monte Carlo presented by the Monte Carlo Casino. Live coverage of day three of the main event continues. Overall chip leaders on your screens. Arunas Sapita Vicious, 1.38 million, nailed it. Maduka Marigal, is, are these AI generated names? Marcos Ladev in third. Peter Eretz, I've heard of that one before. And Keenan Taylor, rounding out the top five. New feature table that contains several of those names. OMG, look at all those chips up top. Arunas and Maduka. Number one and number two. Number one and number two overall in this tournament and number one and number two at the table. Parker Talbot, Park Poker Stars. He's a Parker Stars team pro, if you think about it. Hadi El Esmar is a player we've seen here throughout the years. Excited for this feature table of 20 big blind stacks and 150 big blind stacks. Joe Stapleton and Nicholas Michael Walsh. Hello, hello, thank you for having me. You know almost Nick Walsh TV. Cranking out that spin and go content, the Sunday Million streams. You know them, you love them. Time to give Magnus Carlson a break as we rejoin the action blinds at 4,000 to 8,000 with an 8,000 big blind ante. Parker Talbot getting a little grooming done before taking his seat. You guys won't believe it. He actually got a haircut and a beard trim before he came to EPT. It looks a little, a little uh, neat. A little neater than usual. Yeah. Uh oh, Joker at the table. That's kind of intimidating, actually. It's like a Joker costume in a hoodie. That hoodie. We need to get a Tonka interview about that hoodie afterwards. My guy looking fresh to death. Look at that drip, Balma. And I recognize on the left side of the screen here, Kirill Asolenka was at the table last night. He was fun to watch. He was wearing an interesting shirt. It was a white shirt with poker terminology handwritten on it. I saw that. He was yeah, trying to really player, embody uh, the spirit of poker, you know, keywords, you sort of yeah. manifestations, yeah. if you will. Uh, as we wait for the button to get worked out here, I think we should mention that you can still late reg today's mini EPT. It just started a few minutes ago. $3.30, eight max deep stack. And there are scoop tickets and various added value in each of the mini EPT events. Next one up is at 6.15 p.m. So two hours from now is the 558 <clears throat> max turbo PKO. And then at 8.15 p.m. tonight, there's a $2.20 <coughs> heads up Zoom total knockout. Forever Looser asks, do you guys have any info about Arthur Martirosian? We sure do. Thank you for your question. Merstyle 15 in Twitch chat says, Nick Walsh TV, can you have poker shirts with pre-flop charts on it? Great idea. Mm. Perhaps a, a merchandise idea I should drop for the Graph Gang. Action has folded around to Florian Guimon in the cutoff. Five, four suited. Mm. And Goel, oh. Apurva Goel folds the button. <laughs> 10, deuce off in the small blind. Uh, no, thank you. And Hattie El Esmar, we just saw a massive cooler with pocket sevens from days of yore. And here they are again. El Asmar's sevens still good after this ace. Eight, five, two spade flop. Pair of fives for Guimond, and looks like Guimond is going to continue. Yeah. Interesting spot here, Joe. I think that it was probably reasonable for the sevens just to rip here, Pri. I don't think the flat was necessarily the only line that he could have taken. Shoving 20 bigs here versus cutoff open seems pretty standard. 
Are we on a pay jump by any chance? Are we on a pay jump by any chance? Let's take a look. 77 in the field. Ooh, ooh, 7777. 7, 7, 7. 77 in the field. And I believe there is a pay jump. 71. So, no, not particularly near a pay jump. Yeah. Uh, Hattie L. Esmar, if you remember, is um, somehow that jam the river on the last hand. often gets wrapped up in some pretty ball. wacky situations here at UPT Monte Carlo. And it might be because of a reluctance to rip it with hands like pocket sevens. <laughs> yeah, in, in many cases, Joe, you, what you're trying to avoid I, I mean, is those sticky situations post-flop. I think it goes check, check, 5-4 actually has showdown here, and he's going to take this one down very nice. Nice hand there. Relatively lucky to get to showdown with sevens. What hand you put me on? I would say. Now, it's worth it's mentioning, Nick, I'm glad you brought that up because Hattie Lesmar starts the hand, starts the hand with like 150,000, which sounds like a lot of chips. It's five starting stacks, but at this stage, it's fewer than 20 bigs. It's yeah, not. yeah, absolutely. And obviously, the ever present big blind calculation, very important when you're studying those pre flop situations. Seven's definitely up there. Eight's definitely up there. Nine's definitely up there. As soon as you see that wider open from the cutoff and you're sitting around 20 bigs, a lot of those pairs, you can just rip them in. Uh, you're obviously not only getting in with the best hand very frequently, but you generate fold equity from the hands that have equity against your combination. And, uh, yeah, winning chips at non-showdown. That's a, that's a good way to win poker tournaments. Parker Talbot. Parker out. I love that guy. He's a he's a true gent, old old uh, old Tonka. He's pretty lovable. Very lovable indeed. Apurva Goel wrapping India. Seen a lot from this guy over the years. I think he's probably going to be opening here. We are in the cutoff. Oh, you used two of them. You wasted them. Lines are 4K, 8K. He's going to make it 16. There it is, 16,000 to go. Hey, you can only use these when you're going to make a big call. <laughs> Once you use them, you're committed, you know? Hmm? Yeah. Once you use them, you're committed. Yeah. That hoodie, though. That How hoodie belongs to the overall tournament chip mm. leader. But then you would have been committed. <laughs> you would have it's working for him so far. Call, Don't yeah. take it off yet, buddy. Got a, got a ways to go still to that, till that final table and the potential victory. I'm I'm undecided. I don't I don't I don't know if this hoodie's my jam. <coughs> it's got a certain je ne sais quoi. No disrespect to our chip leader. I'm for it. Different strokes, different folks, and all that. I think I would like it better if it didn't have the Joker's face on the side and it just looked like a purple suit with but a green tie. Potentially, potentially, but you know, from a certain angle, yeah, it's got and it's I got a cool TV table to see what you went jammed on me with. It's got a cool. Uh, Cool kind of vibe. Hand 67 now, guys. Balmain, Paris. En petite décision. Nice bet on the turn. I was going to call that one also. I had, get, I had to get hand on that hand. Raise from the player just before. Makes the fold. And that would be an ace of diamonds for Marigal. Queen five for Goel. Goodbye. And action folds around to Tonka in the small. Ace, uh, sorry, it's the big blind. Those chips are from the under the gun razor. Tonka's in the big blind. He's got ace eight. He's gonna defend that big blind. Like the red bearded Canadian, like red blooded Canadian he is. Nine, six, four, rainbow. And the Seabet gets a quick fold from Talbs. Never lucky. Yeah, no. That's right, man. Had a big cut. I know we just got here, but something happened in the not too distant past. Daniel Devoras versus Harry Lodge. Devoras all in for 82,000. He's got King Jack, ace nine for Harry. And the 
There's a nine on the flop. Daniel still needs a king or a jack. Turn card, no paint. River card. No king, no jack, no Daniel Devoris. Surrenders his time bank chips as well as his 82,000 remaining. Busto, 13,050 euros. I had the pleasure of having about three minutes of my brex breakfast with Daniel Devoris the other day, and I have to say it was a very pleasant three minutes. Nice. I just, I just tried to be funny. I was like, oh, hey, Daniel, I got to go, but it wasn't because of you. Don't worry. It's not really, it's not because of you. No, I swear. No, 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 it's not you. And he just looks back and he goes, it's pretty cool that I know I have the power to make you leave anywhere at any time. And I was like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> you big, me small. really hot in the last three days, no? Yesterday was really hot. How come they don't blast AC here? I don't know. Uh, putting the heat on the fly. You honestly do tournaments but oftentimes. It goes like one way one day and one way the other. Yeah. You know? Then it's super cold and people complain it's too cold and they turn the heat on a bit. And then it's super hot. It's hard to find a happy medium when it's like 500, 1,000 players in yeah. different time zones. Mr. Talbot, Has sorry, Joe. Folded around to Parker on the button. King four suited. Yeah, absolutely. This feels like a good one to go ahead and open. And there we go. In the small blind with a hand, you certainly cannot fold to a button open and is sometimes going to be a re-raise depending on who it is, what the dynamic is. Certainly a call. Makes sense. And Asalenka is also going to come along with 7-8 off. Seems fairly standard so far. Tonka with the best of it, but only very marginally. And queen high flop. Queen. Both the queen and the 8-7 improve. There we go. Paris from Aragal and Alsalenka. Action is on Parker, who declines to continuation bet. And the reason that you would decline a C bet there is why, Nick? Because this smashes the hell out of the flatting range in the small blind, first of all. And also the big blind's gonna have a piece of this quite often. Six, seven, eight, seven, eight, nine, sure, all that kind of stuff in there. It's just not a high value continuation. If you're gonna put in a bet like this, you wanna be certain that you're gonna get plenty of folds. And against two opponents, it's just not gonna happen that often. Also, no back doors. I mean, obviously, you know, some backdoor straights, but that, those are extremely long. You want kind of the, the backdoor diamonds as well if you want to be putting in a bet here, and even then you still might miss it. Some context here for PokerStar Strag. This is a fun fact. I busted Parker, Parker at the Irish Open. Oh. Not so fun fact. It wasn't that hard to do. I think he fired six bullets overall. Yeah, he's given back to the community. And we are still going heads up to the river. And it's a repeat nine. Marigold's top pair is still good. Playing it safe, so will the eight. Yep, check, check, Queen Jack's gonna take it. Is Asalenko wearing an, an engagement ring? Uh-oh. Some lucky, lucky fiance out there. I don't think it's in case for Looks like a cool ring, though. Pure platinum. Or is it latinum? Let's let's avoid the latinum. What, what from, from, from Star Trek? No, from uh, Helmuth. Oh. <laughs> uh, that was a, a Deep Space Nine reference, but yeah, I was way off. Dilithium, I think, was from Star no. Trek. I'm not saying Latinum wasn't. No, Dilithium is, is is what they use as a power source. Right. Latinum is what they traded in okay. uh, in, 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 the, latch, in the bar sure. in the bars in the clubs. 
What was the name of the Ferengi character, guys? Help me out here. Mm, Quark? Quark, thank you very much. He was always like, 13 bars of pure Latin. <laughs> Parker back in action, raising this time with 10-9 offsuit. And there you go. Gimon pulling the trigger with the exact size sack we would expect to pull the trigger. Yep, this is very similar to the spot we saw just with the sevens. Cut off for his big blind. You're just going to bang it in. It's going to be what you want to do most of the time, especially against players that have the right range from the cutoff, Joe. The ones that have plenty of raised folds where you pick up a ton of chips at non-showdown. Gold press latinum. Thank you very much. Level 24 high speed. Of course you know. Is level 24 referring to where the holodeck was located? <laughs> I would love if that was true. Gold pressed latinum. Someone in chat's asking if I've seen Picard season three. I haven't. I haven't seen any of the new Star Trek stuff, although I heard some of it's quite good. What do I need to see if, like, the last thing I watched was probably, like, a few episodes of Deep Space Nine. Did you? Oh, wow. That's a, whoa, that's a way back. I'm not even sure what the order is at this point. I was going to ask you if you watched any Discovery, but that's like that's like a couple seasons ahead. Discovery I didn't do. I, I don't even think I did Voyager. For me, Discovery was hit and miss. I did enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, that's but, why I didn't do it. But it was a little bit here, a little bit there. My producer's saying jump straight into Picard season three. Not even Picard season one? <laughs> what about Below Deck? Below deck is funny. And what's the other one they have now with Pike? Oh, uh, right. Brave New, Strange New World? I haven't seen that one at all yet. I got to catch up, actually. I haven't seen any Picard. All right, so we are going to go to a flop here. Sapa Vicious versus Goel. And this hits Sapa Vicious pretty hard. Just watch Orville. Yeah, Orville's great, too. A bit of JT action here. And there's a lot more Star Trek fans in the audience than I would have suspected. Uh, you know, you just you, you put out you put out the uh, the Trekkie signal. You, you mentioned a couple gold press bars a lot, and, yeah. and then they all come out of the woodwork. I love that. They are among us. So when I was a young man, I won a radio contest when the movie Generations was coming out. Sure. Uh, that I got to participate. This was before um, you could have a cast. There was no casting, right? So they do this thing where, um, when I say casting, I mean streaming. You couldn't have like a Twitter space or a Twitch situation. Twitch or a Zoom. Sure. And so to uh, promote Generations, they did a conference call with William Shatner. Amazing. And uh, Patrick Stewart. And you would call in and listen to them, like, on the phone. <laughs> like a conference call. A like conference call. Amazing. And you would get called on to answer questions, to ask questions, excuse me. And me at, like, 12 years old, I'm so terrified that they were going to call me. I have my questions ready. 40, they never called on me. 74, I think but it came the... the it came with like a calling card, like a big. Remember back in the day when you to call collect to call someone, you had to have a calling card. Yeah. Because you didn't have a cell phone. Right. Either. Yeah, and you were going across state lines or something. Yeah. So it was this big Star Trek Generations calling card that had a hundred dollars on it that I never used. I'm pretty sure it'd be a pretty sick collector's item. That yeah, for sure. If I dig it up. You're probably right. MCI calling card. That's funny. Yeah, and you had to because like, you couldn't use like four hundred quarters. It was like right? it was like dial eight hundred now. Dial five for exactly. Dial yeah. seven for yeah. Amazing. Anyway, guys, the back, other button. Back to the poker. Gimon nine six suited. Gimon. Now you feeling cold? No, no. I said now they put That's AC. It's oh, okay, okay. A very French name. He's gonna play the nine six of clubs. Goel here, 24 big blinds. Gimond is actually the effective stack, though, so you might just see the ship from the jacks here. This feels like a pretty much snap profit. Yep, there it is. He's all in with it. He is Goeling all in. Big blind doesn't wake up. 9-6 will fold. Next hand, please. 
then when I went to go see Star Trek Generations, my friend's mom was didn't really have her her act together, so we got there late and it was sold out. Oh. And I almost cried. And then I saw a little movie as a consolation prize. I saw a little movie, believe it or not, called Stargate. Stargate was a great movie. And it was awesome. Yeah, so awesome. <laughs> and way better than Star Trek Generations was. Wow. Wow. Okay. You just lost half the audience, Joe. Generations is not good. I I, I, I would agree that I, I preferred um, Stargate. Stargate actually was a very good film. There was a couple good seasons of Stargate, the series as well. It got a little bit crazy Stargate once they went Atlantis. For a long time. Atlantis was a bit weird, but. Like literally two things later. King of Philly in the chat. Nick Walsh TV. Is that always just a shove there with the Ace Jack? I think it pretty much is, yeah. Uh, you're going to do very, very little other than just do that if you're going to be kind of following the <laughs> rules. Um, I think especially because we have the big blind ante in place, so there's essentially one additional big blind to be won. Uh, King of Philly, having watched a lot of my spin streams, you'll know that that's a jam even if we're playing without antes whatsoever. If we're playing pure chip EV, even more so when you're applying additional pressure at this stage in the tournament, even more so when there's an additional big blind in the, um, in the big blind ante. Did Magnus Carlsen just tweet to tell everyone to write his name in YouTube chat right now? Because y'all are going crazy. I don't know if I need to tell you this, but he's not here anymore. You're welcome to stay and hang out. Sort of. <laughs> What's up, Nordic? Dropping the Huff and Stapes reference. Hey, buddy. I was just chatting with Huff right before we came back from break. Seventy-four players remaining. When do we hit the money? Nice one. Have we got, have we, have, are we ITM yet? Ha -ha. We are two away from a another sort of bubble. We are not that far from another page jump, guys. So seventy-two get thirteen k. Seventy-one gets fifteen. I think all these players definitely not looking at that fifteen. Might have a little bit a little bit of an altercation here. Parker has raised the sevens. Goel, he's only got 28 bigs here. I do think from position, you might want to be three betting not all in, but he, we might just see the jam. Goel definitely on the deeper side here, though, just to rip it in. So Parker's made it 18. <coughs> I think she said 65. That sounds about right to me. A little over 3x. Just a little bit over 3x. Is this a good price for pocket sevens or a bad price for pocket sevens? Uh, I would argue this is a pretty bad price. He's put in a Another pretty... There in the muck. <sighs> there you go. Well, I know if Tonk is folding, it's a bad price. Uh, yeah, no, it's... Uh, if, if we're looking at effective stack depth here, you're calling a big chunk there, and you're kind of just hoping this to flop a seven, and that's about it. <laughs> Sevens does have some playability post flop, but at that stack depth, you don't have the kind of stack depth you want to sort of navigate and, you know, float and then turn your hand into a bluff on a later street and all that cool yeah, stuff. You're just kind of set miming. <laughs> and uh, that's a bad place yeah. to be when there's not, not that much behind to win. But yeah, Tonka knows what he's doing. Better? <laughs> Better both times. Look at the field as a whole. Going to play down to as low as we can get today in five full levels. The guesstimate is somewhere in the 40s. So another 30 eliminations or so. Here's a nice hand, 9 of spades. Going to go ahead and open this one up. Uh, Solenka now has about 25 big blinds after making that two big blind raise. Carrera's got a counter stack here. I would be shipping this all day long, Joe. No messing around. You have <clears throat> approximately 17 big blinds behind. <coughs> you have a very decent pair. Yep, he's going to take the all-in line, and I like it a lot. I think probably once we get over 20, there's a chance he might sort of sneak in some limping, too. Don't know this range 
as well as some others, but I do feel like the shipping of the nines here seems good. He's going to ask for a count, but he's just posturing. There's no chance he's going to give him a spin with nine of spades unless this is like, I don't know, his favorite hand of all time. And he just doesn't, just hates money. Maybe it's the year he graduated high school. Could be. Grass Monkey in the chat. Nick Walsh TV, what is the cost of various satellites for Barcelona? Why don't you go take a look in your client right now? There are all sorts of binds you can enter at. There are satellites, there are super satellites, there are phase satellites. There's about a million ways to get into an EPT. Go and take a look for yourself. I'm sure there's lots of uh, written materials as well if you give it to Google. Winning satellites to these events is all part of the fun, isn't it, Joe? That's all part of the allure of some of these, you know, the opportunity to jump in a saddie, make your way all the way out here to, to a place like Barcelona, for example, to a place like European Poker Tour here in Monte Carlo. <coughs> Winning a package sounds great, yeah. I, I'm not a, a satellite fan in general because it's just a guarantee that I'm going to end up paying more to enter the tournament than buying a direct <laughs> It's like, hey, you want to know how to make a 1K cost 1100 Play a satellite first. Lots of good material out, out there about uh, satellite strategy, strategy as well, if you want to check it out, Joe. You know I hate learning. <laughs> <laughs> Gimon, Jack-10 suited. Freudlich is saying, is Tonka a streamer? Uh, yeah. One of the best who've ever done it. Uh, These days, not so much, I guess. <laughs> I, I agree, one of the best to ever done it. That part is is uh, is fairly solid. Is he currently a streamer? Debatable. Yeah, if you ask it's Spraggy. Just, it's just bad because the lighting is so bad in Spraggy's bathroom. <laughs> which is where, as everyone knows, Tonka lives. Quite right. Quite right. I'll do a little self-plug here, right? We're good for a second. Uh, Joe, are you doing any stand-up in Las Vegas, June or July? And if so, how do I get a ticket? I got nothing booked in Vegas for June or July at the moment. I got some feelers out there for late June. Possibly also in July, depending on how the main event goes for me. But I do have a show in London this coming Wednesday, if any of you are in London. And I've got, I think I'm going to be doing Indiana at some point this summer. I'm going to be doing St. Louis, Missouri at some point this summer. I'm going to be doing Vail, Colorado in just a couple of weeks. So we're starting to get around a little bit. Back to the poker. Ace five suited for Hattie El Asmar with the sour dough. The artisanal sour dough. I think this is probably a spot where you just threw out the cutoff. You love life about it. Yep, there it is. Elazmar does have a very nice suited ace, though. Might decide to defend. <coughs> I think uh, thus far, been a little bit on the more snug side. Makes the fold. That's how you pick up chips, ladies and gents. Big stack, little three bet. Taking it down pre-flop. A couple more chips going his way. <clears throat> Got a gig in Missouri, huh, Joe? Yeah, it looks like I locked in St. Louis, Missouri last night. Crushed Wisco. Now Missouri. I was just in Wisconsin. Yeah, but I did some bar shows in Wisconsin. I'll be doing um, some actual comedy clubs in St. Louis. I'll be doing the funny bone, it looks like. Apparently my website's down at the moment. Joe, when are you gonna let me build you a new website, buddy? You've seen you've seen mine. The stunning architecture that it is. Take it. Take it. Take it. It's like at the end of, uh, nobody's ever seen this movie. <laughs> at the end of Maid, when he really, <laughs> he's like really loves his stepdaughter. And the mom's not doing a great job. And she's like, take her. Take her. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, we did see a fold there from the Jack-10 suited. That was kind of surprising. Uh, that means Parker's going to open up his cutoff instead. Didn't even give Parker a chance to three-bet this ace-king. Now Guimond's going to get a good price to defend the pocket fives. I think this might be a shove as well, guys. <coughs> oh. Yep. There it is. Called it again. We know these spots, Joe. We know these ones. These are the ones we're confident about. <clears throat> Had the hand I folded to him. And Parker will not be folding. Parker. It has he Okay, I was going to say. Oh, it's already been called. Jeez, <laughs> yeah, gonna, we're flipping. I was going to say this would be a Top weird pause. Top pair for Parker. <laughs> I was like, what don't I know about Ace King? I, what new theory came out? I, I was, he was, I don't know if he was waiting for a pay jump or what, but that, he called. It was a yeah. snap. Yep. Okay, let me try it. So Gimon. Let me try it. No, don't do it. Let me try it. No, it. He, he's he's trying the walk off, the walk off equity. It's worked so many times before, okay, Joe. Okay, I'm going. Don't put out a five. It'll be real embarrassing if I, was, I have to come back. I was tired anyway. I, uh, I'm leaving. Did yeah, not work, this, work time. this time. Lucky. Pocket fives. Do not hold. Cracked by the top pair, top kicker. Yeah, you got to put your coat on next time if you want that to work. Don't, don't phone it in. You gotta believe it. You gotta believe you're leaving. Yeah, Poker Star Strag in the chat says the coat has to be on for it to work. You're absolutely right. We've seen it so many times. Florian Guimont exits. Picks up 13,000 euros and a little bit of change. Nice run, sir. And that puts us within sniffing distance of a pay jump. 73 makes the same amount of money. 72 makes the same amount of money. And then there's more cash. Yes, sir. Nice hand there for Tonka. Tonka is now up to 101 big blinds. We are getting pretty deep here. To have 101 big blinds this late in an EPT, you're feeling good. 73 places from victory. Diane on YouTube asks, who's in the commentary booth? That would be us. Thank you for your question. John Delano, thank you for who runs my uh, my website, by the way, at the moment, called Fans of Stapes. I was getting my own website wrong. It is up. But, John, I want to let you know that the Chilliwack Coliseum gig in uh, British Columbia is canceled. It's gone. I don't know what happened, but it's gone. More info coming later when the other ticket links are live. But for now, it's a week from today in London, in Hackney Wick. Javi laughed in my face. Dealer my versus face. big blind domination situation, although major chance of <coughs> chop if we get to showdown. One more. How much do you make? I don't know, like 3K. Given the positioning here, Joe, I think now? we'll probably just see some continuation. Uh, don't think we'll have the opportunity to sing the song. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Who really gets the showdown with King Deuce? Uh, I mean, am I right? Uh, these guys are pretty good, though. Yeah. I think he knows he probably should still be floating with the King High here. Does call. These two freaks. I have 100 big blinds. I'm day three of the main event, and the guy, I'm standing. And that increases the chances by a whole lot, Joe. Double paired boards. People like to get to showdown with high cards. That is true. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. And he just calls every single one of my raises. Seven it goes check, five. check. Yeah, both players probably. Oh, Position never mind. Yeah. Six on the river. Oh. When? So obviously we go out here quite happy yeah. to try and get to showdown. Possibly puts in a blocker bet here. Not, not so 64 in the oh, middle. Yeah. He's going to put yeah. in a smaller bet. Play a little bit closer. Yeah, it gets called by the six and uh, no chop, no chop. Jack's, uh, Jackson six is here for the Jackson six for Asulenka. The Jackson 6 is the Jackson mm -hmm. 5 with Jackson Pollock. Everyone loves to make the best hand, apparently. John Lapito says, Stapes and Nick, 
You're killing it. Love your jokes. Watching from Bel Air, Maryland. I'm a poker dealer at my local casino just over a year in and love. That's cool. We love a dealer. Couldn't couldn't do it without you. Do we you tried. Think, do you think do you think his Bel Air is anything like the Bel Air near you, Joe? Um, in that there are homes and people, probably. Oh, accurate. Yeah, yeah fair. You know who lives in Bel Air near me? Jennifer Tilly. And some playgrounds where you spend most of your days? The playground was in West Philadelphia. The Bel Air was pretty far from that. <laughs> are you saying there's no playgrounds in Bel Air now, Joe? <laughs> I don't think there are any public playgrounds in Bel Air. There's a chance there is. I mean, isn't. the Playboy Mansion is there. I guess that's a playground of sorts. It's a playground of sorts. There's an online event. Okay, a raise the defense. He's no, 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 good, no, no, very online. standard. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. These but guys seem to know their way around the poker yeah, table yeah, thus far. Yeah, yeah, Definitely yeah, playing yeah. the correct ranges. Nobody seems to shy away from both pre and post flop. Love to see it. Going to a flop. Jack three of hearts now picks up two live cards plus the hearts. Check, and I'm expecting a C bet from. No, no, no. You can just. I think you need to work for it to work. Because. But you're playing poker. Huh? You're playing poker there, right? Yeah. Any pronunciation experts help me out in the chat? I don't think so. Oh. Zapatavicas. I would go with Zapatavicious. 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 Sure someone will let us know. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure some chat bro knows. Continuation as expected, 12K. And Carrera has plenty of reasons to stick around, namely nine hearts. And it's a four of clubs on the turn, so a uh, legit pair now for Arunas. Sapatavicius. 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 Okay. The uh, equities here actually swing pretty hard. He doesn't know that he has the best of it, but uh, does pick up a pair on the turn. Sapatavicius is simply the best. Yeah, guys, I'm asking for the pronunciation. If you just put the word in chat the way it's written on my screen, it's not going to help me get there. Sapita <laughs> Vichus. Sapita Vichus. Two people wrote it the same way, so. Sapita Vichus. Queen on the river. Pair four, still good. Going to call him Sappy for short. <clears throat> Parker's just like, next hand. I would absolutely bomb this river. 15. How much? It does not seem like a bomb relative to the size of the pot. Mm, this is unusual. I don't expect a 10 to fold. I don't expect a queen to fold. I don't even expect a 6 to fold. But maybe. I mean, a 6, I suppose a 6 might still get away here once Just in a while. Maybe. <laughs> Might just call with the four still, yeah. <laughs> and a is. four does not fold. Maybe it, pocket threes or deuces would have fold. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's a weird size here on the river from uh, Carrera. Did he sub hit a choose a weird size? <laughs> First he raised king four and then he just calls you with king four. What the fuck? <laughs> what do you do? I love Tonka. Oh, yeah. Tonka. Oh, I thought you had king high only. Oh, sorry, I didn't see. That. Yeah, I think um. I think when you size your bet, if you're still getting looked up by a four there, which, of course, I think still might have been folded by some other players, potentially. I feel like, yeah, you probably want to put a little bit more hurt on that on that bet size. But on this occasion, does improve on the turn, does find the call, and the Joker scoops a pot. Tommy Gonthier asks, where can I find the chip count? I'm not going to tell you. I can't even remember what I have. Thank you for your question. Don't say anything. So long ago. <laughs> Don't. Nobody <laughs> tell him. No. Why? Don't no. No say no uh, two pair? a word. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Then you and me. Uh, Hannah Brady won, Joe. Uh, if I was in it, I don't think I would fold it. You will flash? Yeah, and I'm not bluffing anyway. So Joker's UTG going to open up the jack nine of spades. 20,000 or less. Well, 45,000. Oh. Just going to get through to the blinds. 
And small blindfolds, big blindfolds. Okie dokie. Where are we at? Still at 73. If each one in the playing friendly game here. What is drama? Van Brock says, even though I'm listening, I don't know what you talk about, lol. What, what is your specific question, Van Brock? I will answer a question genuinely from you and only you. Because I can sense your earnestness. And I'm happy to have you. Hold. My oh, poor, uh, excuse me, Marigal. My Duke of Marigal. In with King Seven of Hearts. Nine tray spades for a Purva who folds. And the Joker defends Ace Deuce. Queen, Queen, ten, two hearts. Miracle with that flush draw and a hand that. Could be good based on high card only. Hand over. <coughs> table action. It's like Mike Watson all in against Oleg Vasilchenko. And this looks like a virtual shove. Mike's got a couple of chips left behind, we think. And this hand's been going for over eight minutes. So Vasilchenko right here, front and center. Bet 50K on the river. And Watson has all but moved all in over the top. This is a massive pot. And after eight minutes total in this hand, Veselchenko folds and Mike Watson wins stacks and stacks and stacks of chips. He's up to 1.4 million, which is more than a runus at our Feature tables, so Mike Watson definitely in the running for tournament chip leader right now. Finale table says, just tuned in. How's Magnus doing in terms of play? Is he any good? You know, I went to lunch with Maria Ho and she said that pretty much everything Magnus did was off, no, uh, was she was like, those are almost the exact same way I would have played all those hands. So, <clears throat> excuse me, Maria Ho, stamp of approval for the Magnus Carlson play. Obviously, he's back out in the field. We won't see his hold cards. So not stronger. As this hand goes to showdown, more chips for Tonka. That is a good bad look-alike right there from Kiplitz. DJ Pauly D for Maduka Marigal. Fantastic. Gabs are here. No? Nobody? Asolenka, Queen Jack under the gun. Woo, I like a Queen Jack offsuit under the gun fold, personally. Here goes Goel. 
makes it 16,000. Nice little big blind defender here, though. King five suited, very playable. It's only one big blind more. Let's go. Let's take a flop. Let's see how we get on. What's up, Bohika? Welcome. Hope you enjoy the stream. Ace, <laughs> queen, ace. Trips for a goal. So Goel here, 25 bigs behind. I'd like to see a really small bet here, like ridiculously so it was super small. Oh, wow, the check, I think, is just a bit... Mm, you don't like it. Mm, I, I, I just think you're just turning your hand way face up. I mean, I'm not saying you always have an ace when you check this flop, but you're going to have, like, queen x. You're going to have, like, tens. You're going to have, like, eights. You're going to bet all the hands that missed, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. So this is a... This you're going to try to wrap that ace, and then when you don't bet, it's this, a little sus. This is an exercise in, uh, in balance. And, I mean, look, Goel is an extremely, extremely experienced player. I don't think checking is a mistake per se, but I definitely think you, you're going to start um, setting off some alarm bells in other players' heads when you're not continuing here. I think even King Five of Diamonds would find a call if you found those really, really small continues. Mm -hmm. And then you go, yeah, but Nick, if you bet really small, doesn't that, isn't that turning your hand face up too? No, you balance it. You, you bluff like that too. You, you can bet, bet really super small, small with your, you your Jack-10 suited yeah, that yeah. you missed with. When you're with your 8 7 of hearts and all that stuff too. Yeah. And so I think under those circumstances, you also want to find a way to build a pot against a random queen that's there, against maybe like a king jack that has the gut shot that improves into a king on the turn, can't fold the turn, maximize value against those. But, uh, you know, sometimes against the right opponents, the check is the way to go. Maybe these guys have history. Who knows? I think it's really easy in a situation like that to when you flop trip aces and you bet and you get an insta fold to go. I'm not I'm not gonna bet that anymore. Right. That's right. But then you don't think about the times where you continue with like King Ten there or whatever and get the folds and you're like, Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You got you gotta think about your whole sort of game plan there. And I think that's just a good exercise. Stop thinking about hands in terms of single outcomes. Stop thinking about hands in terms of individual combinations that you hold that your opponent holds start thinking about poker in terms of ranges and in terms of you know here's the situation this is what i'm going to do with every combination that i have in this scenario so isolate the hands that you've raised pre-flop isolate the hands that they're going to defend with think about it in terms of ranges and then work your way down the streets from there talbot being defended against by goal with pocket sixes 10 10 3. Did Tonka lead here? Tonka has <coughs> continued. Ah, he's in position, excuse yes. me. Thought it was his big blind defend. That's a good turn. For Talbot. Yeah. What's his thing? Never lucky. Sometimes lucky. Seems to get lucky the statistical normal amount of times. Oh, no. Wow, never lucky. I take it back. Never lucky. It turns out, turns out the branding wow. the branding is appropriate to the circumstances here. Who said Tonka was occasionally lucky? It's never. Who said that, and why did you do it to Tonka? Tonka now way behind, and Guel checks. Are we going to get the... No, we're not. Oh, dear, oh, dear. The soul read check back. No. No. The annoying thing is here, Tonka knows he's probably targeting a small pair. It's just not the one that rivered a boat, probably. Ugh. Ever lucky. 
Ooh, a little bit of a gulp there. You see that one, Joe? <sighs> Luckily, I don't think he has to worry too much about tells right here. I don't think Tonka is going to... Oh, he's asking for a count. Uh-oh. Tonka did make a bad hero call yesterday. Obviously a different spot. Yeah, I mean, I think Joe has a good point here as well. You're going to gulp if you got a massive hand. You're going to gulp if you're bluffing here super hard. I just don't think people are very balanced in these situations. I think you're right. I think this is a situation that naturally balances itself because you're sweating the call, you're sweating the sweating the bluff here yeah. in equal parts probably. Makes the right fold. Does release top pair. And that's going to be very, very heartening for him to see later on when he checks back the footage. Another team pro in action, arguably the most successful one over the past five years. Ramon Colias versus Milos. Patakovich. Board is ace, 10, 8, deuce, Can jack. And it looks like Patakovich has checked to Ramon, who is moving all but all in. Patakovich calls. Ramon shows Broadway. And Patakovich mocks. And that is going to double up Ramon to about 640,000. Pretty solid stack. That's over. That's like 75 big blinds. Just a quick catch question, Joe. A uh, little bit of a you know, fact check. Does this guy ever lose? <laughs> Seems like no. So it weird. It must have happened at such, some point. Such an anomaly. So strange. Brass Monkey in the chat says, Nick Walsh TV, I gulped before shoving Queen Queen into 10-10 on the IO stream. This was also noted by the commentators. I just do it to clear my throat before announcing all in so I don't <coughs> sound weak. Fair enough. The commentary here not meant to, um, not meant to punish or to praise simply something to note in the grand scheme of poker those little pieces of information could be of use under these circumstances as we mentioned i think it could be strong it could be weak i think in equal parts under these circumstances we did it let's go we made it two grand close enough ask does the other guy not have to show his hand when he calls it all in according to the rules that was not an actual all in <laughs> Believe it or not, this person's name was close enough. <laughs> <laughs> it was not an actual all-in. Yeah. They can't re re enforce that rule unless it is a true all-in. Oh. Like this, from Asolenka. Asolenka. So Asolenka, with a little limp trap here. Star Strag in the chat. The gulp has been one of my go-to tells for a long time. I've called it light and been so right so many times using that tell. There you go. One of the best we've ever done it. Been in the game a long time. Information possible. Mini EPT. Next event about to start in the next... No. One hour from now. One hour and five minutes from now. $5.50 8 max turbo PKO. And if you make it to 8.15 p.m., there's also a $2.20 heads up zoom total KO. I'm jumping in that right now, guys. What is that, I'm by doing the way? It. What's doing a it. zoom total KO? So you you play heads up, but when you fold, you're instantly sat with another, with another player. So yeah. it's the zoom format. And yeah. then also, there's no prize pool. You play purely for knockout value and nothing else. So it's play money chips. 
Not really. So you buy a tournament. You buy the, <laughs> so there's no prize pool. It's only for 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 collecting bounties. So so if you buy it for a hundred bucks, there's yeah. a, there's there's a hundred bucks in your head, and yeah. every time you knock a player out, that's what you get from that individual. Got it. So but it's, it's also not progressive. a progressive. It is a progressive. Sorry, also. no, it's total. Excuse me. Total. It's total, but it is progressive. Who's so, on first? Because. <laughs> I think I get it. I'm actually not trying to troll you specifically. So, so, so if you buy it for 100 bucks, So there's no finishing first, second, third, any of that. It's just knocking people out. Right. Sorry. So if you buy it for 100 bucks and you knock that player out, you get 50 bucks, but then yeah. the other 50 goes in your head, so it's still progressive, Got but it. there's just no prize pool, therefore it's total and nuts. Is there any play to this whatsoever, or is it just... It loads. Loads of play, okay. yeah. Th those, those are actually some of my favorite tournaments on okay. Stars because they're super soft and very fast, and people just aren't great at heads up poker, Joe. We've got quite a hand shaping up here on the feature table. Carrera, Roberto Carrera, kicked things off onto the gun with ace 10 suited. Now forced to fold to the three bet from set of issues. It's a pit of issues. And Hattie Alesmar once again just calling with a Sub-20 big blind stack and a solid pocket pair. Looking for a clean flop, I guess. And that is not <coughs> clean. Top pair, top kicker once again for Ace King. Asmar checks, and here comes the C bet from Sapita. Oh, geez, Al Asmar, not quite done with this hand. Nyania says check fold and lost one third stack. Ah, uh, that was not a check fold. That was a check call. Thank you for your comment. Another deuce on the turn. So Al Asmar has a full house draw now. He's got a full house draw. That's true. He's actually got two full house draws. Yeah, one of them no good. One of them no good. Now Lasmar's checked again. Hanging around, hanging around. 184,000 in the middle, Al Asmar with 101K back. <coughs> and that looks like 100,000 bet. Snap call. 125 was the bet. And snap call by El Asmar, who has one card to hit, a two outer. Yeah, took a stand, just found the ace king here. Honestly, I know it looks a little bit silly when he's got the Ochos here and the other guy's ace king, but I think the chip leader can bully you here in this situation, and you could be making the right call for the time, too. So I applaud the bravery. It he's going to need to see. Should be flop though, right? Well, yeah, that's we've okay. had this conversation. As, as played. Yeah, as played. Okay. We've had this conversation with El Asmar before. Al Asmar has made the pay jump. 71 players remaining. And the river is a queen. No help for Al Asmar. How do you do? How do you Al Asmar eliminated in 71st place? Yeah, GG's. 15K did find that ladder, Joe. Yeah, 15 even. 15 flat. Don't give me no change, Dila. <laughs> hoy 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 saying Joker does it again. Arunas Sata Sapita Vicious up to nearly a hundred and ninety big blinds. Sapita Vicious. So Pita Vicious, that sounds good to me. 189, 189 of the biggest blinds they got at the moment. Back in the mix. Yeah, pocket sevens. Pocket sevens, first to act. Mar 
Marigal, aka DJ Paulie D, is three batting, ace 10 off from the hijack against an under the gun open to 45,000. Maybe thinks the chip leader is getting a little out of line. Sure seems good. And it does not elicit a fold. I kind of feel like even though ace 10 is in position, you're kind of in no man's a little bit here. No man's land a little bit when you get called. Pre-flop. Hit an ace. You don't even know if you're good. Yeah, power position, though. And that is a set of sevens for Sapida. One of the best feelings in poker. Calling a three-bet, flopping a set. Yeah. Feels just grand. King seven deuce. Driest board ever. Marigal feeling compelled to continue. Only 26,000, which is going to help a little bit, stop a little of the bleeding here. Yeah, these are our two table chip leaders. Honestly, I feel like if you want to win the whole stack, you're going to have to check raise right here, right now. I don't know how many check raise bluffs you have here, though, so I really don't know the spot well enough to know what to do. I think a lot of pe people just sort of default to the check raise at the stack depth, which I think is probably what I would do. We do see it here. Welly asking, is that Tyson from Survivor in the hoodie? It does look a little bit like Tyson Apostle. I'll give you that. You will see on later. Hmm? That's we'll a, see later. You will see. Ace of diamonds. Sapita can do no wrong right now. <laughs> Up to almost 200 big blinds. 199. Have you guys done this already with, with Sapita Vicious? Have we talked about Has anyone gone through and argued about who their favorite joker is? I think... Uh, Pokestar's dragging the chat said it was Jared Leto. I don't know if he's trolling with that answer. I don't think it's a terrible answer. There's lots of great choices for jokers. Yeah, Mark Hamill's up there for me. Nicholson, I think, is going to be a lot of people, but I'm, I'm a Cesar Romero fan. Cesar Romero from the Batman, from the 1960s Batman TV show. I think he was pretty great. Keith Ledger also, I mean, it's, that's a tough one. Oh, I was about to really embarrass myself and say, are we not going to talk about Jim Carrey? But he was the Riddler. What he am I talking Riddler. about? Right. Jeez, I caught myself there, chat. <laughs> Can you imagine? Pokestar Strike says not trolling. I don't think Keith, I don't think Jared Leto's a terrible choice. I don't think there are any bad choices. Worst Joker ever. What's weird is only one person so far has said Joaquin Phoenix, and he won the Academy Award for it. <laughs> I guess Heath Ledger did also. Posthumously, as they say. Does this guy ever miss? I think uh, Gun to My Head, which is kind of fitting for the Joker. I would uh, probably go Mark Hamill, personally. Let's go. Move it along. Three ways to the flop. Three King seven six. Pair of kings for Goal. Pair of sixes for Astralenka. And a mm, back door straight draw. I'm trying to find something good here, but it's not not much going on for Sapida. Salenka betting 12,000 right into the top pair of Goel. Well, 
obviously not folding. That is a raise. Were you the one telling me yesterday that you got to have some raises with uh, top pair, good kicker? Yes. I was also the one that told you to, you should do it with combinations like king, queen, uh, king, jack. And that's how you do it. No sweat, taking it down, nice hand. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? Label guy reminding us. Great line though from the Joker, from the Jack Nicholson Joker for sure. <coughs> I think that a lot of people saying Heath Ledger, and I'm not gonna. Obviously, I think there's a lot of great performances there. I think what really helps Heath Ledger is that The Dark Knight is such a good movie. It is a good one. It's it's not like some of the other Joker appearances were like the Joker's pretty good, but the movie's pretty eh. 16, 17, 18. Or movie or cartoon or whatever it is. The Dark Knight is such a perfect, pure action movie. And Marigal has decided to open this with Jack 10 suited. Sapira. 6 5 suited. And Sapira out flops the Jack 10. Still plenty of ways for Jack 10 to catch up, and that is one of them. 10 on the turn. 10 on the turn will do it. So 11% for the Joker. Bachelor Cooks asks, why are we talking about movies? Well, to be fair, you're not talking about anything because you banned. Thank you for your question. Don't worry, guys. I'm asking ChatGPT to sort this out for us. It's, it's, it's actually not far off. Is that your thing now? You're just like the ChatGPT guy? I, You're I, just like, whatever it is, I'm just going to run it through ChatGPT? I'm not sure if anyone can be the ChatGPT guy. I think that's kind of the whole point of ChatGPT. <laughs> they pretty much hit all the ones we did, though. Mark Hamill was their second favorite. Who was number one? Heath Ledger? Heath Ledger, yeah. And they give us a good reason for why, too. He completely transformed himself for the role, and his intense and unpredictable performance was chillingly effective. All right, Alexander Shulko versus Li Zhang. Online qualifier from France is Li Zhang, his first ever live tournament. Looks like he's paying off Shulko who I think was also an online qualifier in the Bahamas. Shulko, the big winner in the Bahamas. Taking down the PSPC. A little uh, Cinderella story versus Cinderella story confrontation there. This guy just winning every pot. Let Li Zheng have his turn, Shulko. Come on. You want a massive tournament. 35? <coughs> Let someone else have a turn. Back to the main stage. Marigal versus Sapida. Sapida behind, but with a little more equity than Marigal with the <coughs> ten of clubs. Sapovicius, just unstoppable right now. Yeah, man, playing good, running good. 
Feels like it's his day today. Hand number 92 coming up. Parker Talbot, a.k.a. Tonka. Tonka, Tonka. On the button, ace nine. You never pulled once. <laughs> uh, Solenka is going to defend 6-3 suited. I see a six, and I see two clubs. Parker with the ace of clubs wastes no time betting 12,000 into this flop. <coughs> How bad am I that I would want to raise here if I had 6 3 suited and, and talk a C bet into me? I don't, I is think, that bad? I think check raising a pair and a flush draw is usually never bad. Okay. But you have to sort of consider what kind of a situation you're in because when you're check raising there and you can generate lots of fold equity that's cool yeah if you check raising you don't generate too much fold equity and you don't have a plan for a later street and they call and then you got oh no I, ha I have no plan okay yeah, yeah well yeah. and and in uh -huh. that case might be better to lean on the air on the side of caution usually my plan if for most of my life was to make my flush or to improve in some way and then i don't so now i like to check raise <laughs> and just win it on the flop if i can but you, you know what would be cool is if you check jam the turn here joe because if your opponent is a uh, is an aggressive opponent, they're going to barrel so get another flop bet. So you get one more bet, and then you generate fold equity, and then you also have enough chips in the pot where you're going to be like, all right, cool. If I get there, I get there. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, except that I and I'm not saying this is right, but my rationale is I go, well, <laughs> man, they're not going to believe me that I just hit this seven. They're probably going to call me with like their yeah their queen jack it's, it's a tricky one because the six can just be the best hand on the turn you don't necessarily want to turn that much showdown into a bluff but you know if you ever think you might convince like a seven that's trying to get value on the turn to fold because they're worried about the queen or something now all of a mm -hmm. sudden you got a little 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 cheeky spot in your hands okay thank you time bang chip going in don't let it fool you don't let it fool you You've almost fooled me and this bet of 42,000 maybe uh, is going to go the way that Nick Walsh uh, has advised me to go. One more time. It is a raise. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, maybe not. Excuse me. My counting's a little off. Just a call. And the board pair is on the river, so it does break out for improving on 6-3 clubs. However, pair of sixes is the best hand. This is a really tough card to find a third barrel if you're Talbot. Deuce of hearts. Yeah, plus you have you have showdown with your ace as well, so it's, I don't think it's a situation where you continue. You're going to be eating some flush draws that don't contain the pair. I wonder what would have happened if we saw a club, though, and Asulenka finds a check, because that seems like a spot where Tonka might try and rep the nut flush if given the opportunity in position as a third barrel. Lots of interesting dynamics there. The deuce on the board, the paired deuce river, just not a, a very cool one for either player. Uh, obviously, the six quite happy to get to showdown and find out they have the best of it, which is why they enjoy that flat of the turn as opposed to a check raise. Important announcement. I know we got a lot of new people watching the stream today, and I know we also have a lot of um, idiots. So um, <laughs> we're operating on a 30-minute delay, okay? So if you happen to be reading spoilers in re real time from someone's Twitter or someone's yeah. Facebook or Poker News, or maybe even you've matched with them on Tinder and they told you what's going on in this tournament. If you write it into the chat, we're going to ban you immediately. It's not even like a thing that we can, uh, because you're ruining it for everybody else. Um, even if you do a fake spoiler, even if you, as a joke, you write, so-and-so is out. We don't know if it's real or not, so we're just going to ban you before people can see it. So try to uh, keep that in mind. Do not, do not make any predictions. Do not spoil the stream. And uh, thank you for your cooperation. Joe, we might see another three bet here. King Jack of clubs. Right. Chip leader applying pressure to Goel, that UTG open. Picking his spot so well. This guy's really flexing. Love to see it. 
Goel here has about 50 bigs behind. Probably still wants to call here at least in order to potentially. Never mind, he's not even going to have the chance. Big blind wakes up with queens, and Yikes. he has 29 big blinds. This will be an all-in for show. Gadekas Olmecas. Get on our feet. Here gonna, it comes. I was going to say the sixes probably want to try and set mime here, but they're not going to get the chance. Gadekas must commit the rest. He is all in. <laughs> And Sapita is asking for a count. This seems optimistic. There's only room for one Lithuanian at this table. And it's a root. Excuse me. A ruinous. <laughs> that was a bad time for a burp. A, a ruinous. Boom. That's what I get for eating vegetables. And Sapita Vicius does fold. Makes the fold. Chad, if you go, if you say something like, yeah, Joe Stapleton bust, you banned. All right? No memes when it comes to spoilers. Uh-oh. Hashtag embrace the squeak. I do want to address a comment from David111 who says, not saying I'll make it, but I've always wondered how I can get up to the feature table with the ledge being in a wheelchair. Any thoughts? Yeah, it's interesting. So here, I don't know how they do it in other places, but here in Monaco, there is a catapult. And what we do is we'll just fire you. No, there's stairs right in front, but there's a backstage area, there's ramps, there's all kinds of ways we could do it. We would make it happen for you, don't worry. Unless you want to take the catapult. In which case, I'd be down to give it a shot. <laughs> Vladik in the chat says, Nick is bluffing 100%. Guess what, Vladik? You banned. Thanks for coming, buddy. And Arunas. Sapitavicius back in action. Raising from early position with ace nine. Marigal is going to call with King Jack. Gadakis once again with a decent hand in the small blind, but is going to let it go with the action that happened ahead of time. David said he's down for the catapult. So. Question is, can we take the catapult without a wheelchair? Can you can you park in a handicapped space without a wheelchair? <laughs> no. Three ways to this flop. Goel did defend the big blind. Does have live cards. Ace, queen, queen, two spades. That's a top pair for Sapita. And another spade on the turn. That's good news for Marigal. River cards checks through again. Is the jack of spades? That's a king high flush, Joe. Yeah, Marigal gets there. It wasn't all bad. I cannot win. <laughs> Wait, was that a was that a, just a fold? <laughs> I think he just hope and folded. I know you're not supposed to do that. Like, it's not against the rules, but obviously, like, you don't know what could happen. The other two players could buck, and you keep your whatever it is. I love a good open fold. <laughs> oh, Joe. I, I respect it. I respect the hell out of it. Yeah, they both have a flush. Yeah, Marigal is going to get paid on the 65K river bet. That's the first little piece we've seen taken out of Sapita. Vladik, <laughs> once again, guys, Nick is not bluffing 100%. Guess what? You banned again. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Vladik. Oh, nice little smile there. Kind of, kind of a joker smile there for a minute. A little bit of a cheeky grin. I would, I would very much respect a joker laugh out of there too, like. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Well, you may be wondering how we've gotten down to 60. Oh, that's 68 players. Arseny Karmachki has been dispatched. Out in 69th. And he's out to kill some vampires. There goes Gerald Karlick. <laughs> Cashing for 15,000 euros. Solenko with 10 8 suited. So MCOC loser says that's not how the Joker laughs, Joe. And then level here, and then half an hour I think of all of the jokers, it must have been close to one of them. Um, I think it was. I think it was pretty good. <laughs> good day, is three batting to fifty-two thousand. Actually, that left might have been closer. <laughs> all right, we do see the three bet from position. Love this from Gadekis. Um Swalinka, just a little bit. A little bit of time here. Ten eight of hearts is a bit wide to be defending three bets with. Ten jack suited. Probably you always want to come along here. This wouldn't be the most radical defend I've ever seen in my life. I think it's okay. I don't think it's advisable when we're sitting on some pretty hefty pay jumps and we're deep into EPT Monte Carlo. If you want to avoid the variance, yeah, makes the fold fair enough. Nathan Ship writes in on YouTube to say, I don't get why they're showing a table full of unknowns when they have a legit celebrity their viewership is going nuts asking for. I believe you when you say you don't get it. He was on the feature table for three hours earlier. We must change the tables for fairness. <coughs> also, this is not a table of unknowns. Just because they're unknown to you doesn't mean they're unknown. Thank you for your comment. Yeah, I'm sure nobody likes to see Tonka at the table either. Do, am I right, guys? Who wants to see that guy at the feature table? Smooth fold. Ace two suited for Mirigal. He is one of our chip leaders, definitely wants to play this one. Oh, I forgot, you banned. The part that gets me riled up there, Nick, I know I got a little heated there. It gets me riled up. Like, who just shows up and thinks they know better than the people that are just like, I'm a, I'm a, I understand how this works. <laughs> I'm a person who should be listened to. You guys realize every time we get him in one of these states, we're pushing him closer to becoming the real life Joker, right? <laughs> you guys get that. This is his origin story. You're seeing it happen. I've been watching poker for five seconds. Why? I have all the answers. <laughs> this is. This is the new voice of Joker, guys. <laughs> Going to a flop, guys. Ace 10 currently dominating the defend from the big blind, actually the best of it. Quick check from Marigal. Doesn't want to mess around on 985 here. Five of diamonds in the turn. They both kind of have a similar, similar level of showdown here, so it's going to probably go check, check again. Yeah, love to see it. The river. Uh-oh. What happened here? Chop? Uh-oh. Check, check. Yeah, well, how about this for you for you people who want a legit celebrity? You ever thought you'd hear some singing? This hand ends in a chop, and you know what they say. Everyone, Everyone loves a chop pot. pot. <coughs> that should cool off the Magnus Carlsen fans. Yeah, that'll, that's that'll right. That'll satiate them. Yeah, you don't see that in the chess streams. I mean, you... You came from Magnus Carlsen, he's not here, but then you hear something like that, and you're like, oh, hold on a second. Magnus who? <laughs> I don't like this word, soft, Michael. No one is getting bad soft commentators. you banned. There you go. Kind of a two birds, one stone situation there. We really weeded him out. I got to prove him wrong by proving him right. <laughs> and number 97, guys. Blinds are still 4K, 8K with an 8K ante. 
65 players remain. Aswalenka, UTG plus one. Very nice playable hand here. Does have 31 big blinds. Why you said your big chips? Oh, they were mine. Mm -hmm. And soon but they will now. be again. <laughs> Parker has a kind of hand that wouldn't mind defending the big blind once in a while. More? Instead, he decides to tree bet. I love a good tree bet. Love a tree bet. Asolanka's got so much swag. I haven't seen swag like this since Ola Shemian. When you were a kid and you would leave your Nintendo on while the screen was turned off and then it would get burned into the screen. Yep. That's what this Bowman Paris looks like to me. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little exchange there. What do you mean, your chips? Not usually, huh? Oh, they're in, some of them are in Tonka stack now. No, come on, not that, not this. Oh man. Well, at least he cashed. David Li Zhang, online qualifier, first ever live tournament, eliminated, but does cash for fifteen thousand euros. What a guy! What a guy! Sick run though. Love to see it. What about cool. qualifiers going deep? Love that. Nice run. Hey, <coughs> Joe. You yeah. Know you know what's happening in 30 minutes? 30 minutes. What's happening? Mini uh, EPT Monte Carlo number 11, $5.50, no limit holding eight max turbo progressive KO added scoop tickets. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like the first guy. 15K guaranteed. <laughs> it's good or I feel like it's only 25 minutes. That's how long it took to read the title of that tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the prize pool, though. Man, yeah. And that's, that's just with the. That's just the price. That's the pool. guarantee. That's not even. That's not even all the. That's all not the, even all the added sweet, scoop sweet tickets. tickets. Yeah. yeah. Sweet, sweet tickets. Well, I'll tell you what, kids. If you play this event and you want to give us little updates in the chat, not bad beats, but just like, hey, I've got this many chips. I'm ranked thirty seventh of five hundred. Whatever, whatever. I'll read them out. I'll read them out. I like to keep up with you and what you're up to. Yes, you're right, uh, Pikachu. I meant kids in the the young, hip people sort of way. Adults only. You didn't mean kids as in like baby no. goats? I did not mean baby goats either. Oh, okay. I meant it the way I mean my babies, which I don't mean actual babies. I just mean people I'm fond of. I thought he was making reference to the goat farm. Queens, UTG, Gadekas. Like this, Stewie saying that uh, Stewie is one forty eighth of nineteen ninety four in the three dollar event. That's right, Xanadu. Oh, I'm not no. actually your uncle's daddy. And oh, speaking no. of which, somebody is about to get spanked. It's Marigal, 159 big blinds. Gadek is the effective stack. 42 big blind after making that min raise or slightly above. What's that DJ Paula D song? Beat that beat. Beat them queens. Someone oh, is going to get beat here. Either a good beat or a bad beat. This is a gross one, you guys. It's 
So we are at that really awkward stacked up, Joe. 42 big blinds behind here. I feel as though there's a You don't chance. think it's awkward when you have this hand. You got queens. Yeah, you're feeling pretty good you're about stacking great. off here. Throws a time bank chip in there. Not to be confused with a regular chip. Honestly, what do you do? Four back stack off, I guess, is what you're meant to do. Yeah, I feel like this is think about it a while, stack off. Sounds about right, but at this stage in the tournament, I don't know, do players ever ever just hazard a flat and try and avoid some variance from the ace king? But again, that's just such a weird way to play the hand. Don't think Yeah, I think you're just gonna get it in here. Can I get a call? Marigold asking for a count. Yeah, of course. It realizes that the count doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is a big spot, guys. Like, you can appreciate the pressure Marigal's under here. Domination time. He did, he did also say he thinks he has to call. It wasn't like he was trying to be a slow roller here. Yeah. Gudekis in big, big trouble. It could be good day kiss for Gudekis. Can Gadekis make us a hand? Can we get 25 minute break? Well, we want five minutes more. Run it, dealer. Base 5 4. Nobody's big pair cracked yet. Nobody dead yet. Gadekis needs to hit a two outer. He's got two shots at it. Now has got one. Only a queen will do it, Joe. One to come. Can he hit the cue? It's paint, but it's a little low. It's supposed. How much can we raise? 25? Kadekis eliminated midway through day three at the hands of Maduka Marigal. Raise and Darius Kadekis cashes for $15,000. Next pay jump isn't until 55th <laughs> place. So a little ways to go still on that. <laughs> well, part of the reason why we weren't showing legit celebrity Magnus Carlsen is because he has been eliminated. Jammed fours and Mark Telcher's tens held and just before he went broke telcher thanked him for playing and told him he was growing the game and i concur pretty cool to have magnus carlson here despite the fact that some of you got a little too excited and maybe it'll just become more of a fixture and it won't be such a freak show in chat i would love to see more magnus carlson on the streets yeah. absolutely great guy Great representative for chess and hopefully now for poker. Now we don't even get the 20. Unbelievable. <laughs> Parker lamenting the fact that this break is going to be cut into slightly by this final hand. Okay, let's go for break, guys. Come on. 18. 18,000. Great. Parker raises King Jack's okay. snap called by Maduka Marigal with 7 6 suited. Esselink in the small, King 10. Tell you what. This wouldn't be the craziest three bet ever. Yeah, I think you just call here and then you let the big blind squeeze and then go to break. <laughs> Do we get the bonus? No, no. That's like yeah. a 29 yeah. big blinds behind. He has a really nice hand to, to squeeze with here. If he so chooses. There you go, pal. You got your wish. I was going to say, given Parker's desire to go on break, he, this might actually work a lot more often than otherwise. I, I think Parker cares about chips more than breaks, but we'll see. So nice. He's boring. checked it. He has ditched the hand. Asolenka picking up the last hand of the level. 
We are going to stick with this featured table for at least one more level today. We've got two more levels to play. Break's going to be around 18 minutes. These are the chip stacks as we head to that break. When we get back, blinds of 5,000, 10,000 with a 10,000 big blind ante. Maduka Marigal narrowly eclipsing Sapitaviticus. But Parker Talbot still in the mix as well. More from EPT Monte Carlo in just eight under 18 minutes. Lines up to 15,000, 30,000 with a 3K ante. As always, I would like to remind the audience that the true first place prize on the EPT <laughs> is the friendships you make along the way. That and the money. Fold around to Annette. That is an all in from Annette Oberstad, 353K in the middle. Do you think she looked at her cards? Oh, sick. I want a hand. I want a hand. I want a hand today. And Annette yes. won her first hand of the day. Please. Second, you so happy. Stole the blinds no, I didn't. I didn't. I promise. First hand. First hand. Okay. Yes. Now, you guys you guys you guys <laughs> now I can lose. No, now it's all right. <laughs> At least you won one. Yeah. Well, you almost killed two journalists. Almost fell over the ropes when I went in. And Annette raises it all in. <laughs> <laughs> What's the minimum age you have to be to play in Monte Carlo? 18? Yes. Yeah, I wish. So, Annette Eberstead, 18 in four months or something, probably at this point? I believe Annette Eberstead had just turned 18 when she won the World Series of Poker Europe, which would have been in 2007. So, she's the ripe old age of 20 here, probably. She has a second place finish on the EPT in an event that was not live streamed or televised. Are you kidding me? Yeah, the last time we went to Dublin, no cameras. Eventually, cameras were allowed into the city of Dublin, but it took until late 2012. And that's going to re-raise all in from the small blind. So Ludovic opens with nines. Annette shoves with ace-eight. Ludovic calls. Out of nine. So when you bank your he's only got a one out of it. All right, take it easy, suck up. Yeah, I don't know. Is the spades on the door card? Anyone on the nace? Uh, Nobody on the nace. I don't want them to save the hand on the nace. He's so alive. <laughs> yeah, it's the spades door card. And that is the at risk player. Ludovic has recovered. Let's see the flop. Personally, I would like Annette to stick around a little longer. Flop is five, seven, ten, all spades. It's the ace of clubs in Annette's hand, not the ace of spades. There's the ace of spades. Annette's now taking the lead with her aces. And allegedly, there's only one nine left. She's looking to just dodge a spade. Queen of hearts, and Annette's going to double through. Oh my god, I can't believe I hit that. <laughs> wow. Double up for Oberstadt. Oh, that's so sick. What a legend that was at the time. <laughs> so then I'll get all in against someone else instead. See, we'll, we'll have some fun now. They all fold around. Well, I mean, I just fold and then you can shove on him. I mean, I just remember during that period from 2007 to 2009, all the results she was achieving on the live circuit in Europe, and she was still too young to go to Vegas and compete in the World Series. That actually did a lot to add to her allure. Like, everyone, you know, in the States was aware of her. But yeah. I was like, she can't even play here. Like, da 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 And then her first appearance at the World Series was such a big deal, the, the Vegas World Series. I should say. So this is blind v blind. Army Bearer with the 8 5. Daniel Zink with 10 7 off. Unraced. They go to the flop, which is 9 6 6. And with his gut shot straight draw, Zinc will bet 40k. 
Army Bearer has a straight draw of his own and calls. Both check. Oh, what's going on? Is there eight of clubs? Okay, well, that's the straight for Zenk. Army Bearer has paired his eight. An eight could be the best hand. Yes. Pretty sure. Daniel Zink is in the band Weedus. 95. No, excuse me. 125, then. Yeah. 125,000 is the bet from Daniel. I think blind on blind, even though an eight could be the best hand, you could be up against a six that plays it this way. You could be up against a club that plays it this way. People play pretty tricky. I don't know. What bluffs? I mean, I guess there's plenty of bluffs he could have as well. Good call. Straight. Daniel shows seven ten. Straight's good. Also, there's straights. I forgot to mention that. Daniel takes the pot. How much? One twenty six. One twenty five. Last pass. Oh no. Ugh. Beating himself up over that call. Yeah. <sighs> Ouch. <clears throat> oh, wow. Is that Red Bull Robbie dealing at the feature table? Sure is. Cool. Let's <laughs> close it around to Annette. <coughs> King four oh. suited. Please. No one busts on this hand. <coughs> oh. Patient zero. Well, this is classic Annette Oberstad. Opens to 65k. With King four, Queen nine suited for Matt Woodward. James, you know, with this low resolution, it's possible she thinks she has Ace King suited. What's his excuse? <laughs> Two queens of clubs. He's called on the button. Zink has folded the small. Roster folds the big. Heads up to the flop. Two of spades. Well, it's a queen high flop, but it's all spades. Second nut flush for Annette. This is, this is awful for Woodward. It reminds me of the old joke. Why does Edward Woodward have so many D's in his name? <laughs> Go on. Because Ewa Woo Wah sounds ridiculous. <laughs> Lower. A call. Man announced All in oh, and a call. And it shows King High Flush draw. King High Flush of spades. Queen nine for Matt, Queen of Clubs. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's also a, a flush draw, Neil. It's fine. Nope, she can no still nice. hit a bigger flush. Likely to be drawing dead on the turn. But Annette has a king high flush on the flop. Hey, three times out of a hundred, he's gonna get there. Turn card is a nine. Of okay, nine. now he does have outs. Annette still she has it. to dodge a queen or a nine on the river. Not like this. Jack of spades. And that's gonna double through. She did have a flush draw. So Oberstad. Doubles up. Sweat. Always. 
live I'm poker is rigged. You should only play online. <laughs> Exactly the same thing happened in London. I got it all in with Annie Duke. I flopped the flush. She had top pair. Of course, she double pairs on the turn and misses the river. I don't know if it is a terrible shove with a net stack and the fact that she'd probably have to get it in with the naked ace of spades or something. Seems pretty reasonable to me. Looks like Ludovic Lakai has been balanced off the feature table. I love the fact that he's got a little posse following him around everywhere. What's the French word for entourage? Too good. <laughs> Too good. And that opening here with Ace Ten of Hearts raises to 90k. 90,000 gets folded around to Chris. Did he just fold aces? It's a 50,000 chip raised to Alexander in the big blind. Hey, this ain't lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> Ordeal. Ace, queen of diamonds for Alexander Morozov. All in. Alexander announces re-raise. All in. How much is that? That's eight. That's eight? Eight fifteen. Man, oh man, folding. Eight fifty-four. Suited ace. That's a lot of chips. Not easy to do. total. And that's just built for stack back up. Raise, and that's gonna pass. Alexander Good fold. Structure, right? so a lot of chips. <coughs> well, it's just like 800k. It's like two thirds of my stack. It is a lot of chips. It's not a lot of chips compared to the blinds. A lot of chips, though. I think 800,000 will always be a lot of chips. I don't care where we're at. Yeah. <laughs> Such a beautiful place. My boss is from there, so she's considering ah. it. <laughs> that is so awesome. Daniel's under the gun. Good. Pocket aces for Daniel Zink. You sure you got time to call the action with all the chatting going on, Neil? I know. His kind of little chit-chat with Annette is, at best, distracting. At worst, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. It's around to Annette on the button. We should try and track him down, by the way. I kind of feel that once we've wrapped on EPT Retro, he would be the perfect guest for the podcast. Yeah, especially since he's not on the tour anymore. Maybe he can really spill his guts. Okay, Nat. You just made a really good fold. What in the world? Remember that story about her uh, covering up her whole cards and just yep. playing position? Yeah. Well... Sometimes this happens. That's right, Kaiser Soze. Online Annette is coming. Re-raises to 240,000. Queen five off on the button. And if Zing knows his this customer, this is a great spot to just call. Yeah, what a day this kid's having. People just walking into the nuts. How much money do you have? Daniel announces re-raise, all in, and that's going to pass. Daniel takes the pot. What's mine? I feel like with her stack size, she's going to get shoved on pretty often when she does that. We're moving uh, Daniel out of the EC.
Line's currently 8.16. There was a raise from Pantling, a three bet from Loden. Pantling called the three bet out of position. We're going to the flop. King 8-6, Johnny flops a straight draw. Pantling really should be tightening up now that he's sitting to the right of the chip leader, but here we have him raise calling pre-flop with ace tray. Loden continues for 76,000. And we know Pantling to be a pretty stubborn creature. I would expect a C-bet to win this almost every time. Hang on a second. I would expect a C-bet to win this almost every time. Not this time. Pantling raises to 214,000. Johnny's draw is super disguised. He's probably going to stick around. The weird thing is, although Loden is the statistical favorite, Pantling currently has the best hand with ace high. Yeah, 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 yeah. Semantics. He's bluffing with the best hand. Loden is counting out the call. We're going to the turn. And this pot is getting huge. Queen of spades. Pantling will bet again. 200,000. Wow, I actually love this bet from Pantling. When Johnny calls the flop, he looks super strong. So this bet looks even stronger, especially betting into the spade. With no spade in his hand, Johnny knows he could have dirty outs, if not already drawing dead. Loden folds. All right, all right. You like the turn, Andrew? Yeah, I can't bluff either. Otherwise. Pantling now second in yeah. chips. That's a good turn. Well, the action is on Andrew Pantling after a button raise from Jake Cody and a call from Freddie Deeb in the small blind. See how he carries on here. This is a squeeze, a three bet to 175,000. Cody's out. Deeb not folding so quickly. Seems like Deeb may be in a bit of a free fall now. Calling a min raise out of position with ace five is a little sketch, but calling a three bet with it is a bigger mistake than ordering a hot dog at a movie theater. Heads up to the flop. Queen nine four, two diamonds, pantling seven, still good. This flop could get Freddie a free card at least. Check. Checks to the razor. And pantling will check behind. Deuce of diamonds on the turn gives Freddie a gut shot and the nut flush draw. Other than an ace, I don't know that a better card could have hit for Freddie. Check. Except for maybe a greeting card that says, don't call three bets out of position with ace five. Love, Joe. Pantling checks a second time. River card for free. It's a five. Freddie now with a pair. Pantling with plenty of showdown value. Freddie's betting 150,000. He might actually think his five is good. Not only does Freddie think it's good, but I think he thinks he's value betting. I don't think Pantley can fold two sevens getting this price. He doesn't fold. He calls. You got a five. Five. Turn your cards over, brah. Five no good. Ship the chips to Pantling. I said I got a five. Why you go like this? I want to see your hand. Well, you can see my hand, but I mean, I said I got a five. You make it sound like it's good. Okay. That was almost an apology. You shake your head like it's good. I said I got a five. I wanted you to turn over your hand. I was waiting. Yeah, just say short. Or you could say that's no good. Yeah, or say it's no good. I want to see your hand. Knew Daniel couldn't stay out of it. I don't think he meant to slow roll you or nothing. No, but I mean, I said five three times. I've been sitting here all day waiting to slow roll you. <laughs> that's not the point. You're a player. I mean, you know how it goes. Just say five is no good. Freddie, you think I'm lying to you? Why do you even say I five? Said, You're supposed to turn over your hand. That's the no, because call. sometimes, like, if I play, you know, you say a five, it's no good. It's just a respecting. You, but you're out. You have every right to wait. Yeah, I wait. I but you can wrong. say you can turn it over or muck it. Yeah, I didn't do anything wrong. Hello, my babies, and welcome back to the Poker Stars European Tour Poker Tour presented by Monte Carlo Casino. Continuing coverage of. EPT Monte Carlo, day three. Joe Stapleton, Maria Ho. Hello. And our feature, come on, Joe. <laughs> our feature table returns. It's because I'm getting ready. I'm getting warmed up to say names like Maduka Marigal, 163 big blinds. Arunas Sapitavicious, 145 big blinds. Kiro Asolenka. 
tongue twisters. And of course, Parker Talbot. Parker Stars Team Pro. No choice for puking. Maybe they're going to get some bants going. Is it a new guy? New guy. He looks a bit scary. Joe Astema. Huh? Excuse me, Jose Fresh Astema. Meat. <laughs> Let's put New him guy. in the blender, boys. <laughs> wow. Get him. Okay, not me, though. And Astema with pocket queens. Welcome to the table. Do you know what they call queens in this part of the world? What? Wren. <coughs> Wren means queen. Mm. You know what they call Jax? What? Mm -hmm. Stimpy. <laughs> Stimpy 7-7. Seven, seven. Queen's still good. Same? Same. Five every day. Unless uh, go to final table or whatever. If yeah. done, change it as long as there's not like an up or a dog involved. <laughs> I've always got to tread lightly. I, I got you with the you old did. up dog. It's yeah. so embarrassing. Yeah, probably. It's a career highlight like for me. Or something. I'm sorry it had to be you. No, it, it, but it had yeah, to be me then because the, I'm the only one dumb enough to fall for it. Reach, right? It's kind of like if you bust like me in the main, like level? if you got it in like I'm Kings against my aces, you'd be like, I'm sorry it had to be you, but... I needed that. Yeah. We'll be 18. Jose Astema takes down the first pot. Blinds 5,000, 10,000 with the 10,000 big blind ante. 61 players remaining of this nearly record breaking field. Somehow tied the field size from 2018. Weird. Your parents play the numbers growing up? Do they have that in California? Um, the daily lotto? Yeah, not my parents, my grandmother. That yeah. was her favorite thing about being in America. Oh, it was playing the lotto? Yeah. She was all yeah, there's, about a, it. there's famously no gambling in Asia. She always did quick picks, though. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I feel oh, like the you daily, gotta you got to pick a number you feel good about. Yeah. Parker raising from early position. King of diamonds in his hand. Steal my card. Parker folds 10 9 under the gun. <laughs> I'm bummed that Asalenka's not wearing the shirt from yesterday. It's a great shirt. It was a cool shirt, but I mean, it, when you wear a shirt like that, everyone knows you wore the same shirt two days in a row. Yeah, but it's still incredibly useful today. You think that he might not want to check raise the turn today or do something plus EV? I will wear the same shirt multiple nights in a row if I have a good stand-up show. Yeah, it's it's superstition, right? Superstition, and in a, in a more scientific way, I'm like, there's something about this shirt that worked for my image, for what I wanted to get across. You know, so it's like part hocus pocus, but a little bit chaos theory. <laughs> so Peter Vicious. Forced to lower the joker hoodie. Looks like he's been sweating a little bit. King four in the big blind. He's gonna defend against the ace five. Actually going on the offense with the three bet to 70K.
just attacking a late position open with that king blocker. Tough to continue as Goel. For now, we have to keep on playing. For now, I was wondering, uh, is Magnus Carlson still in? <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, I'm you know what? I'm glad I'm you bummed. asked, actually. No, no, no. I'm glad you asked. No is the answer to your question. <laughs> Magnus Carlson is not still in. What about uh, Mike Watson? He's still in? He got any uh, chips? Yeah, he was, has a massive stack. He might I be a chip know. leader. <laughs> I've embraced it, though. I'm taking a new approach. I meditated. And I've decided that I'm rooting for him genuinely. Do you consider sitting somewhere with a voodoo doll meditation? At this point, I feel like if he wins, it's kind of like I won, right? Because my chips are in his stack. I played a part in him amassing this huge stack. You get the assist on this one. Exactly. You made it small. 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 You just tried to steal my big one. A nice suited card. You have to play that card. I didn't expect him to go all in. Kirill Asrlenka, fourth in chips, is going to start this hand under the gun. It's been a little bit of back and forth between Marigal and Sapita Vicious. Close to getting richer. Five more people. Hmm. There's a pretty long distance between Parker and those two. I played with Marigal all day on day 1A <coughs> of this event, and a couple of things. One, obviously, very nice guy because he's Canadian. Um, and two, he actually was down to. 7k at one point got a triple up and then ended the day with almost 200,000 so had a very nice spin up looks like he has only been trending upwards since <coughs> pocket tens for Apurva Goel East nine suited for Roberto Carrera have not seen a lot of action from Carrera it's been all about Marigal and so Peter Vichus. I just love how every time you've said his last name, you've said it differently. Yeah. There's a lot of people weighing in. I believe I'm saying it wrong. I believe you. I just don't believe that the people who are writing in how to say it really know how to write it phonetically. Carrera choosing the shove all in with ace nine suited against this early open does not have a lot of big blinds. Just five and a half bigs. So a spot you're okay. never going to be that happy with. Hmm. I just go with Sapita a lot of the time. And Sapita calls. Yeah, and now it's up to Goel. Oh, wait, hold what on. He what he wants to do. That was more than a call. Yeah. I guess he announced a raise. Four bet to 84,000. Yeah, obviously in an attempt to ISO, but tens is extremely strong. We're talking about just north of a 30 <coughs> big line stack. Should be 88. Melvin calling for a three way all in. I think you just might get your wish. Yeah, certainly a little opponent dependent here. The history 
that they've had, but it looks like he does move it in. And now... Ta Vichu's accent on Ta <laughs> has to call 250,000. You. Yeah, and certainly the ace queen does shrivel up a bit now. We're talking about under the gun plus one open, willing to get 30 big blinds in the middle after Sapita four bet. So quite a strong range. Certainly, you know, tens make sense. <clears throat> Jacks plus, of course. Ace King, I mean, Ace Queen suited, maybe, but that just means that Sapita's not really performing that well against that range. And even though Sapita has a lot of chips, 30 blinds, not nothing. That's a decent stack. <laughs> Does give it up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. huh. Better fall? What? What the up? You didn't have jacks, right? Okay. It's queen. It's queen. And we do <laughs> see Sapita <laughs> eventually fold. Not quite a race here. Carrera with just one over card to the pocket tens. Unless you lose, and then you lose 54,000 more. Make, don't forget to take one time back. Yes, this is the book? Yes, that's, that's, no, that's, not, that's his. From okay, from okay, him, okay. not from him. Only from him. And just trying to work out the stacks now. His. Yeah, pretty you got your 30k already. pot for Carrera. Could find the triple up and only have yeah, to be up against Annie's one hand. Considering the well. chips Sapita put in with the four bets, so no, 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 it wasn't. maybe looking for some hearts. Feels like a favorable situation for a poker player. <coughs> All right, here we go, run it. I thought you maybe have tens or nines here. King, queen, queen. So <laughs> kind of tough to get counterfeited with pocket tens, but that is a possibility now. Only one queen more. Kings and aces working for Carrera. No people gonna think what the idiot problem is. Spades queen? on the turn is no help. It's good, yeah. It's good, yeah. Herrera down to one final uh, card. Two, how much? 325 to fall? Oh, okay. okay. It's <laughs> good for Full oh, house yeah. for Goel. So he says it's Just like the Porsche <laughs> I saw earlier, this Carrera is going Now outside. it doesn't matter what was in the pot. You got it all. It was right, though. Sapita went from being upset that he folded pre to being happy. Pretty happy. <laughs> Carrera out in 58th place. And I believe the next pay jump, yep, yeah, is at 55. So two more eliminations before the next pay jump. I'm going to let that comment go. I was going to roast somebody, but I'm over it now. Too much time has passed. But also, just be warned, chat. The coffee has kicked in for Staves, so he's going to be ready. Yeah, I can't find it. It was someone complaining that people that are used to playing online where they can act fast, why do they take so, why are they so slow live? And it's one of those comments, it's one of those questions that's so obtuse that it enrages me like why does it take longer to count the pots live why is it harder to come to a decision when you don't automatically know the size of every bet and every chip stack and what your odds are why did... okay you know what what happened to letting it go yep i'm letting it go 
I'm letting it go. Can you can, can you tell me your meditation mantra? Or was that private only for you? No, that was a no. It was a voodoo doll, like you said. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I think bounty, bounty? Mister Bounty. Yeah. There's only like 50 left or something now. I think. Well, Carrera isn't the only player facing recent heartbreak. While that was happening, we had an all-in situation. Vanessa Cade versus Martin Guerrero. Domination situation. Ace-King versus Ace-Queen. And I see Vanessa with the loser's posture. Despite where those cards were placed, she was the player with Ace-Queen. King on the flop. Vanessa is eliminated. Oh no! The walking emote, Masato Yokosawa. So expressive. And this time that expression is sadness. I know the feeling, I know the feeling, trust me. I will revenge next time. Next time I mean. He can't even be threatening, honestly. He's, he can't pull it off. Nice try, though. Love me some Masato Yokosawa. Two poker in the ears, former guests in a row, Vanessa Kate and Masato Yokosawa. Back to back eliminations. Level no matter what, we go off for last level no matter what. Uh, what did you have? You're gonna put us on three levels in a row? Wow. Your team pro, Tonka. <laughs> okay, it has been confirmed. That you will? Yeah. What the hell? Sorry for <laughs> giving uh, you camera time. <laughs> Back in action here, up on the stage. Did you take the stairs to get up on the stage or the catapult? Oh, the catapult. Oh, that's Love not, that thing. That's not for you. What? It's supposed to be just for people in wheelchairs. No, they didn't say that. That was they. They were like, oh, I, I had to wait in a queue, but okay, all right. That was it. Marigal on the button. Ace nine. <laughs> Asalenka likes to get a little out of line in the small blind with hands just like this. Takes it down. Did get a new player added to the table. Michael Rodriguez. Sitting to the right of Kirill Astralenka. Neither of these players. We'll see him this hand. Right there. Black t-shirt. 21st place finisher in EPT Paris. Tonka. 20. Who makes a 20? 1,000. Queen 5 suited. All right, here.
Here comes Michael's premier hand on the stage. Nothing to write home about for him and not much in the big line for Goel. <coughs> Goel does defend 6-3 off. And flops a gut shot. That's pretty fun. Could certainly go for a check raise with this type of hand, you know, one that just does not have any showdown value, but could profit quite nicely from picking up the pot immediately against this C bet. Nowhere makes the call to the turn. It's a deuce. I'm trying to make it exciting, but personally, I'd like to see a lead here from Goel. Ooh. You know, when the board pairs, especially you know middle pair, bot bottom pair, especially in a situation where you're more likely to have more two X's and four X's and the <coughs> like, yeah. Definitely a good spot to. That's wild. Go ahead and rep. That here. you just say you'd like to see that it happens. <sighs> Let's say that you were coaching me through that hand. <laughs> if I had folded six three offsuit in the big blind. Yay or, yay or nay? I think that's fine. I think that the, the pre-flop part is not, you know, a huge mistake one way or the other. Okay, good. I think it's just about how comfortable you feel playing post. But generally speaking, 6-3 is a very weak hand and can be very tough to play post. But uh, once you get that type of flop and that turn card, and you don't do something to try to win yourself that pot, Staves, I would be disappointed. Well, you're going to be disappointed a lot. <laughs> I don't know why I can't just make hands. Like, it's so stupid. All I need to do is make hands for 10 days straight this summer. That's it. I mean, to be fair, having watched a lot of main event coverage, there have been a few winners that just ran really, really well. Make hands for 10 days straight. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's certainly I just have one to be way that to go person. about it. Parker has made it 22,000 with Queen Jack. Looks like Jose Astema <coughs> is going to defend 8-7. King eight four two hearts. Astema takes the lead with a pair of eights. VJ and asks Maria, "Are you helping Joe with his confidence?" Maria does help me with my confidence poker wise, but when we go places together, she makes me walk ten paces behind her, so people don't see us together. <laughs> that kind of that's a little humiliating. I give it and I take it away. <laughs> Back to call. Two of clubs on the turn. That's how but just see betting this type of flop at a very high frequency because it certainly does favor his range, but doesn't really like it so much on the turn. Interesting river. Certainly at this point, again, because you're facing a big blind defend, you want to try to get them to fold this exact type of hand, you know, the 8x is the weak one pair hands, and it feels pretty natural that you would see bet an ace-x type hand on the flop and maybe slow down on the turn, and now might want to try to rep this card on the river. <coughs> yeah, I don't... Tonka is... Very, very, very low on my list of people that I want 
to be facing in this situation. Just having a very marginal hand by the river where Parker raced pre-flop. Yeah, and it's tough because Astema, you know, knows that Talbot wouldn't play a king like this. Likely that would have been a double barrel through the turn, but certainly, again, can have a lot of ace -axes. This sizing actually keeps a lot of ace -axes. It's not polarized to just flushes or nothing, right? This sizing on the river, going for about half pot, keeps a lot of the non-flush top pairs in Talbot's value betting range, so it does <coughs> make it hard to call with 8-7. Classic Tonka. Tough as a cast iron truck. We are 20 minutes in right now to the second mini EPT of the day. But if you like tournaments that play a little bit bigger, the spring champion, I always thought of spring championships. Huh. The spring championship of online poker is hot on the heels of this event. Today's May 3rd, May 7th begins Scoop 2023. Just 350 plus tournaments buy-ins of all sizes but really i think most people are playing for the glory right the glory of being a scoop winner it's certainly really prestigious and there's people that you know as we know have won a lot of scoops w coops and those types of titles just continue to build their online resume just, yeah you know meaning we're gonna see people like connor beresford in the mix, certainly. Sure. All if, of the online legends. And if you have like a hole in your poker resume, right? Like maybe a hole in your trophy cabinet, you might want to fill it with the glory of Scoop. Asalenka kicking things off with Queen 10. <coughs> Goel's called with King Jack. And Sapita Vitrus defends with Jack Nine. King Trey Deuce. Anyone have a king? Anyone have a king? Goel has a king. Razor tries to continue. Unfortunately, runs right in the top pair. Turn card is the tray of hearts. It will be interesting to see if Ostalenka goes for the double barrel. Considering this board is still relatively dry, you know, trying to get hands like fours, five, sixes all the way up to tens to fold out here, potentially with another barrel. You know, there are gonna be a lot of those middling pairs that are gonna call one with just one over card on the board, but Seven. would fold to more pressure. Um, unfortunately, I think King Jack is just <coughs> too strong, but I don't really mind the second barrel from Asalenka, considering there are quite a few hands that Goel <coughs> could have that might not be able to withstand the second barrel. Shouldn't have a ton of 3Xs here other than, say, Ace-3 suited. I think one of the biggest leaks in my game is not double barreling enough, but I assume this is the situation every single time. Yeah, but I think you should be less worried about what your opponent could have that does beat you or will call a second mm -hmm. barrel and think about all the other hands that they would have. Definitely, absolutely. That they wouldn't call a second barrel with. No, I'm just saying this is great. Right. I think this is great advice because I tend to think that most of the audience is around the same level of poker player as I am. So I think that this is good 
strat for them. Huh? What just happened? I think we <coughs> saw what? a fall no. from gold. Why? What? Why would you do what? that? Go. Wow, okay, that's mind blowing. Uh, just as I was saying, oh, well, that I'm look. afraid I would run into top pair. <laughs> you just get top pair to fold. I mean, that couldn't have worked out any better for if, Asalenka if you needed and for, more for reinforcement me. Right, like, in the future. I was already. I was like, already, I should do. I know that in this case it's not going to work, but I should do this. Nope, turns out in this case it does work. Stapes, where are your post it notes? We need this I for WSOP I don't even WSOP know. I honestly, d I, that doesn't even fit on a post to know what just happened there. Right, we got another new player. We saw a quick flash of Pedro Neves. Won't be playing this hand. Has to wait one. They never buy the button in a tournament. It's probably not worth the chips, I guess. So apparently it's like 50 million people's birthday in chat. And I'll tell you what, today is my mom's actual birthday, and if I haven't heard, wished her a happy birthday, I'm not wishing you a happy birthday. Well, I'll say happy birthday to anybody whose birthday it really is in chat. And all the people who is, isn't aren't allowed to hear that. <laughs> It just takes so much out of me every time I do it. I just need like a break after saying it. Uh, in the small blind with Ace-10 facing a, an early raise from the Jack of Diamonds. Yeah, and it does feel that Asalenka has been a little bit active this level thus far and not surprised to see Sapita putting in the three bet with that Ace blocker. Maybe just feeling like Asalenka has been opening at a high enough frequency where won't have enough good hands to call the three bet with here. Asalenka has been getting away with a lot, if I remember, from the last level and last night. I mean, unless Sasolenka calls pre against the three, but pretty out of line, I feel like it does narrow his hand strength down quite a bit. Certainly, you know, hands that would call a three bet here, but not four bet. Wow, uh, three aces on the flop. <laughs> oh, oh. Faces, fake aces. The faces. The faces. Um, Quads. Yeah, a lot of hands that I think Asalenka would open from under the gun plus one and call a three bet with, you know, hands like ace jack, of course, off suit and suited come to mind. Hands like jack 10 suited, queen jack suited. Yeah, jack jack suited. But, you know, jack 10 suited can't really be possible in diamonds here, of course, because Sapita has the ton of diamonds. So, but would those hands continue, right, on this flop? Maybe not. So now I'm kind of feeling like it's more along the lines of perhaps, you know, King Jack suited might take one off, um, but could definitely be Ace Jack, Jacks. So Peter Vichas checks now. Anybody want gum? Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. Sapita now just turning their hand into a bluff catcher, effectively. A king ball hits on fifth street. Does feel like with the check back, Asalenka has showdown value, so now I'm leaning towards Jacks. JJ. Sapita going for small value. I don't know that side really. It feels like feels like Jacks. Feels earnest. 
<sighs> feels like the value bet's so small, it's like they're just begging for a payoff. Uh, time bang chip being fingered. Just based on Asalenka's physical demeanor, I'd be shocked if he comes in with a raise now. I think it's just a matter of if he wants to pay this less than quarter pot size bet off on the river. I live my life a quarter pot size bet at a time. Well, I can do that better. I mean, it just really feels like Jack's here. I just think that Ace-Jack wouldn't take this long. Last 30 seconds. You know, they're they're likely to be chopping with Ace-Queen, obviously, and... Esfalenka's all out of time bank chips. This is a very interesting spot, I think, to use the remainder of your time bank chips on. It is just such a small bet that it almost feels like the time bank chips are worth more than that, especially when you have a very standard kind of calling hand. Feels wow. a lot like Jax. So, huh? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Dude, it's okay. And then Zapita Vichas. Oh my goodness. Scoops that pot. Standard hand. Up over standard hand. Four million says. again. Chicken <laughs> I don't know how late registrations open the mini EPT, but the 558 max turbo PKO did start about a half hour ago. My guess is you can still get in it. But if you want to be on time for something at 815 local time, about an hour and a half, the heads up zoom. Total KO has yet to kick off. That's only $2.20. Yeah. All right, Crypto Popo, you're being very annoying. You're gonna get one time out, and then after that, it's bye-bye. What a shock, someone with the name Crypto Popo is a bit of a ding-dong. Well, with pocket sevens. One minute of late reg left. Thank you, the JoJo. See, that's how you be. That's how you're helpful in chat. Zapita, mixing it up here this time. Same hand, but on the button, decides to just flat. Tray, seven's holding. No, and they're not. That's a pair of tens. Come on now. So I'll deciding to follow it up with small C bet, just hoping to fold out some overcard equity. But of course, Ace Ten. Happy to make at least the call. Looks like a raise might be getting cut out though. Uh-huh, 65,000. Yeah, it's kind of hard because Goel's like, well, could Sapita be doing this with a hand like Queen Jack, perhaps, or King, yeah. you know, just a two over cards type of hand, something with a little bit of equity. And that's why you see Goel get a little suspicious, curious, wants to come along. This is not a great turn card if Goel puts Zapita on those types of holdings. In the words of every fourth song from the Fontana Lounge in 2008, <laughs> 
Time to say goodbye. Sabina might not love this card either. Check, check. Jack is your river. Jack of hearts. The JH. Yeah, not a great run out for either players no. holding. But looks like Goel. How do you turn the, the sevens card? into a bluff? I am not mad at it as long as the sizing supports this. I feel like Goel is like uh, kind of in your head a little bit. In my head? Or well, you're, in you're in his head, or if you're in each <laughs> other's heads. What do you think of the size? I, I, I think that the size <clears throat> keeps, you know, some top hair hands in there. You know, certainly I don't think, yeah, certainly About I don't think no that bank, guys, straights and two pairs <laughs> would go for that sizing. Um, but some King X certainly would, so... I think in that scenario, Sapita is making what he believes is a good fold. But I meant, I meant, what did you think of the size of his head? <laughs> since you're in it? But all the credit to Goel well there for, for just recognizing the situation, feeling like that mind. board and that run out really favored Hiding his, his range a little more versus the button flatter. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not about your actual holding. Only one it's about time your time. perceived. <laughs> we talked about this. When you use them, you're supposed to call. Range. Maybe it's, maybe it's. Maybe and sometimes it's a pivot, right? Like you can go into that flop maybe being like, oh, you know, that's a pretty good flop for sevens. You'll find out soon. True. And decide to bet, call a raise. And then when it comes to the river, you're like, huh, I don't really have too much showdown value now. So well, now I have to bluff. Speaking of JJ. A pervert Goel about to be involved in yet another pot. Nevis finally making an appearance to fold. He's five suited. Hey, look at PETA has sourdough. <laughs> sourdough for PETA. Fun. Is there any more bread jokes we can make? Somebody's gonna win the dough? I don't know. Three ways to the flop. Queen, queen, four. Two diamonds, though. Yeah. Uh, no. Come on. Feels like Goel and Sapita are just destined to get into pots well, with one another. <laughs> What's the 100k between them? No, thank you. <laughs> hey, the offer's on the well, table. Scott. No problem firing at this. Fire is quite small, though. 13,000 to 75. Oh, come on. Be reasonable. Go, go after everyone else. And you and always me. go after me. Every time it's my big one, you raise them. The no, no, I, I put two hands. Oh, okay. Seven deuce. No, I didn't have no. No. Ooh. So Peter Vichas, semi-bluff raising. Yeah, and just targeting that small sizing on the flop. But Goel, with that hand, knows his man, you know, you probably understands that the dynamic and the way that sapita um, has been playing is that times, then maybe he's like been a, incredibly aggressive. Oh. Drills yeah, the flush on no, the no, turn. No, no. Yeah, I used to play. I, uh, maybe yeah, and I times, think so that, especially with no diamond either, it's going to be yeah, tough for Goel to hang no, on. No more, no, poker. Yeah, 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 there's no more poker at all, right? Something where, where is it? Luckily. Underground. Casino that has it. And, um, underground, yeah. Likely and, uh, won't lose any more the, chips. Uh, Nagara Old Casino, they might have run this small event. Small games, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, what the is hell? That, is that over? One, one. Yeah, check, bet, fold, quick fold at that. Brief hiatus from the main stage. Out to check out Eric Seidel versus Harry Lodge. All in pre-flop. Eight for Seidel, ace king for Harry. And I don't see an ace or a king on that board. That's a double up Seidel. Harry Lodge. <laughs> Even you, huh? It's the only thing that Even I can say you. in a decent accent. That's why I do it. Define decent. Low hanging fruit for me. Low hanging fruit. <laughs> This guy? Back up top. I want to know what the widget says. James. Well, maybe. Come in, Usually James. He remembers every hand. He remembers every hand you guys played. James's widget's ordering him another cocktail <laughs> poolside right now. A little gin and tonic, a little Hendrix. GNT. Pocket six is for Tonka. Queen six off for Goel. Not a hand I like to uh, Fs with, but Goel seems to have some chops. Thank you, sir. I'm very happy. Happy to win <laughs> before the flop. Right? Huh? First time I didn't Yeah. And he 100% <laughs> call every <laughs> single time I raise his blind. We played together all day yesterday, too. Every time I raise his blind, call. Every time. And then I make donations as well. <laughs> That's why he called. Huh? That's why he called. Like yeah, he yeah. called with he ace high, house, a really big high, bet you know, on the guy. river on a double paired board against Asalinka yesterday. And a huge bluff. What did you have on Asalinka that? had. I played him, day one. We uh, play day one, right? No, day huh? two. We play together day one or day two? I don't Not that I take yeah. any pleasure in Tonka being wrong there, but it's nice to know he's human. <sighs> mm -hmm. Pressure poker. <laughs> Bully one against bully two. This is how it should be, you know? Oh my god, bully three. <laughs> <laughs> not me, right? Bully one, two, three. N who, me? No, yeah. no I'm not. Me. Yeah, that's true. There goes a nice. Yeah. Easy to chill when you get kings against queens, you know? You're just Canadian chilling, fella. waiting. <laughs> not a bully. <laughs> Looks like Asalenka feels like good Ray's from a very active player with the flat just makes it so enticing to put in the squeeze with this suited king combo. I like it. Not a lot of players would take this spot, especially with ooh, especially with the reputation that I think Asalenka has built for himself. Just being like, oh, when is one too many times? When am I not going to get the credit anymore for having hands in these spots? Nevis with just 31 big blinds. Plenty of money to be won here that's already in the middle. Big pocket pair. The aces of number cards. And this is where having situational awareness is so important because it's so hard, oh. right? It's so hard. Oh. Though it's so hard to what? I can see the hold cards. I know. I right. can see the hold cards. It's so hard to what? Four bet shove? And you just got to the table. You don't have the information that we have of the way that Sapita has been playing with the way that Asalenka has been playing. So how, how could you possibly, right? And we do get to a flop. Aswalenka versus Marigal. Pair for each of them. Aswalenka's top, Marigal's bottom. Okay. 
I remember one time I uh, I didn't rip it in with pocket tens early in a tournament, and that was a mistake that we went over later. Oh yeah, yeah. That that in that situation you should have. That was a little different to this one. That's why I love being at a table that's not going to break. You know, I don't want to be gathering information and not being able to utilize it in a situation where it really matters. It's hard to be uh, the new kid on the block. It's a good point from uh, Chilevin Poker. Queen Jack would have flopped a straight here and tens would have flopped a set. Well, at least now people are going to see what Asalinka is three betting with. Yeah. The winner. Confirmable. That's what. Mm. When you fold tens there and you see king seven, are you just like Could sick? No, because <laughs> that just was a situation where he didn't have it. Oh. But certainly even aggressive players can pick up big hands. Out in the field, cards. <laughs> are on their backs. Jacks versus tens, all in pre-flop. Keenan Taylor behind. But, yeah, but, there is a cool house, you know? but it's Mihail's Morozov who is standing because there was a 10 on the board. I know there's a lot of Keenan Taylor fans out there in the chat. Morozov's out in 53rd place. And Keenan Taylor's up to 2.7 million. What? <laughs> That's insane. 2.7 million. 270 big blinds? M-B-N. A couple of more walk-offs. Year of Romania, Andre Stonescu. And Marcello Minucci. Sorry, Minucci. <laughs> Two point seven million for Keenan Taylor. The human calculator in me tells me that that's that's two hundred and seventy big blinds. I gotta get a shot of that chip stack. I gotta see. I gotta see what two hundred seventy big blinds looks like. Okay, okay. Would that be very nice? Too hot from the. Blood. Where's the dude in chat? His name is Looser or something. That's been bugging me about Arthur Martirosian. We got some. We got an Arthur Martirosian update coming up in a few minutes. This man plays with the speed of violence. <laughs> Just over 35 minutes left on this level. 50 players remaining. Parker raising under the gun, ace nine. Everyone now has laddered up to 17,000 some odd euros. Goel is going to flat with ace three suited. So Peter Vicious. 10 8 off. And there isn't another prize jump till 39th place. So safe from that for a while. Queen Jack 10, pair of 10s for Sapita. Up and down for Talbo. Hmm. Maze high for Goel, 1% equity. <coughs> Woof. So Peter checks. Parker continues for 24,000. And that is going to be good. Cool. 
Kong on Twitch says, Goel, more like Joel, am I right? No. Thank you for your question. I would have accepted Goel more like Goal because he is in the net. Like I would have, I would have taken that one. Solanka has a hard time finding two cards he can't play. Yeah, but I think his fellow table mates are starting to have a hard time believing him. Certainly going to see some adjustments <coughs> in the way that they react to Asalenka's raises. All right, so we're going to see Sapita Aswal round 70. I don't know. They play a lot of pots. Nine, eight, six, two hearts. Ace high and a gut shot. Versus king high and a backdoor clubs. Now, when you get called out of the small blind, you're going to put them on a lot of hands that could connect with this board. You know, certainly a lot of the pairs, the small middle pairs are all going to be calling the suited aces, okay. some of the stronger offsuit ace combos going to come along from the small blind. And then there's that portion that whiffs, which is, you know, the, the Broadway type holdings. And against the Broadway type holdings, which is what Sapita has, ace high is still best. Does have a little bit of showdown, not to mention that gut shot. And so against this bet from Sapita, feels like Asalenka will be able to sometimes find continues. Two-tone board. Yeah, Sapita. Now able to legitimately semi-bluff with two overs and the club draw. Yeah, could certainly have a lot of sets here. But Asalinka doesn't like to give up on too many pots, so this is not surprising at all. And doesn't block any of the flush draws, I might add, which is important. <laughs> but Sapita finds a way. Hello, Mr. Fancy Pants. King high flush. Oh, feels good to get there for once. <coughs> Arcadia says, dude looks like he should be on Bill and Ted. I'll allow it. <laughs> Yeah, this is tough because, you know, Asalinka doesn't block the hard draw, doesn't doesn't block the clubs, and this type of polarizing bet, it looks like perhaps could your opponent have a busted heart draw here. Jack-10, also a possibility, but you block the 10. Looks like Asalinka does make the fold. Breaking news from an outer table. If Maria can avoid culturally appropriating Harry Lodge's name this time. It's Harry Lodge versus Arthur Martirosian. Harry all in pre. Looks like there's more people than just those two in the hand. But the action is on Martirosian. I think he's already called the all-in, and now it's to up to the player to his left. 
Thank this you. seems to have a tough decision. Yes, that does appear to be what's happening. Fold, fold. Cards on their backs. Oh, the sickest and classicest of races. Ace King for Lodge, Queens for Martirosian. Queen on the flop. Inconsequential Greenstein. And Harry Lodge torched like Kramer's cigars were left behind. Out in 50th place, 17,250 euros. And Martirosian up to 1.88 million, which is closing in on 200 bigs, 188 big blinds. Hi, James. Hello, Joseph. Hello, Maria. Hello. I do remember when the three of us were working together this morning and we were looking at the likelihood of ending on around 44 players, according to the widget. Joe took the over, by the way, and I'm looking... Yeah, we were going to lose more players. <laughs> <laughs> that would get us past 44. Convenient. Right, yes. Um, we're at 49. There's still half an hour to play on level 19, and then we have all of level 20 to play. If you remember my first guess, what was it actually, James? This so morning. We would get to 16. Correct. <laughs> Which... Ironically, now looks better than your revised projection. So, we must have a ridiculously huge average stack right now. Well, this uh, this hand could get a little weird. You can widget yourself. We are playing around a 70 big blind mm. average. And I know it sounds boring and monotonous to keep saying this, but it has to slow down at some point. But if we keep getting setups like top pair against a flop flush, eh, James, we got Keenan Taylor out in the field right now, who has 270 big blinds. That's a lot of chips. I think that's pulling up the average a little bit. I mean, if people are playing the way that this feature table is playing, then <laughs> I can kind of see why the bust outs have been fast and furious. These players have not been afraid to play big pots. A lot of three betting, a lot of post. You'd think the reason I was going to bed early every night this week was because I've been cranking it. Oh, there it is. The resuck. Hold on a second. Bogdanov with the king high flush. We can still have the re resuck. Straight, street flash. Yes, there is a street flash draw out there. Oh, come on. I mean, not being funny, but. Renat Bogdanov has only just arrived at the feature table. Yes. He kind of deserves a win here. He certainly does not deserve to get rivered by a straight flush. For the memes, though. I, I'm sure he's thinking all about the memes right now. Would you now. rather win 800,000 euros in a poker tournament or be remembered forever as the guy who went broke in 49th place to a straight flush? Okay, when I word it like that, it seems kind of obvious that it should be the 800,000 euros, but... And also, the man doesn't even have... The second nuts, right? So he probably won't go broke with the king of spades in his hand. But the street flash does not come in. And I think you can safely. We do get a meme. Barry Greenstein. Is <laughs> yes. it? It's an inconsequential Greenstein, but it's a meme. A Greenstein of no consequence. Poor Barry. An irrelevant Barry. There you go. Well, there's other people in the Greenstein family. <clears throat> and with that check back from Bogdanov on the turn, this makes Asalenka go small here on the river, trying to get value from perhaps worse flushes or just one pair hands that feels like perhaps this is a bluff. I think against this sizing, Bogdanov can actually find a raise here with the King of Spades, but ends up just calling to be safe. So Bogdanov now playing a stack of 455,000, 45 big blinds. A reminder that the average stack is 716,000. That's nearly 72 big blinds with 46 players remaining. That means we've lost a couple since we last checked in. Who's gone out? 
Oh, no. No, what? He just doubled. Eric Seidel cashing out for 17,250 euros. And a player who was on our feature table yesterday has also been KO'd. Mihai Nishte also cashing for just over 17 grand. Do you have a mania? He gave you, she gave you 22 and 22, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry, don't worry, I pay. <laughs> don't owe you anything. And then there were 46. Huh. 16 is looking pretty, pretty good. Table chip leader opening here in the cutoff with ace queen offsuit makes it 22,000. Tonka looking interested on the button. You don't get to get away with calling him table chip leader. You're going to struggle your way through that, and get corrected by everyone in chat 40 different ways. Arunas. Sapatavicus. Vicius. Sapatavicius. Okay, so it's Sapata Vicius. Sapata Vicius. Well, Tonka decided to call on the button with the 9 7 of strawberries. Meanwhile, we have Kirill Asalenka with Kings in the Big Blind. And this is where oh, his reputation exactly <laughs> is really going to get him paid in a big way because Sapita Vicius has a real hand in the cutoff. And breaking news from the outer tables, if you just saw it tick down from 46 to 45, that's because Mike Watson hit quads to eliminate Juan Pardo. Wow. But it's fine, because I'm genuinely rooting for Mike to win the whole thing now, so everything's okay. Asalanka, three bets to 76,000. Does look like a squeeze, there is the shove. And a quick call. If this A spikes. No. <laughs> no. If this A spikes. No. Don't do him dirty like that. I actually love Asolenka's whole vibe. I'd be pretty bummed to lose him. Well, there's a 71% chance he stays. <laughs> Big favorite to double up here. <laughs> and not even a flush draw sweat. Just the two kings in the deck for Asalenka now. Sorry. Why does Marigal look so happy? Probably because he didn't like Asalenka being to his oh, left. Oh, stop it! <laughs> Unnecessary. Overkill. Well, hold on, no. Now he can make a full house. Still needs a king. Still two outs for Kirill Asalenka. Does not hit on the river. Instead, it comes seven. <laughs> <laughs> and that means we lose Kirill in 45th place. We are down. <laughs> to 44 players with still nearly two hours of poker to play on day three. Just a 73 big blind average. Really is genuinely too bad. I like Asalenka. I mean, obviously interesting looking character, but his style of play was quite interesting as well. Only that set of jacks I want. Yeah. By the way, I do love the fact that we have that not, kind of not, 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 public not, service not, announcement yeah. pinned yeah. on Just Twitch. Same, Maybe we could do the same like... on YouTube. Magnus is out, Spraggy is out, Parker is still in. I have two hearts. James, you missed this discussion. Might as well let you Yeah, in. he so... said it before the hand. Is I it... said I beat these guys yeah. this hand for sure. Mm -hmm. Good with the but you cannot call no lane. What about he called? Would you call or no? I just want to let these fellas chat the, if they want. How big is your... Huh? It's still, it's still four? So no point talking about it. Outfold. So Sapita Vichas is wearing a... Had a bad hand. Kind of a Joker costume almost. It's a hoodie that reps the Joker. Yes. And has a Joker face on the side. I see. And who's your, who's your top Joker of all time? Oh, 
Sorry, I, I thought you already put There's a lot of, I think there, I don't think there are any wrong answers in this case. Even Jared Leto, I think, is like a kind of solid joker. How much Can I take Hamill? Six. Yeah, absolutely. Hamill. Okay, I'll take Hamill. Hamill's a strong choice. I think they're all very strong choices. And 30. And I'll be honest, I haven't watched a lot of the animated Batman, but I did play the Arkham trilogy, and he is a huge part of those games. Yeah. And I like the fact that they adapted the killing joke. I don't like the fact that they added this unnecessary prologue, but once you get to the second half and it is a straight adaptation of the graphic novel, he's great in that. Yeah. New bully. <laughs> New bully for sure. You see, but King Queen first hand. You say there's no wrong answer, yeah. but Caesar Romero, come on. That was my second choice. Was Caesar Romero? The guy couldn't even be asked to shave off his mustache. I don't think that you can have any of the other Jokers without Caesar Romero. That's true. That is true. And he's arguably the funniest <sighs> one. I do love the fact that for like the TV series, they had to kind of like make the character a bit more fun. So he was the clown prince of crime. Yeah. It wasn't this dark, disturbing <laughs> character that then... Well, now we can do it because everything has to be dark That's now. That's true. It's weird because I kind of feel like Jack Nicholson falls somewhere in the Post middle, right? Thing? Where he's kind of like camping yeah. it up like Cesar Romero, also going dark like Heath Ledger. Yeah. But he's kind of like straddles it. the fence between the two. I mean, Heath Ledger, obviously a great choice. Some Joaquin's not my favorite, but he did win an Academy Award. I hated that film. Can I just this? Bogdanov might be new to the table, but certainly very active so far. Certainly going to be involved in this hand last time i saw pedro neves play ace jack <laughs> he lost the pca main event a couple of folks in chat recognized pedro from that heartbreaking finish in the main pca main i should specify yep. okay seven still ahead bogdanov better than a two to one favorite would be tough, though, to call this C bet with sevens up against pretty strong range. I mean, how many barrels can you really hang on for if you don't improve to a set or turn some straight possibilities? But I'm going to take one off. Four barrels. Kind of an interesting turning point in the hand. You know, Nevis, of course, does have a Broadway draw now. And if he wants to target these types of hands that Bogdanov is going to call with from the small blind, then yes, another barrel can certainly get it done. Of course, Nevis will sometimes have some King X type combinations, the Broadways that are going to call pre flop from the small blind. But there's also the other part of his range, like hands like seven and Which card you like on the table? Ten. Which card you like? It's going to be folded out on the turn. That means none. <laughs> <laughs> that means he was hoping for a river. So 15 minutes until the final break of the day, and I've got some good news and some bad news. <laughs> I'm just going to do it all at once, right? Question. So the first thing to say is we are going to change feature table. These guys have been up here for a couple of levels, so we're going to bring a new table to the main stage for the final level of the night. Now, table three we did have, and this is a great story, on the river, both yeah. PSPC champions, Ramon Kalilas and river. Alexander Shilko. Because of all of those eliminations, players have been balanced, and Shilko got moved off that table. But we still get to follow Ramon. 
I can tell you that the other players at that table include Javier Gomez. Nice. Oleg Vasilchenko, who we saw earlier on today. <coughs> Not looking great for Daniel Myers. Ramon <laughs> playing more than a million chips right now. And a reminder that he was the seventh place finisher in last year's Monte Carlo main event. Looking to make back-to-back -back final tables as we see it always comes seven. And Goel flop trips. Nevers with top pair. A little bit of a setup here. BVB. Gross. Nevis. Gonna lose some chips unless he can find another queen ball. Yesterday I had this tiramisu from the cafe in there. So uh huh. Go on. So good. Where? Um, I inside hear the tiramisu. cafe right now. Yeah. What did they have? A tiramisu. Oh, no, it ends good. Yeah. <laughs> good. Okay. Okay. Not as good as the calamusa. Tiramisu tanka. Celebrate our bagging tonight with one of those. Yeah, tiramisu, for people who like wet cake. <laughs> okay, so go all bet 10,000 on the flop. It went check, check on the turn. Yeah, if only Goel knew what a strong hand Nevis had, he might have bet the turn as well. But now just gonna get a little, ooh, a little tricky again. I think that this check on the river might get Nevis to go for value, just hoping to maybe get called by a high card. <coughs> Might go really small here on the end. Actually ends up going quite big. 65,000 and gets paid. It's oh no. It's kind of surprising to see Nevis go this big, actually, just because... I thought I heard Goel say call, but clearly no. He's considering, I guess, willing to raise, Marit? Yeah, I think as played, you definitely want to go for a check raise here on the river. But I'm just kind of surprised that Nevis is sizing here on the river. Doesn't seem like Goel has a lot of hands that he could call a big sizing with, considering it went checked on the turn and checked on the river. So this is kind of putting Nevis in a situation where he might just level himself. Because when you go for that big sizing and you block the straight with the eight in your hand, you know, you block eight, five. It, this might actually just end up costing Nevis more from going that big sizing. Silence Runner says, we'll call almost for sure. What are you beating here? I think what he's confused by is why didn't Sevens, if they had trips, bet the turn or bet the river? How did they know that they could have, you know, gotten Nevis to bet the river versus just wanting to show down whatever weak showdown they could have potentially had when they checked back the turn? But just going to give Goel the benefit of the doubt. Nevis does indeed fold Always the river. Sneaking. 10 minutes on the clock until huh? the break, until crappy, the blinds crappy. go up. Nah, Still going to be a ridiculously massive time. average stack. Currently playing 75 big blind average in the EFT Monte Carlo main event oh, because of the flurry of eliminations we've seen over the course of this level. He said he See doesn't, he said he doesn't block. Can't even lie. Can't even lie. Yeah, okay. This past one hour I've made some blocks. Wow. <laughs> 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 What's that block? Donka, donka. What is that from that we all say it? It's just like a comedy horn on like a clown car. Mm, okay. That makes sense. I don't know why I think of a clown car when I see his face. I do. Goel with the Ving Rames. I 
heard that earlier. That was fun. Raises to 20,000. And a fold from mm. the blinds. I was confusing the Ving Rhames Kojak with the Samuel L. Jackson Shaft, though. <laughs> I was like, oh, I like that. Oh, no, wait. That's a different thing. You like that film? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I mean, I was, in, I was like 19 or 20 when I saw it. Brandon says, Goel reminds me of the bad guy in Bad Boys 2. I can see that. I'm not even sure I saw Bad Boys 2. Oh, Bad Boys 2 is great. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Are you, are you so trolling good. me? No, no, it's great. What if I hated Bad Boys? Would I still like Bad it's Boys 2? It's better than Bad Boys, but if you hated it, you're probably unlikely to like it. Did you hate the premise, or the storyline, or the actors in Bad Boys? combination of all of the above. <laughs> okay, well then then you're definitely not going to like Bad Boys 2. But yeah, it, it was actually okay. one of those where the sequel was better. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe I should give it a go then. There's a couple of really great action sequences in it that I think you'd be oh, able to appreciate line. even <laughs> if you don't like the rest of the movie. And that was pre, you know, Will Smith slapping people at the Oscars. So. Peter Stormare chews up the scenery in it. Oh, I like him. Joey Pants chews up the scenery. Notsney says, Maria, please make James watch Bad Boys 2. Didn't he make you watch The Jaws? <laughs> <laughs> I spit all over my phone. Okay, even if we ignore the definite article in that yeah, yeah. sentence that wasn't required, um, I don't think the two films are James, comparable. James, it's no Jaws. I'm going okay. to manage your expectations right now. It's no Jaws. But I do agree with just the thought that if you made me watch a movie, oh. then I get to make you watch a movie. But I don't think I'm going to pick Bad Boys 2. Okay. Like, I think I'm going to go, like, Princess Diaries 2. I've seen I Princess seen Diaries 1, but I haven't seen the sequel. Okay. <laughs> Is the sequel better? Uh, I don't know. If it's pretty good. It. Oh, boy. Your voice went real high. The whole high. franchise <laughs> is amazing. How many are there in the franchise? No, I think there might only be two, but it's good. I need some confidence back here with the walk. It's good. Okay. I need the. Come on. Splashy hype asks, which place did Magnus go out? It was Monte Carlo. Thank you for your question. Pretty solid result for your first EPT, if you ask me. Agreed. Oh, this could get spicy. Parker said he needed his confidence back by getting a walk. He is really going to wish he had got one now. Yeah, both players getting pretty cagey, though, on that flop. <laughs> Trying to trap each other, essentially. Lucas is offering advice to Magnus Carlsen, who hasn't been in the tournament for some time. Needs to play more hands if he don't want to drop off. <laughs> Great stuff, Lucas. Parker drawn quite thin. Now is smushed. So some straight draws missed, and those could potentially be the type of holding that 
Sapita would bet on the turn that might naturally feel the need to bluff on the river. And, you know, if that's the case, then obviously Talbot, of course, going to call. There's not supposed to be a lot of 5Xs, right, that would bet the turn. Those would probably check unless they were two pairs. But just bottom pair alone would probably be checking that turn. So shouldn't have a lot of trips here. And you see Talbot going for the race oh. because they felt like with that smaller sizing out of Sapita on the river that they're betting a Queen X type hand in this situation. And Talbot just trying to get a little bit of value from what he thinks is worse. Again, once you feel like your opponent doesn't have a lot of trips in this spot because they wouldn't bet the turn and that they would go bigger if they had a hand like a straight on the river, or a boat, then you're feeling like you're really trying to eke out just that extra value from a hand like queens and fives, perhaps. And even, you know, other King X type holdings, you're gonna be chopping with those. So not, not too afraid, but again, not really seeing <laughs> the full house coming is about to find out. I have some of that, Tonka. And he calls. Another full house doing some damage to Tonka stack. And Tonka's going to drop down to 342,000, playing around 34 big blinds. But remember, the blinds go up in three minutes' time. Extreme close-up. Yeah, kind of tough because if you don't expect your opponent to obviously re-raise on the river with a straight or trips, and it is really polarizing them to full houses, which they're not going to have a whole lot of. Just a pretty unfortunate run out mm. for Tonka mm -hmm. in that hand. So the break is imminent. As Renat Bogdanov opens under the gun with ace three of clubs. <coughs> the steamer folding the five three. Round to the big blind. Maduka Marigal. And he defends with the Spraggy. A seven offsuit. Yeah. Sorry. Ten, eight, seven. Only the one club. Bottom pair, top kicker for Marigal, who is 89% favorite here. to turn some more equity. That's not it. Your opponent certainly has a lot of top pairs here. Trips also possible. Mm. So kind of tough to barrel that turn, especially when have a little bit of showdown value when that board pairs with ace high. Now, checked again by Marigal. Mm. Bogdanov probably feeling like you don't have a ton of showdown value. You know, they're only beating straight draws, but if they beat straight draws that missed, like a 9x type hand, then the ace high should be good. But what about 85. 
trying to get a 10x to fold out or a 7x to fold out. And this pot size bet on the river is exactly wow. designed to do that. So good. Just feeling like Marigal would have led the river with trip eight. So what really play. putting them on a 10x or a 7x and max pressure there with the pot size bet is going to work. And that brings the session to a close. We are going to take the last break of the day before we play the last level of the day with 44 players remaining. Checking on the stacks of the players who are at this feature table. Lines going up to 6,000, 12,000 with a 12K big blind ante. When we come back from break, a new lineup on the main stage. Headlined by the PSPC 2019 champion, Ramon Kalias. We'll be following Ramon when we return in 30 minutes time here at the PokerStars EPT, hey. presented by Monte Carlo Casino. Live coverage of the main event continues shortly. Nice for Shemi and Queens for Greenwood. Great spot for Sam. Starts the hand with just under 30 big blinds. And there is the re-raise from Greenwood. The three bet to 415,000. Action back on Shemian. Shemian shoves. And Greenwood calls all in. So he's the player at risk here, but obviously a huge favorite. It is Domination Nation. Queens, four to one favorite against nines. Olashemian is going to have to call on the power of Castle Swag Skull. Joe, it felt like an orbit ago that Shemian was chip leader. Well, that's what's going to happen. And if he loses this, which he will, four times out of five, he'll be left with just 13 big blinds. When you got a bunch of players who all know what they're doing, they're they're gonna cycle around and jockey for position. So far, so good for Sam Greenwood. Queen's holding. Seven. It is always coming, seven. It's still like your turn, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> still doing okay. <laughs> I'm putting the nine of spades. No seven, but <laughs> it is a jack. And, and now the queen's dead. That's good. That's good. <laughs> queen of spades is dead. Queens and sevens, the cards that are working for Shemi and the cards that Sam Greenwood needs to fade. Is Andre Latau correct? Is it always coming seven? Not this time. Greenwood gets the double up. Shemian is now the low man at the table. Greenwood's now second in chips just behind Christoph Vogel saying things now changing very quickly. Now the stacks are getting shallower at the super high roller final table. Greenwood with tens here, raises to 200,000. Round to Shemian in the big blind, who has seven six of spades. Very reasonable hand to defend. I don't, I don't think we see him make the jam here. Probably a little bit. Oh, no. Excuse Whoa. me. There we go. Just wait three more seconds next time. And he's going to get called really quickly and be in a lot of trouble with the 6-7 suited. Wow. Shemian gets it in with two undercards to Greenwood's pair. Domination Nation. And Shemian's going to need a lot of help. 
And this is one of those spots where, uh, to an audience, it may feel, you know, he's all in with six, seven suited. But of course, his objective is to get folds, and he's going to get a lot of folds. We've just spoken about how Christoph Vogelsang is going to open wide for the button. I'm sure Sam Greenwood is as well. So this, a lot of the time, is just going to get the fold it needs. But sadly, when you run into it, you're in pretty bad shape. It's going to get the fold a lot. It's going to be live a lot. Neither thing is true in this case. Exactly, yeah. 18%, not terrible. Much not much less now. Looking good. <laughs> Down to 4% and a very strong chance that we lose Olashemian in fourth place. Remember, this is his fourth cash in the 100k super high roller here in Monte Carlo. Three in the money finishes in a row. He won this event in 2016. He came fifth last year and he is eliminated in fourth place this year, cashing for 513,000 euros. He got caught red-handed on the bathroom floor. Swaggy. This year, it wasn't him. We're down to three players. And the stacks are relatively even. 44 bigs for Greenwood, 36 for Fogelsang. Ali Reza Fatehi with 31 bigs. So Sam Greenwood has become chip leader by virtue of that coup against Shemian. Have I given a trophy yet to uh, either Vogel, Sanger, Greenwood? I don't think so, right? I don't believe so, and you certainly haven't to Ali Reza. Yeah, that much I know. Ace, queen of clubs in the small blinds. I usually just root for whoever's going to give me the easiest time during the interview. Right, okay. And I think that Vogel Sang is going to be, like, pulling teeth. Nice enough bloke, though. Yeah, you oh, you for sure. No, you won't, there's no edge there, you know? Straightforward, but maybe not as entertaining as it could be. We talked earlier on, Joe, about the fact that Christoph first appeared in London. Four and five in 2013 and I remember we sat down and did an interview with him there and actually he's a very personable chap and actually quite a good interview. Okay. Well then I hope I was wrong in that statement. Three, four, yeah. Well the interview of your caliber Joe, you'll be able to get <laughs> anything <laughs> out of any of them. Oh no. Oh goodness no. So Sam Greenwood has called the raise with 10-7 of diamonds. 10-7 <laughs> suit has been huge today. And the flop <laughs> oh boy. is Jack-10-7 with two clubs, two pair for Greenwood. The flush draw, the royal flush draw for Vogelsang. And it's pretty much a flip at this point. Yeah, this is a huge flop for both players, of course. And blind v blind as well, three-handed. Every chance we see chips going on the flop, if not the turn. This might even be a spot where Vogelsang wants to go for a check raise all in. Obviously, it's really hard to make mistakes or do anything wrong with ace queen of clubs here because you just have so, m so many outs. You have so much equity. Here we go. Buckle up, buckaroos. And Greenwood's hand is one which is really strong right now, two pair in a blind v blind situation, but it's also very vulnerable. Correct. So many bad turns. So I'd be surprised if we see him flat. I think his, his best option is going to be to raise and Vogelsang with so much equity is just going to put it in and we'll run it out. There's the raise from Greenwood. It makes it 700,000 total. One point six in the middle. And the good news for Vogelsang is he's still deep enough that Greenwood can be raised folding here sometimes. So he might make a raise fold um, with something like 7-8 that blocks some of the more nutted hands, blocks some two-pair two pair combinations. Or it's just being aggressive with like a queen nine, right? Because he has all the chips. We just spoke about Vogelsang not wanting to get overly involved. He does decide just to call with the ace queen of clubs. Well, this part, 2.1 million. Vogelsang with 2.4 million behind. Five of hearts does not help him. Is there something to, I'm reluctant to just call there um, because I feel like if a club hits, then it kills my action. Um, well, a, a club, sometimes obviously your opponent's going to bluff that card as well. I, th I think the, the more of a consideration should be turns like this one where your equity is diminished so much and you're out of position. 
and Greenwood is incentivized to be aggressive because mm -hmm. Vogelsang doesn't want to bust before Ali Reza, right? So it could be a spot where you actually end up folding too much of your share of the pot. Obviously, the easiest play is just to ship it all in on the flop. It's right. never going to be bad. You just have you have heaps of outs against pretty much anything. But it, this might be a consideration from Vogelsang where he doesn't want to uh, bust between before Ali Reza does. And, and with all due respect, you know, probably fancies himself to have an edge sure. uh, over that player. So like Three million. put it in in what is kind of a coin flippy spot. So Sam's decided to overbet the pot, putting Vogelsang all in. Yeah. And now he really can't call because he's got a brick turn. He's not getting a decent price to draw to his hand. Unless, of course, he thinks he's ever good with ace high. Unless he thinks Sam Greenwood enough what of the time. What percentage of the time does ace high have to be ahead here? Um, a fair amount, Joe. A, a fair, fair amount. Okay. Uh, but like, it, it depends. You, ha you have to expect him to be bluffing hands like queen nine or like king queen and getting really aggressive with those a lot of the time for you to want to call off he's probably ASI. not doing that often. No. Not often enough, obviously, hence the fold. So Greenwood now playing 56 big blinds. Ali Reza Fatehi, 32 bigs. Vogelsang, now the low man at the table. The shortest of the three remaining stacks with 24 big blinds. As we play on here in the 100k super high roller at EPT Monte Carlo. It's kind of crazy how, with an anti like this, you could seriously just be going all in for 30 big blinds with deuces. It would be fine. Be a huge win just to take the two and a half big blinds. Oh! Hey, yo. A set of deuces for Vogelsang. Greenwood has paired his five. Second pair on board. I mean, at least with a title like Infinity War, they're being honest about how long it would take you to catch up on everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great opportunity for Vogelsang here. Goes for value, 325K into 740K. Pretty big bets. I like it. Orzen Kaiser says, dilly ding, dilly dong. Don't you always just hope that the turn is a queen here? Uh, yeah, sure. Oh, that's an uh, action killer in this situation. Normally wouldn't be, but... Christoph, it's your turn. 900. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, the ace is a scare card, but you're going to have to, you know, assume that all the hands that you beat with queen five will be trying to steal the pot when the ace hits. So this is not an easy fold by any means. If you think the ace is a scare card for those pocket deuces, Lex, you are tighter than I thought. Greenwood calls <laughs> the 900K. So 3.2 million in the middle. Vogel saying with 2.6 million behind. He improves to a full house. I am Aline. Emmeline? Emmeline. Ah, maybe I'll just go for like some 1.4 million. Five. 
All in. Vogel saying shoves. And now Greenwood has a tough decision with just a pair of fives. Man, the ace pairing is really uh, tough for Greenwood here. On the other hand, you think, oh, what is this guy bluffing? But, you know, there's 6 4, 7 9, all that sort of stuff. Um, this is a really tough spot. I hear him say a lot of 7x. There will always be a tiny percentage in somebody's head that if you call here and you're right, that it's over. I call. He calls? Wow. Well, it is not over. Christoph Vogelsang gets the full double up through Sam Greenwood and we get the big switcheroo. Wow. Vogelsang returns to being chip leader. Greenwood now the short stack. And you know why? It's because he had deuces. I hate it when people don't put their time bank cards in stacks of 20. I think he's showing them off. He's got them all fanned out. All in. He shoves. Maybe he's been watching the stream. And Fogelsang calls. Wow. Greenwood all in with King 7. Called by Fogelsang with all A6. In. There we go. This is the moment I've all been waiting for. Vogel saying a six to four favorite to win the super high roller. Greenwood does have live cards. Greenwood will need to hit to survive. Vogel saying just needs ace high to hold. The flop. Is Jack 10 3. Ace high is holding. Greenwood has six outs looking for a king or a seven. The turn card is a deuce. It's all but over. Vogel saying on the cusp of lifting the super high roller trophy. Exciting all in. Yes. Only a king or a seven saves Sam Greenwood. The river card is a king. Uh, it is not always coming seven, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> Double up, Sam Greenwood. And now they're practically even in chips. All in. There we go. Oh. Oh. Oh, jeez. Oh, wow. It looked like he was expecting the fold, like oh. he was just going to have to fold whatever it was. And then he's like, ah, just kidding. Oh, my heart just jumped. <laughs> so Sam Greenwood set for a big double up here. I would like to see that again, his look of surprise as he almost mocks aces. Let's see if the old adage about deuces is true and if Vogelsang can spike a set. Not on the flop. Two outs for Christoph. He will not be eliminated in this hand. But he will be left with 15 bigs should aces hold. Of course, if there is a deuce on the river, Vogel Sang will have won the super high roller. Two cards, Sam Greenwood has to fade. The river is a jack, aces hold. Greenwood back in command. 42 bigs for Sam, 
15 bigs for Christoph. I mean, this is the biggest lead he's had heads up, right? If at all. I think so. Looks like he's trying really hard not to smile. The smile comes after. I mean, I'd be smiling too. Oh, if yeah. I locked up a million. There's the all in. Oh, and a there call. we go. Sam Greenwood calls with King Jack. So Vogel saying ahead here with ace high and will get the double up unless Greenwood can connect. Should Greenwood get yeah. there with King Jack, it will be over. Vogel saying the player at risk. I think that's this is a good all in. Yeah, it's the loosest all in call I think like we've seen at this final uh, table. 60, yeah, two, something. something like that. 61. Oh. Sleepy guy's on his feet. Doesn't want to miss this. The flop is Jack High. Sam Greenwood takes the lead in this race and now has the advantage and is the favorite to win the 100K super high roller here in Monte Carlo. Vogel Sang needs an ace. Ten on the turn. Three outs for Christoph Vogel Sang. He needs Barry Greenstein. He needs the ace on the river. Or oh, we finally have a winner. This final table will finally be over and we can all go to sleep. I think this is it. The river is another jack and that okay. is it. Sam Greenwood has yeah. won, claiming his second super high roller of That's April right, 2018. Man. He won a 50K in Barcelona. He has won the 100K here in Monte Carlo. He will lift the trophy and get that first prize of 1.5 million euros. I didn't take care of anything and she just booked a flight for me and said like after we won okay we gotta be hurry to the, uh, to the airport i didn't know uh, i had a flight even though you were the winner the hand that everyone still talks about the highlight of that final table is ryan reese hero calling you with 10 high yeah um I, I just got owned. I still, I still don't know how to like, talk about it. Uh, obviously, like everyone kept on asking me for years. Uh, it's been popping up everywhere. And I don't have any bad feelings about it. I, I don't think um, my bluff is so bad. It's just an amazing call. You just gotta, gotta give him props there. He, like, it's not just... Um, I think he said somewhere that he would have called faster in like other circumstances. And I believe that. Uh, it's just like a really, really tough spot to to go with your read there. Like It, it looks really stupid. If you're wrong, and uh, now it looks stupid for me if you're right. It's, it's just like how it goes. I mean, um, it, it, in, in context, you know, when it's small blind, big blind. He's a super short stack. You've got plenty of chips. If you just show the kind of all in and the call with no background and no context, it's kind of like, what's this guy doing with six deuce offsuit? And how does he make that call? But again, the whole table dynamic explains a lot. It is kind of obvious that I have a lot of bluffs there. But the, th the thing is, he can't have a good hand either. Like, it's Im impossible because he would be all in preflop. So it's just like, does he really call with like something like 10 high? Or like, he could have a, um, a split pot as well if he has a 6 high or something. Uh, it's just like such a tough spot for him. And yeah, yeah just um, respect to him that he goes with his read there, with the cameras rolling. Um, very, very strong player, Ryan Reese, obviously. Yeah. And if that was one of the standout moments of the final table, the other thing that I remember most clearly is you guys played, I can't remember if it was four or five-handed, but for like six plus hours, it felt like? Uh, it must have been, like the final table was like, what, like 16 hours or something from six left? It went so late that I left early. I couldn't, I did not see your winning moment. I did not get to interview you, which was obnoxious because... You're one of the people that would have been easy for me to talk to, obviously, after a win. And then I get to the airport, and then you get in line right behind me. Like, I didn't <laughs> even have to leave. I just didn't know how much longer it was going to go. But, yes, it went. It was a long-ass final table. Uh, thank you to producer Chris for reminding me. It was five-handed for nine hours. Yeah. 
nine hours, including breaks, without losing a single player. Yeah, yeah, that was super crazy. Uh, and yeah, I, I do remember that, Joe. It's, uh, it was really <laughs> fun. My my, my friend uh, Ayla Lee, she uh, when I was out to, when I was deep in the main event, she booked flights for me to Cyprus. Like I didn't I didn't sort anything because it was too much. Like I didn't sleep so so much because <laughs> the days were so long. So I didn't take care of anything, and she just booked the flight for me. And she said, like after we won, okay, we gotta rehurry to the, uh, to the airport. <laughs> I didn't know I uh, had a flight. Um, so yeah, we all flew to Cyprus the same day and uh, celebrated. But there, uh, it was it was fun, but it was very uh, very just before the flight. I think we had like half an hour to spare. So wow. So, yeah. And yeah. and what was I mean? I guess does adrenaline keep you going in that situation? Because from the outside looking in, we always complain about long final tables because they become very grueling. They become very taxing. When you're playing for hundreds of thousands, if not millions of euros, it's got to be just as exhausting, if not more. Uh, it is very exhausting, but uh, I didn't mind so much while I was playing. Like I kind of like I crashed a little bit after. I, I remember the pictures for me on the plane where I was like with my mouth open, just, just sleeping <laughs> on like a short flight. I was just so exhausted after. I still remember that. But during the final table, uh, I felt good. I felt fresh. I was like um, fasting on a really good routine, I think. Uh, just like really, really mentally fit. Um, so I felt good, yeah. As a player, would you rather the final table take that long, like exactly that long because of the structure and because of the way everyone played? Or would you, uh, how do you feel about it being sped up um, and, and it taking a little bit less time? Um, you know, as as a player, what's your opinion on that? I, I do prefer the EPTs. I, I think it's perfect structure. If you compare it to like the WPTs, um, the final table is super shallow, and it's yeah. uh, it's basically. Uh, I mean, I do enjoy that too. Don't get me wrong. It's it's fun to like gamble in these kind of spots, especially online. I actually kind of prefer the shorter structures because I don't like sitting in front of the computer for like twelve hours uh, for for some of the tournaments. Uh, so I do enjoy that. But I think for something as prestigious as an EPT, I think the deep structures um, are really great. And I also love watching uh, all the final tables. I do love this kind of like the Triton ones, for example, they are a little shorter, a little shorter as well. And I do enjoy that too, but I think uh, it makes the EPT special with the structure. Well, we went four way to the flop, heads up to the turn, mm. which is a four. That gives him extra outs. Now he can catch a deuce for a straight. The question is, he's got to say to himself, what is this guy calling with? Did he really just have a seven suited and not three bet? Well, what? now Mateos has to bet. By betting now, now Johnny's got to say, okay, I got, if I call this one, I got to call for the rest on the river. So it's not just like, hmm, we'll see what he's got. Now Johnny's got to think about, well, the bet is only 650. There's 3 million in the pot. I'm get, I have six outs. Sure, I'm not the favorite, but it's close. You know, I, he's not getting the right price, but it's not that far off. If Johnny's right that he's up against the bluff, his fives are good. Great Johnny call. Calls. Great call from Johnny. He's getting slightly the worst price to draw, but he's also got the possibility of having the best hand. So the bet sizing for Mateos um, allowed him to play this hand. Okay, another race on the river. That's a good card for Johnny Lawton. And it wouldn't seem like it, but it's one less ace that Mateos could have. Action has been checked to the Spaniard. This is a really exciting hand. I, this is going to get replayed over and over. All in. Oh my goodness. He does it. He goes for it. Wow. This is gutsy. Johnny wants to play so bad. He, his read is right. The question is sometimes, you can tell. Johnny's first instinct, call. I got this guy beat. He's messing with me. A lot to learn about some high-level poker here where it's like you just go with your gut and, and you trust your read. And both of these guys have virtually nothing but are playing a massive pot here. What he may end up doing is talking himself out of his read. Oh, man, I hope Johnny makes this call. It'll be epic. One of the greatest. If he makes this call, one of the best reads we've ever seen at a final table. Greatest played hands we've I mean, ever seen. this instantly goes to, to on many lists as a, just one of this the all-time One of the great greatest calls. hands I've ever seen, if he makes the call. If he makes the fold, it still is a great hand, but it's, it's so much more epic if Johnny makes this call. There oh. goes the fold. And Lod he shows the playing bluff. so good. Wish he calls, he doesn't call. Get shown the bluff. Ah! Put in so much money uh, in that hand with the right read and then changed his mind. So sure you were floating. When I called the turn, I was just going to call the river. 
and nothing. Welcome back to Monaco in 2023. This is the Pokestars EPT presented by Monte Carlo Casino. Day three of the main event continues here at the Monte Carlo Bay Hotel and Resort. We are already at 44 players. Not quite sure how we've lost so many during the first four levels of the day. One more 90 minute session left to play. How many will we end the day with? The average stack right now is more than 70 big blinds. It might slow down. We hope it slows down. We've still got two more days to play after this one. Tomorrow, we will get down to the final two tables. We will also play down to 16. And then on Saturday, on Friday, rather, we'll play down to six. And then on Saturday, we'll play down to a winner. Uh, this is our new feature table, headlined by the Spanish Team Pro, who won the first ever PSPC, Ramon Kalilas. That's right, we are going to follow Ramon for the last 90 minutes of the day. James Hartsko alongside Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And Griffin Benjamin has rejoined us. Hello, everyone. Lines will be 6,000, 12,000 with a 12K big blind ante. Everyone who survives the day gets to bag and tag, comes back for day four. As I said, the day we play down to two tables, down to the final six on Friday, down to a winner on Saturday. Still three days of live coverage to come on the Pokestars Twitch and YouTube channels. A reminder of the prize money up for grabs in this event. With 44 players remaining, we're looking at a cash of 17,250. Up top, 890,000 euros. Players back in their seats. Blinds being announced by the floor. We're ready to restart the action. An hour and a half of poker to play to conclude day three. I think things will slow down, by the way. They almost always do in the last level of the night, whether they need to or not. Correct. Average stack-wise, and this really needs to. I will say there have been a lot of EPTs, and it's never not slowed down and we, like, finish a day early. That would be kind of cool, though. Not possible. I do have. The only situation where I could see us finishing earlier than the end of this level would be if we got to 24, and that would force a redraw, and I think that we would basically call it a night there. But I think 20 eliminations is highly, highly improbable. And we're down to 40. <laughs> Ramon with queen six in the small blind shoves on Daniel Myers, who is super short in the big blind. Pretty standard here with seven big blinds. So Ramon, one of two Spanish pros at this table, the other being Javier Gomez. For me. Marcos Ladev was the start of day chip leader, and he is the table chip leader right now with a 100 big blind stack. Oleg Vasilchenko was on our feature table earlier, still playing around 80 big blinds. And action here is on... Joachim Haraldstad, he's folded. Patrick Butte is out. Gomez folds the 5-4. Vasilchenko, jack seven of clubs. Vasilchenko been all over the feature tables today. Gomez we saw yesterday. Myers with ace five offsuit in the small blind. And he decides to make a stand all in. Question, Griffin, is Vasilchenko priced in to call with any two here? Yep. Six, eight. Six, eight. Six, eight. Yeah, just five and a half big blinds. I mean, you're probably going to call even eight big blinds with a hand like Jack seven suited with your two already out there. Good awareness from Myers, knowing this weak ace is 
probably ahead of Vasilchenko's cutoff open range. But practically a flip. Only a 55% favorite here as we go to the flop. I'll take the jack seven. Flop is queen four three. So the wheel draw for Myers. Ace high still ahead. Needs to dodge jacks and sevens. I'll take the ace five. <laughs> If only it worked that way. Queen on the turn. Ace height still good. Same outs needed for Vasilchenko. Same cards for Myers to fade on the river. Here's a deuce. That is a wheel for Myers. And he is going to double up. More than double up, in fact. Myers. Now we're going to have a much more comfortable 13 big blind stack. Let's go. That's him inside. talked about the improbable, near inconceivable possibility of getting down to 24. I think what's more likely is that we go an entire level losing like one or two players and end the day on 42. Yeah. But of course, just because the average stack <laughs> is deep doesn't mean that every stack is deep. We've got some Pretty dominant chip leaders right nice. now, and there's still some players out there who are in the danger zone. Danger zone? Once you leave, once you left your chips on the table, we do the chip raise. As much as poker players are good at rationalizing things and not behaving with like emotion and really making it to the next day is sort of meaningless right it's just like an imaginary boundary but it does yeah. it does affect how things go at the end of the night the Vasilchenko's raise from the hijack was to 25,000 Harold stat defending the big blind with a no, that's gonna no. be a three bet yeah three raises with King seven oh he's a frisky boy isn't he yeah, very aggressive action here. This is, you know, something we've seen sort of a trend of in the, I guess you can say, GTO theory era. These, you know, hands that feel like they're not really that great to defend, but you have the single blocker and it's such a strong three bet because so much of your range you're going to be, and you can see how he gets, you know, all the better kings to fold except ace-king. So that's just a, a really... Probably a well-studied spot there for her Harold's dad. I'm telling you, you look um, at a flag like that, it's usually someone who knows what they're doing. You mean uh, Roman Roy after he's had kids? <laughs> <laughs> That's a really great call. <laughs> Gomez opening under the gun with ace king of clubs. Azulchenko yeah, with long ace pause. seven of diamonds. Good discipline there. You know, obviously sometimes you want to mix in some three bets. We are playing seven handed. You have like 400? Five. Yeah, learn how to count, bro. <laughs> Patrick Buter in the big blind also folds. It's raise and take it for Gomez. It's really funny that people are like, oh, don't you have to be good at math to do poker? And you're like, you just have to be good at counting. Yeah. 
I, I'm so happy you said that. It's not really math. I'm really good at counting, and uh, people often ask me if I'm good at math, and I'm like, I barely passed math <laughs> in school. <laughs> You just not kind of get in a little trouble when you like round up or down too much. It's very it's very gamified for me. It's like like when I'm taking time bet between decisions, it's because I'm like I'm doing the Joe Stapleton human cut. Like I'm just counting how much right. is in the pot. It's like a fun game for me to do. And then I'm every once in a while, someone will be like, "How much is in the pot?" I'll be like, thirty nine thousand six hundred. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not even. <laughs> I'm always afraid that taking the time to count the pot is going to be some sort of tell. <laughs> like, oh, why does he care how much is in the pot? He must have blank. That's the thing. Uh, that's my secret, Cap. Because I always care how much if is I, in the pot. If I have, exactly. <laughs> I feel like if I have the nuts, why would I care? <laughs> Which I know is stupid. So Ramon is open but with ace nine. Round to the blinds. Beautiful fold to the small. Javier Gomez is in the big. And has 8-4 offsuit. Raise and take it for Ramon. So just, just so I know, James, because sometimes Ramon will be on the table and you won't be here and I won't know you know, all the lyrics or when we should sing it. When do we sing the Follow Ramon song? It needs to be a significant part. Like, okay. Stealing the blinds is not enough. Okay. Or, or if we've literally followed him out into the field to follow what he is doing. Okay, okay, okay. Is that what we're doing now? Is this what that sh this shot is for? Oh, no, wait, he's at the feature table. Okay, I'm all caught up. There he is. Vasilchenko, I think, has one of those annoying big blind hands that's, you know, you wouldn't really hesitate to call 8-6 this deep, but 8-5, you're just like, ah, I guess, because he would probably fold 8-4, right? But he wants some revenge against Harold Stat after being 3-bet. And look, look at that. Would you look at that? Flopping two eight. pair. Vasilchenko will decide to play this as a raise as opposed to a call. Looks like he does. Obviously, you would hate to be check raising into, say, an overpair here, but it just makes it a little bit easier to play, even if you're against a hand that's beating you, because you're the one that has, you know, most of the fours in this spot. And then you can just fold out hands that have equity, like a Jack Nine. You know, Jack Nine might barrel the turn when it's a 10 or a queen and things start getting a little more difficult across the streets. So nice awareness there from Vasilchenko. Uh, I, I don't always like to raise to see where you're at, but those are the kind of situations where I think it works really well. We need to bring that back. Yeah, let's bring it back. Raising to see where you're at. I feel like yeah. it is kind of back. It's I feel like back. it's not as laughable as mm -hmm. it once were. It used to be lull raising to see where you're at. Now it's kind of like, well... Raised to ask the question. Everything comes back in poker under a different name. Yes, it's true. Like all things. Like how Attack of the Clones is coming back, you know? <laughs> okay, don't push it. Okay. 
Now to the button, Javier Gomez. Rolls the 8-3, so we're blind v blind. Two of the big stacks, Vasilchenko in the small with 8-6. Ramon Kalilis with King 10 off in the big. Fall. Oh, no. Under wrapped check back here from Ramon. I, I like that sort of quick check back too. It's going to be difficult for his opponent, Veselchenko, to put him on such a strong pre flop holding. But you don't want to sort of raise this and get limp raised and then it gets kind of murky. So you can tell. Kalilis feels really comfortable. And not only do you have board coverage when it comes Broadway cards, but you also are very comfortable calling on boards like this. Because you feel like King High is going to be so good. You know, turn cards like this are going to freeze up your opponent when they're bluffing. And you've just gained some extra chips that, you know, had you raised pre-flop, you probably would have just gotten, gotten a fold from a hand like this a lot of the time. Vasilchenko slows down on the turn, checking to Ramon, who checks behind. Five of diamonds on the river. That is a flush for Ramon. And I don't necessarily think Vasilchenko is going to go for it, but a fourth diamond on the river may have been one of the only ways he would have been willing to. Mm. But the problem is... Yeah, and he does look like he's reaching for chips. Really targeting those four and three X hands. Even some king and queen highs that don't have a diamond, but of course, a very easy call for 40,000. Really nicely played from Ramon. And he's gonna chip up to nearly 1.2 million. Ramon playing a 97 big blind stack. Mm, we're getting there. Said? That was close. That was close to close, but still not quite the momentous part that's really going to inspire <sighs> some fanboying. So there have been two eliminations from the outer tables. We have dropped down to 42 players in the Monte Carlo main event. Ramon, ace four in the small. Daniel Myers, an 11 big blind stack. All into call. This could be it, Griffin. <sighs> Myers folds. Ramon has now taken the table chip lead, has a slight advantage over Marcos Ladev right now. As we head to one of the outer tables, it's our former feature table. And Tonka is all in, but he's run ace-jack into ace-queen. No help for him on the flop. Here's Johnny. All the turn. Opportunities. Here's Johnny. 
Blank on the river and Tonka is out. Parker Talbot eliminated in 42nd place, cashing for 17,250 euros. Good run, Tonks. So this that sweater is kind of a vibe. Mm -hmm. Leaves Ramon up on the main stage as once again, as is so often the case, the last remaining member of Team Pro. We should follow him. We, we, we're doing that. Okay. We, look, we're tracking in on him right now. So, Griffin, that is a Joker hoodie. Mm -hmm. Who is your all-time favorite Joker? Wow. James That's... and I both said the same answer. Okay. <sighs> This is something I don't really have a definitive answer of, you know? Like, I, I would say that my, my Batman is Michael Keaton. Okay. You know? I would say my 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 like Superman Keaton. is Christopher Reeves. Jokers, there's been so many good renditions of it, it's really difficult for me to pick. Um, aren't, there, aren't there no bad choices? That's kind of what I'm... Yeah. I mean, unless you count, like, you know, Gotham and stuff like that. I don't know how well... Okay, the even some, I, I, I don't watch Gotham, right? But yeah. so, someone said that the guy in Gotham was really good. It's just compared to everyone else, it's the he guy ends from up being the, the worst. Jedi Fallen yeah. Order, Fallen Order, yeah, yeah. Oh, look at this: a pair of queens versus a flush draw. Action goes check check on the flop. We get the deuce of spades on the turn. I would say there's no wrong answer from Mark Hamill to Jack Nicholson to Ledger and and I think, Joaquin I Phoenix. Think even Leto is fine. Ooh, I wouldn't. I don't know about that. I, don't, I respect Leto as a choice. I respect Leto as a choice. I don't respect him as a performance. <laughs> I mean, he really went method. I just, th I just thought he would have. <laughs> I just thought he would have been better. That's all. But maybe he didn't have enough. Scenery to choose on. Chew on. Ladev. <laughs> it's okay. Blasting into that mid pair. And Buta calls with the best hand, and we are going to the river. Six of clubs, so the board is bricked out for Ladev. Semi bluff the turn, will he pure bluff the river? Wow, he does bluff the river, and he shoves on Buta. It's all into call. Lad. A lot of missed draws here, but it is for Buter's tournament life. This would be an impressive call. Calculating odds on the computer. That is a time bank chip. That is Buter buying more thinking time. We had several people run out today of, of time bank chips during the last level. Did you just give them more? No. We get more at the start of play tomorrow. You get one, like a chicken finger. What do you think of this comment, Griffin? If you can, if you call turn, you can call river. Oh, I love comments like that. Griffin's furious. <laughs> <laughs> Which way 
has answered. I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> That's a call. Nice. And Buta is going to double up on this hand. It's nice. He said good call right away. I appreciate that. How much? Patrick Buta now playing 554,000. That was beautiful. Close to 50 big blinds. Marcus Ladov drops down to 75 bigs. Daniel Myers is still the table short stack with 10 bigs. <laughs> Ferris Buters call off. Nice one, Ali <laughs> Pico. That's, uh, that's one of the better ones. <laughs> that's <today>. really solid. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's annoying. Really solid. Yeah, had... <laughs> now, can we ban that person? <laughs> you can only have one funny man in this thing. To be clear, it's Stapes. I'm like the understudy. I was <laughs> like, I was the funny one. That'd be ridiculous. Do you see how they waited for it to happen, though? Yeah. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and crucially, they didn't do the joke like five hands later because they suddenly thought of it. <laughs> I will admit, that's why I prefer doing the TV shows, because you know exactly what's going to happen and when. Mm -hmm. And so you go, okay, like, there isn't going to be a time for me to do Ferris Bueller's call off. Bueller's call. Let me figure out a way to make it relevant sooner. Right. Twenty-five minutes into the last level of the day, and three eliminations since we came back from break. Forty-one remaining right now. Race. Ace king for Azulchenko in the hijack raises to twenty-five thousand. Come to ace jack. Ooh. He's 10 for Marcos Ladov. Yeah, against the hijack range of Vasilchenko, it feels too tight to fold, maybe too loose to 3-bet out of position. So I wonder if Ladov will decide to mix in some calls here. Instead, it looks like it's probably going, going to be aggressive action. Probably just because it plays a little easier against a tough opponent. You just three bet to fold. Ladev three betting from the small blind. Re raises to 110,000. What has Haraldstad got? He's also got ace 10. The crunchy variety. This might look like an easy decision when we can see the cards, but Vasilchenko isn't always going to have ace-king, but good discipline fold from Haraldstad. It didn't look like an easy decision. It looked like HGH, Kieran Kalkin. <laughs> now the question becomes, is Vasilchenko Prepared to get in 70 big blinds ish. More actually. Wait in there, and there's just the shove. And going all in there for such a huge amount of chips. Just you don't want to create a situation where you're four bet calling off Ace King with. 41 people in the main necessarily. Really? Yeah. It's just, <laughs> you know, you lower the variance by just shoving. Some mm. some players will 3-bet to 5-bet a pair, and then suddenly you're playing this ridiculously big pot where you don't really have much of an edge. I don't think that, um, you know, we're going to see a lot of 5-bet all ends with Ace-10 off. Kalias with the table chip lead right now, 1.2 million. Myers bringing up the rear with a 10 big blind stack.
poor fella. Ladev also is slip sliding this level. Still 67 bigs, but rough couple of hands. Wonder if he's still dating Jerry. <laughs> Calls with the 9 3. Buta with Jack 8 of Hearts. Raising. Now, what you can do anytime is go Buter. Buter. Yeah. Buter. But he also looks like the bad guy for real genius. Kent. I keep seeing it as Reuter and thinking I'm going to get an instant update. <laughs> wow, fake news much? Yeah, James, fake news much? I didn't get the reference, but I wanted to file on. Sure. You and the rest of the world, Griffin. You don't know that Reuters is owned by the Illuminati? Oh. Well, I do now. Pfizer, the Rothschilds, Colonel Sanders. Four hearts for Myers. And he decides to move all in. Shelves for his last 130,000. This is on the loose side, but I think it's going to be okay and get through. Probably the bottom of Myers' range. I don't think he's going to be shoving every king and king three and king deuce suited. So he's prepared to go for it. 11 big blinds at the hijack. Timothy Hahn watching on YouTube says, playing down to the final table or the final three? Neither. Thank you for your question. Speaking of Myers, I heard Will Myers is going to pay his writing team during the strike. When we hear about something like that, I want to ask you as someone who's little dabbles yeah. a little in Hollywood, feels a bit bit kind of like uh, I would I would think this is better if I didn't know it. You know, it feels like a PR thing almost. That like the writer strike? No, that that Will Myers is paying all his writers despite you know. Seth Myers. Seth Myers, that's it. All right, can we start at the beginning? Sure. Okay. I just read an article about Seth Meyers paying his writers through the strike. That's something that a lot of people do because um, their contracts get paid anyway, right? Like yeah. Seth Meyers, his, his contract has to get Guaranteed. paid. Guaranteed. So um, Conan did that during the last writer's strike. It's like a pretty common thing to do for mm -hmm. the acting talent who are more than likely making more money to begin with than the writers to keep paying their, yeah. I mean, there's a little bit of PR, of course, with any gesture of goodwill, but I don't yeah. think it's specifically for that reason, no. That's why I think Keanu Reeves is a fraud, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Did you confuse Seth Meyers with Will Byers from Stranger Things? Uh, no, it's a good guess, actually. <laughs> uh, uh, Major League Baseball outfielder Will Myers plays for the Cincinnati Reds. That was who I confused him with. Into the last hour of the day, as Gomez three bets Buta and takes it down pre. Moose says the last writer strike cost our economy $2.1 billion. And that's not even counting the damage that Celebrity Apprentice did. King Queen for Myers under the gun.
Another all in. Oh, to the point thing. The point thing at the chips. How much is that? Oh. Let's well, well, go. Can I get a count? There's only one man for this job. Count of Monte Carlo. <laughs> <laughs> I notice that the tournament clock has ticked down from 41 to 40 which denotes that we are down to the final five tables. Hey. It also means that we're going to balance the tables. That means we will fill the eighth seat on the main stage. And it is Stefan Huber who's going to be taking his place at the feature table. Well, this has got to excite all the little uh, Hubers down in Huberville. <laughs> Ja, men ta med detta bara. Ja. Nice. Here we go. Wow, welcome to the table. Jay Hardigan and the Jack Daniels. Raises to 25,000. Very welcoming to sit down and get a hand like this firsthand. It's kind of like that, you know, make yourself at home feeling. Like, hey, come, come on in. This has happened to me more times than any other scenario, and I've been moved tables in a tournament, mm. and I've gone broke every time. And a big blind defend from Daniel Myers. One fifty behind, around. Yeah. Huber has already clocked, but Myers is short. Ten high bad, queen high good for Myers. Nine high bad. That simple. Hoover's loving this board against 13 big blind stack. Because you still have that pure over pair. And this board is all over the sort of one pair flopping range of your opponent. But of course, we have our little secret cameras in the future <laughs> that tell us <laughs> that Myers is not going to continue. So Stefan Huber wins the first hand. He plays at the feature table. A lot of events on dinner break right now. Of course, this festival here in Monte Carlo runs until Saturday. There are three more EPT stops planned for 2023. Barcelona in the summer. Cyprus, our first ever trip to Cyprus in the autumn, and then Prague in winter just before Christmas. If you want full details, not just on the EPT, but on PokerStars regional tours as well, head to PokerStarsLive.com. We will be at all three, bringing you live coverage from at least the main event of the last three stops of EPT 2023. Sure, there are some people. Not me. I know where it is, but there might be some people that don't know where Cyprus is. <laughs> Do you want to tell us, James? There are actually governments that don't quite know where Cyprus is. <laughs> well, there you go. Let's bring up the old maps for for, for, for Griffin. The, for the for the people on I, I'm gonna, YouTube specifically. Not for Griffin. He knows. Yeah, I know. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's for yeah, other yeah. people who might not know. Yeah, it's for Lurk One. He messaged me and asked me to ask. You don't want to zoom out on that a little bit. There you go. 
Okay, so it's uh, it's in the middle of the water. I'm also looking just because I love maps and not because <laughs> I don't know where it is either. It's like a sort of Honestly, floating. I would have guessed it was over here somewhere. <laughs> I, it's, the, it's, I, not, I, it's not it's not as close to Greece as I thought. I, it's closer to Syria. In all seriousness, I think most people think it's closer to Greece, but actually it's south of Turkey. And yes, it is just off the coast of Syria, Lebanon. Okay. You better watch out, those Lebanese players. They know what they're doing. 2013 EPT Country of the Year. Oh, yeah? Lebanon. Year of Lebanon. <laughs> All right, I'm putting my foot down if, if Ramon wins this hand. This guy almost has 1.2 million. It's almost 100 big blinds. He's he's raising wide from the cutoff into two. I'll you give know, you a hundred euro big blinds boss is a types. Ben, is a benchmark. Thank but you. One, but ninety-seven, not enough. Look, if Heraldstad does one of his weird king high three bets again, because he's just like, well, I did it last time with king seven, and then he wins his hand, and I don't get to sing a song. Easy on the Pepsi, Fuller. The rubber sheets are packed. <laughs> so because this is in, in later position. Haraldstad feeling more comfortable to play this king seven as a call, figuring it might be doing better against the cutoff range than, say, a hijack open like we saw earlier from Vasilchenko. But gets out flopped here, and Ramon might bet. <laughs> gonna and remember, you have to sing along at home. If you don't sing along at home, it's bad luck for Ramon. Is that 100 big blinds? 103, buddy. Still not a big enough pot. Oh, my. Are you kidding? <laughs> wow. You, I got, you got to keep him lean. you got to keep <laughs> James him. James is just like, king. I've never fought for anything in my life, but how I'm this? fighting how for this. this? How, about just how about this? How about this? How about what? Hey. Okay, Griffin, that was not the melody. I'm doing intentionally bad, so he does No, it. absolutely. You're intentionally <laughs> doing it bad, yes. It's not that you've completely forgotten You kind of blew it there, buddy, to be honest. What? Blew it? I thought you were, I was giving I like you were a, going a, all the way with me on this. I was compromising, like an understated version of it, just like like not a full-on. I feel like, like <laughs> you know, like in a movie, right? You got like da-da-da-da-da, and then sometimes it's like. I feel like the uh, I feel like the alarm just went off as I'm at the bank vault and you just like you just bolted you just left. <laughs> I said be here 30 <laughs> seconds. Pull the car around. We're leaving him behind. Crabs for Laydev. That's out of style. We don't hear them called crabs anymore, really. It's too bad. Advanced Primate has written in the Twitch chat to say, I would like to mention I played against a guy who could have been Griffin's brother in Malta. I asked him if he was. His answer was no. <laughs> Which is really weird because I do have a brother, so it might have been him. I thought he was going to say the guy was horrifically offended. I will say, I say I also found out that I Ooh. look remarkably like Maria's fiance as well. Crabs fly together. No, we got to think of something. Crawl together. Walk sideways together. <laughs> crabs grab together. They grab onto the flop, maybe. I think crabs crawl together is probably the one. Crabs, crabs crawl together. Okay. Wow. Crabs this get is served together at the Merit Casino Buffet in Cyprus. I know there's a flop set, but this is really deep by, by Grok the Muck. He's not Griffin's brother. Griffin is his brother. Okay. Wow. Hey. Good fold. Lad. Ev. Halfway through the level, which means 45 minutes left to play on the day. 
I'd like to make a pact with the two of you, but especially with with Joe. If Ladev makes the final table of this, I don't want any ladder jokes. I just, I think we should just decide as a group we're not going to do it. No deal. <laughs> I was just getting more creative with preemptively telling like, jokes. I mean, that's just... <laughs> Just killing jokes of mine days from now. <laughs> you would have nailed it too. You would have just—I mean, listen, not, that's not going to be all the same listeners. They're not going to remember. <laughs> Do we just have the same 248 people to watch? No, there's you know there's, there's some turnover, <laughs> right? What are you talking? What are you on about right now? I'm saying that you can redo the ladder joke. <laughs> If anyone needed reminding, this is the last level of the night. <laughs> Speaking of brothers, I feel like Griffin is like my kid brother that my mom makes me take to commentary with me. <laughs> like, no, 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 you're not going to. No, you take Griffin with you. No, he's not sitting here in the house all day bothering me. It's uh, opening to 6,000 or calls, rather. <laughs> it is the last level, James. Even he's faltering. And Huber <laughs> raising with the ace king. Which gets a fold. Mark Tom asks, any news on Tonka? Yeah, we saw him bust in 42nd place. Thank you for your question. So we've talked about the EPT stops that are coming up. Of course, the next big thing on the PokerStars agenda after Monte Carlo is the Spring Championship of Online Poker with Scoop 2023 starting on Sunday. More than 120 events over 25 days. And remember, each event has three tiers of buy-in, high, medium, and low. And in case you didn't know, we're adding Scoop tickets to the prize pool of every single mini EPT Monte Carlo tournament. If you play the mini EPC Monte Carlo series, it has its own dedicated lab in the po tab rather in the PokerStars lobby. You'll be able to register tomorrow's games, and every single one has scoop tickets added. That was great. The last of today's tournaments just started, by the way. It's the two dollar twenty heads up Zoom total KO. Pretty weird format. It's actually my best format. Really? Do you know it? There's no prize pool. You only win money from knocking people out. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Total KO. Oh, and it's heads it. up. Wow. And it's Zoom. So you could like, decimate somebody, and then you get swapped to another table. That is a format, I can say, with confidence, would never work live. <laughs> Yeah, why would you go on Zoom with someone? Oh, it's Zoom like that. <laughs> James is rubbing his brow. It's going to be a long 43 minutes. <laughs> you just look back up at the clock, clock it's 46 minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. King, Queen, six on board, so top pair for Harold Stad. Bet of 20,000 wins Harold Stad the pot.
Daniel Myers still nursing that short stack. Starts the hand with 12 bigs. Has the snowman's. Nom nom. I'll give you 100 to 1 that I get he gets he gets all in. That he goes all in. No bet. No bet. Come on, what if we bet $1 and then he goes all but, like, you only lose 120k. That was a good spot for you. Things get a little dicey when we start betting on things here in the... That's fair. Well, I won the friendly bet. I didn't take it. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Oh, that was good. Dicey. Because, you know, you bet with dice. No, right. Nope. Stop. Okay. From now on, you're only allowed to spoke when spoken to. It would be cool if there was something to analyze. Well, we know what happens when we get towards the end of the day. We are going to go to one of the outer tables, though, where there is a hand between Mike Watson and Keenan Taylor. We join the hand on the turn. Check. It's gone check, check. River for free. So the board is 10, 9, 7, 5, deuce with three diamonds. Old school versus new school. Remember how Shulko was complaining about the price of candy bars in the Bahamas and now he's getting a massage at the table? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what poker can do for yeah, you. It can change your life. Can desensitize you to money. But it does make your neck very sensitive. Yes. I think Watson has checked again. Taylor checks behind. Mike Watson tables ace king for ace high. 5 4 the hand for Keenan Taylor. That's a pair of fives. He wins the pot and extends his chip lead. He is tournament boss right now wow. with 3.35 million. 3.35 million, a 12K big blind. Can you do some counting there? Yes. That is almost 300 big blinds. That is. Stupid. <laughs> yep. That stack is a stupid deck. The biggest stack in our feature Amazing. table right now is Ramon Khalilis playing 1.2 million. That's still 100 big blinds. Very respectable. Average stack is 823,000 with 40 players remaining. Actual poker question for Griffin. Sacramento wants to know, any tips when you're that big of a chip leader at this stage of the tournament? Hmm. Keep going. I mean, the thing is, is it's, you know, you, you have every right to amp up the aggression. But you also have to be careful, you know. There's going to be a lot of really good players. You know, we saw we only saw the tail end of that hand against Sir Watts, and we saw that, you know, Watson showed down Ace King. The fact that we panned over there it was a, probably a pretty sizable pot, and for it to be a sizable pot, I think we might have seen maybe a five-four suited three bet on the button there mm -hmm. against Watson, and you can you can do that because it's very difficult for your opponents to four bet a hand like Ace King. So, yeah, just. Um, Push edges, but try not to play big pots without it, really. It's pretty good. Look at J me and James not mad at you. You guys are never really mad at me. <laughs> not to my face, at least. <laughs> <laughs> so Huber still with the best of it. Ace Jack high on this King King 10 flop. Let's check the action to Vasilchenko on the button, who checks behind. Turn card is to five of clubs.
of the checks a second time. And once again, Vasilchenko checks it back. Nine of clubs on the river. Huber's still good. Additional action post flop. Not a ton of interesting things going on in this hand, but Hooper is deciding to turn this ace jack into. It's interesting actually. The design of this. Maybe wanting to fold out some small pocket pairs. You do have the ace of clubs in your hand. Low average, but still has 62 bigs. That's how deep the average stack is right now. Wouldn't you know it slowed down, by the way? Raising to 25,000. He has ace king. Daniel Myers in the small blind. Folds. And Marcos Ladev in the big blind. Queen seven. Everyone folds. Beauter. Beauter. All right, we can do the origin of why snowmen say nom nom if you want. Sure. So they're two separate things, but they come from the same person. Yes. So you might remember we did a TV show called Shark Cage about eight or nine years ago, and Sarah Shafak, Miss Finland, took part in that show and famously played a hand against Ronnie Barda where she bluffed him on all three streets and put him in the shark cage. And when she bet in that hand, she said, num num. <laughs> if you're not, it, it's like flies totally under the radar if you're not paying attention to it either. Like, it's almost imperceptible. Like, it completely gets lost in the shuffle. <laughs> num num. You can't search for it. So, a year later, hold on a second. Gomez has picked up aces here and is going to three bet Stefan Huber, who's got the Grafton 10 9 suited. Round to the blinds. Ladder folds, Harold steads out, back on Huber, and he folds as well. So, a year later, Sarah Shafak, Miss Finland, comes to Malta, joins us as a guest on the EPT live stream, and one of the questions that came up in conversation is, what's your favorite starting hand? And she said, I like eights, I like the snowmans. So we combine the two. In honor of Sarah Shafak, we have the snowmans. Num num. I actually didn't know that. I thought she said snowmans num num. Now I know. And that's the meaning of Christmas. 
Editorial discretion. Question is, does she know or even care? She must. I don't know. There's another thing she sneaks in during Shark Cage 2 that if you're not paying attention, she says like parte or something, right? Yes. Parte. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good impression. So we had a special heat in the second season of Shark Cage for everyone who was a runner-up in their heat in the first season. And she, so she came back for season two. But the sad thing is, I remember she was really sick and she just was not herself. And sadly did not make the same impression that she did the first time around. You know, she was a real delight to have around. Just very friendly, happy, super cool. Didn't really have an ego. Very patient with my idiotic humor. Well, if you hang out with snowmen too often, you're going to catch a cold. Okay, so I get, I get if you hang with snowmen. The shape too often, of the joke, yeah. That you're going to catch what? a cold, but what, what about her is cold? Or, oh, sick. She was She's sick. sick. Thanks. Okay, Thank got you. It. Okay. Sorry. That was my fault. I'll t I'll, that was my well, now fault. I know you just assume the worst. Like, there's not even yeah. anything there. <laughs> The starting point is the joke doesn't work, and then we have to try and, like... <sighs> no, Ritroll, we're not speaking of her in the past tense. It's just, obviously, we haven't seen her for She's a number of years. She's not on the scene anymore. Yeah. The funniest thing about Shark Cage is Sam Grafton finishing last twice. Get your plug in now. You know, who didn't finish last. It's fine. I think I'm going to go with a subtlety approach this time. <laughs> oh, I mean, wow. Yeah, well, the thing is, is I know why you guys bring it up. It's in my contract. You got to bring up Shark Cage once a day. And I appreciate, but I just want to, you know, I'll let you guys talk about it. And if you organically get to the point where you mention that I won the Shark Cage for a million dollars, that's that's up to you guys. You were the Gareth here, right? The Gareth year, yeah. Gareth was at your table, right? No, they call it the Griffin year, but yes, it was the Gareth year. And then the second season was like Ivy and Negranu heads up, right? For Correct. a million dollars? I Correct. Mean, it's like Hulk Hogan versus the Ultimate Warrior. The first time they'd ever played heads up in a tournament format. Ace again, Huber. Re raises from the big blind. It's just crazy. Like, season two is like the two biggest pros of all time. And then season one, it worked out perfectly because an amateur one in season one. <laughs> and then season two. <laughs> I was up against royalty. <laughs> huh? You think right. an amateur can get out of there unscathed? Mike Tyndall, who excelled at several different sports. So that's the thing, Griffin. You can actually <laughs> watch live minutes. coverage of the coronation uh -huh. this weekend and go, see that guy? I beat him heads up for a million dollars. I guess I'm one person removed from the, the king, probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like the dark <laughs> saber. <laughs> Kings will be better. <laughs> Reminder of the top prizes in this year's EPT Monte Carlo main event. 890k going to the winner. We will crown a champion on Saturday. Salt Pastelin. Lol, I just Googled Griffin Shark Cage and first hit is a video with the header winning $1 million by being extremely lucky. Listen, that was, a, that was an opinion piece video. Um, I have been in touch with Pokestars about taking it down. Is that on our channel? I'm pretty sure, yeah. This is how you win a million dollars right in. I mean, I did get it in ace, ace seven against ace, to, uh, ace ten there, and came like queen ten five or something. <laughs> is that even possible? Yeah, the nine eight. Oh, good times. Just saying, have we seen Fatima since then? No, I'm kidding. Of course we have. Ladef, 
Jack Nine, we are still playing poker. 26 and a half minutes left in this level. As you can imagine, convincing Phil Ivey to take part was not easy. Yes, it was a million dollar free roll, but the whole kind of shark cage element he was a bit confused about. And at I got one point, emails to send. He did actually ask us, in all seriousness, are there actually any sharks? <laughs> he actually thought that we were actually. That's the only reason I agreed to do it. <laughs> he actually thought there might be a shark pool. Away from the main stage to the outer tables, where I am sad to inform you that we have lost Orpen Kisakoglu. Made the final table of the Super High Roller a few days ago. Busts in 40th place from the main event, cashing for just over 17K. Guess who took him out? Keenan Taylor, who's now up to 3.5 million. I guess I know what happened to Tinker and Soldier and Spy. That's right, John. This is Phil Ivey, who can calculate poker's most intricate spots, but actually thought poker stars would put real sharks in a tank and then put players in a cage with the sharks. I feel like if there was a real shark, that Phil Ivey would just stare it down and then it would become its pet. <laughs> <laughs> I think this one's going to work. The question just is, is Ladev going to shove all in for another 40 big blinds or just call? I'll tell you one thing. He ain't folding. It's a bit too many chips. You'd hate to get coolered in this spot for, you know, 70% of your stack. Mm. Seven, four, three on the flop. Ace, queen, high still ahead. And quite, quite an aggressive three-bet pre-flop from Buter. Don't think you should make a habit of three-betting a hand like ace, nine against a mid-position open with you know, three players behind on the button and the blinds, and then of course, having to worry about your opponent having a better hand. And now we are skiing uphill. But actually, this was the best three bet in your poker career. Vladev just lets it go. It's been made a believer. <laughs> I'm a bit surprised by just Why folding on the just flop go. there, but maybe he just thought thought he had it. Door card. Perception is such an important had, thing. <laughs> was a good three bit. You know, we we've been seeing the way that hands have been going down, but maybe he hasn't seen a lot of three betting here from the big man. Kings for Myers and his 12 big blind stack. He's been so patient. I hope he gets some action. Okay, is he going to raise or shove? We're not betting, just asking what I you think. think. I think Myers is going to raise under the gun despite how strong it's going to look. 
I'll take shove. Okay, he's a time bank ship. The bet's off. The winner gets these Oreos. Okay. <laughs> the winner gets my Oreos. <laughs> <sighs> Truly little brother mentality here. Once Griffin's in the booth, any food on the table is fair game. <laughs> I just wanted to win it fair and square. Oh, is, what, what, sorry, what did you in. say, Myers? You, what did you say? You said, <laughs> you said you're all in? Oh, Gomez. Nah. Come on. Not with the Spraggy. Let's make him sweat for a second. Ah, I was just kidding. Oh. Ah. Myers really hung, out, hung in there today. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Came back on this level, had seven big blinds. Doubled up. Doubled up. We saw it. Ace five. Found a couple nice little loosey goosey shoves to get through. Now, all the way up to, well, 12 big blinds. But still alive. 39 players remain. One in 39 times he wins an EPT. I don't know if that's how it works, actually, but, you know. Eight, seven of diamonds for Harold Stad. I, for one, am very susceptible to repeated messaging, and so I'm pretty sure tomorrow I'm showing up here as part of Taylor Gang. I don't know why there are so many Taylor Swift fans watching the stream, but I, 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 sh I share their fandom. I was already a Taylor Swift fan. I'm talking Keenan Taylor. No, I think these are Taylor Swift fans. <laughs> you know, I'll earlier gladly take some of her audience. I'll take one percent of her audience. Uh, earlier it was the Chess Heads. Now it's the uh, Taylor Swift gang. I'm a big folklore guy. That was one of her recent albums. In case you know. What was the most recent one? Um. The I don't remember. It's me. I'm the problem. Is that the? Is yeah, that's on the. That's on the most recent one, I think. Yeah, folklore had uh, Great American Dynasty. Um, cardigan. I have a, a bet with my friends that that only gets settled if I end up meeting her. But I I bet them that she would like me in real life. <laughs> if I'm at Taylor Swift, I bet I bet that she would like me. <laughs> <laughs> You're about to lose a lot of Oreos for <laughs> meter. For a whole box of Oreos. Yeah. Four sleeves. <laughs> Harold's dad just praying here. Danny Myers, come on. Oh, he ain't folding this. It's an underdog story for the ages. Seth Myers versus his writing team. One of these two makes <laughs> a lot more money. <laughs> How did I know it wasn't going to be drawing dead on the turn, by the way? Yeah. I mean, there's always wait, what? a little hope. Wait, no, he is drawing dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day, everyone. Eight, nine, ten, we appreciate your king. patience. Oh, the king. Yeah. That's why it was so low. Not all straights were created equal. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I don't know if I've heard that before. I like that one. Harold! 35,000. Pretty ambitious stuff going on here, but 
at the same time, the you know, it is way more Harold Stad's board than Myers. You know, you want to target the, the big blind range is kind of like, you know, maybe something like Jack seven suited would have called preflop going to have a tough time with this river bet. So if you're going to do it on the turn, the nine is a bit difficult to do on the river because would you always shove a queen here when your opponent can have something like king nine, nine, ten. I don't know if Harold Stad's going to go for it. But if he does, I don't think Myers will fold. We saw a similar spot earlier. Been here for most of, of this level. You'll remember a clash between Ladev and Buter. And there is the all in. Wins a call with the best hand. King of Spades is an interesting card to have because it does block one of the two over pairs that would be playing like this and value shoving on the river. But it also blocks hands like King Queen, which would be a value. So it's kind of nice to have the king in a way. Also blocks King 10 for that turn straight. So Myers has to just decode this. I think is Harold Stott just capable of a straight up bluff? Okay, I'm putting the Oreos back on the line. Joe, you want collar fold? Oh, it looks like a fold. fold. I want fold. God damn it, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> awesome bluff. That's like clip worthy, maybe. Maybe. I have another elimination to tell you about from the outer tables. Salvatore Kamada has just been KO'd in 39th place. He is the first player to receive the pay jump. 19,850 euros. I will miss his camaraderie. Finally, a smiling elimination. Don't see those a lot. And that takes us down to the final 38 with 14 minutes left on the clock. Won't be long now until they pause the clock and draw for the last number of hands to be played tonight. Now, we will pause if we get to 24 before the, in the next 14 minutes. I mean, my... I was just positing the theory that, that we would stop at 24, but I mean, we're nowhere near, so. I mean, not gonna sugarcoat it, we're tracking well ahead of where we should be right now. The average stack is deep now, it's gonna be deep tomorrow. It's still gonna be, at some point, a slow grind. I would be very surprised if it was lightning fast to get to 16 tomorrow and even if it was i would suggest playing on because then the average stacks would be like 120 big blinds so phil g asking how long is left today around 10 minutes phil because uh, very soon they're going to draw for the last number of hands to play. But the day is drawing to a close. Drawing, nice pun. We're about to river this day. Faux show. Rake in some sleep. Stack up our papers. It's the last time I hired Griffin to write for me. <laughs> Myers fresh off, blowing it by folding. Oh, still a tough spot, Myers, just busting your 
chaps. Yeah, down to seven big blinds now, and of course that stack's gonna be a whole lot shallower when we come back tomorrow at the higher blind level. There is kind of something sneaky, mega aggressive um, about our boy Harold Stad. Doesn't necessarily have the look of someone that's gonna go off the handle with crazy three barrel all ins or three bet the king seven off, but this guy's a, he's a menace. Cheeky check back in the big blind from Harold Stad. Very under red pocket sixes. Ten nine deuce. on the turn and I think I heard there that they've drawn to play three more hands another good draw we're running hot so far this week with the three handers <laughs> so three hands to play after this one three which five, right? <laughs> currently has Harold Stad as a three to one favorite but facing a bet from Ladev Pretty easy call here for Harold Stad. This hand is super disguised. I have the feeling it's always. Would have expected to see a bet it's from a 10 on the flop. Also, also less likely your opponent has a 10 because there are two out there. So a very comfortable call. And then it's all going to come down to Sorry? what the river I, I is and whether Harold Stad. And yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> Harold Stad is not going anywhere. I see the six. Need to see? I heard that from, uh, from a dealer yesterday. So, so too, actually. Yeah. I'm not entirely convinced that Ladev won't bluff this some of the time because of how underrep those sixes are. You would hate to lose a showdown here to like Jack Seven offsuit or something. Or maybe a Queen High that is prepared to fold. Something like a Queen Eight. And that looks like a chip reach. But it's not going to work. Snap him off, Harold. Come on. Boom. Harold Stat does indeed make the call. Harold Stat adding 44,000 to his stack. So, three hands to play. any more players before the end of the day. We'll be coming back with 38 tomorrow. Eight for Myers. Snowman's. Nom nom. That was pretty good. Shoves for his last seven big blinds. Light the beam. Out Staten the small. Uh -oh. Nah. Folds no. king three. Patrick Buter's in the big blind. He folds as well. Had nine deuce offsuit. So that's one of three done. Penultimate hand, please. like we sandwich our catchphrases. Hello, my babies at the beginning, penultimate at the end. 
It's not really a catchphrase, it's just a word? No. No. You're it's, famous for it. Yeah, it's uh, something. All of your fans are in the Pen15 club. <laughs> Great show. You ever watch Pen15? I think they're the best comedic duo, I uh, best newest comedic duo I've seen in a really long time. Their chemistry is hysterical. Ramon with tens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't ruin it because this could be a big hand, and then you get the full sure. performance. Right, but I'm just saying, like, it's the theme. You play it under. No, you don't. And then you it swells. No, I, I don't disagree. I disagree with this completely. You're burning it. What you're doing is you're burning it. Ladev, king, queen. D -d -d DJ Ladev. You almost made it to the next day. Don't get out of line. Don't um, get crazy. He has just three bet. He's re-raised to 80,000 and looks like the action is back on Ramon. King, queen off in the cutoff, three bet, Griff. Ramon, a very capable player. It's okay. This is like penultimate hand leveling. Like, oh, Ramon is probably going to open the last couple pots. Ramon is cold. It can be easier to play than just to call here. I think if he had King Queen suited, he would mix in way more calls because he would want to make sure he saw a flop. Oh. So, top pair for Ladev. Goo. A set of tens for Ramon should highlight that Ladev, in addition to having top pair, has got a diamond draw. <laughs> Griffin. Oh, I just got a real nice death stare from I an ultimate make James sure over here. Wasn't me. That was his p penultimate form. He whipped over his eyes there. That made no sense, by the way. Perhaps. 20,000 to see bat. Go small. Very small. On this board, is this a racing spot? Not necessarily. You are going to get outdrawn sometimes. But you do kind of want to keep the bluffs in. Well, Ramon has elected to raise. He's made it 100,000 total. Well, with that bet size in particular, the 20,000 is, is unacceptable. You know, it's almost like a check back. At that point, you just it looks kind of like Ladev wants to bet this tiny amount to check back the turn, and suddenly you're not getting money in the pot. Had it been more of a standard bet size that would appear to be a little maybe bluffy. I think that Ramon would mix in more calls, but that 27 is 20,000 is like, no, 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 we're not doing this. We're not going to just let you get to the river for 20,000. And that's why position Ooh. is so important as the six of diamonds does hit. And, you know, with just over pot left, Kalilis is going to have to probably slow down here. Could also mix in some smaller bets to set a price to get to the river. You know, when you do bet here, it's not like the Ace of Diamonds is just going to raise or the Queen of Diamonds is going to raise. You're kind of setting the price, and 90000 sounds like a good one. But if you check here, you might be faced with a bet of well over 90000 Well, I've got some bad news, guys. Unless the board pairs on the river, I don't think we're going to be singing. As much as I want to celebrate Ramon Kalilas, I don't think this pot is going to be... You never wanted to. <laughs> it's like telling your kids we're going to go to Disneyland on the right weekend, and then suddenly something comes up. Pair the board. Eight, baby. No. The three of spades. Well, if he doesn't put any more chips in the middle, Ramon will still have an above average stack for day four. Uh, 
Oh, he is putting chips in. Just blocking it. So, no song here, we can't do it? No, because he's not going to win the pot. The question is, Ladev with the second nuts, does he raise? I guess it's the third nuts, right? There is a possible I, street flash out there. I, I know it might not be the right thing. I'm happy just to call and win this pot and not put myself in like a, in a terrible, yeah, what he's doing. stressful position on the last hand of the night. So Ramon loses with a set of 10s. He still has 800K, which is just below average, but a great pot for Marcus Ladev. He moves over the million mark. Still one hand left to play. Last hand of the night. The four day three is in the books. Oh, sad Ramon. Wallow Ramon. <laughs> Sorry, shouldn't have laughed that hard. I'm not actually that happy with Ramon's wallowing. I just like a pun. So it looks like play is finished at at least one of the outer tables. Last hand being dealt at the feature table. Zolchenko has opened under the gun with Queen Jack offsuit. Daniel Myers is going to be coming back tomorrow. He will be a short stack. But he has survived the day. Just Javier Gomez left to act. Eight deuce in the big blind. It is eight deuce suited and he's defending. These kids today with their suited cards, it doesn't matter what they are. That's They'll do anything to get ahead. That's what I'm told. Ace, eight, five on the flop. Eight, two's looking pretty good. Something 172 asking, are these open tournaments? Can anyone with the cash play? Yes. Mm -hmm. The only qualification to play is to have the buy-in. Buy-in, valid ID. Not to nitpick, but... Continuation bet of 45,000 from Vasilchenko. And Gomez oh. decides to give it up, folds the eight-deuce. Folds what actually was the best hand. You want to do Yeah, if you want. One. No, okay. Actually, you can look at on. <laughs> <laughs> and that is going to bring day three to a close. We whittled through the field today. 38 players will be returning for day four. And here's how things ended at our last feature table. So tomorrow, the blinds are going to be 10,000, 15,000. <laughs> With a 15K big blind ante. All these guys get to bag and tag. They can say that they made day four of EPT Monte Carlo. We'll see them tomorrow. Tomorrow, the day when we play down to the final two tables, our objective is to get to the final 16. Getting close to the big cash money. Final day, we're going to be paying out six-figure scores with 890K to the winner. And I know there's a long way to go. I know we still have three days of poker to play, but... There is a favorite. There is someone who right now has more chips than anyone else. And also, as we know from comments in chat this evening, has a lot of support. And that person is Keenan Taylor. Looks like he is going to be coming back for day four. He needs help. As the single 
biggest stack, AKA Tony Boss. That's the fourth bag that he bagged up. <laughs> He's got 3.6 million and look at the advantage he has over second place right now. Great to see wow. players like Martirosian and Watson still in the top 10. 38 players returning tomorrow. We'll be watching some of these guys in action on the feature table, some of them at the outer tables, keeping tabs on all the significant action on our quest to get down to the final 16. If you want a summary of today's action, for updates and stories on what's happening here in Monte Carlo, check out the PokerStars blog. Follow the live updates on Poker News as well. And make sure you join us tomorrow for day four coverage, the stream kicking off at the usual time, 12.30 Central European Summer Time. We will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching today. Right now, from Joe Stapleton, Griffin Bencher, Maria Ho, Nick Walsh, and me, James Hartigan, it's good night from Monaco. It's a good day for the truth to come out. It's a good day for the storm to break. It's a good day for the truth to get told. You're gonna have to fight fire with fire. It's a good day for the truth to come out.